Sensory rooms are incredibly important for us. Edgebaston wants to be for everyone, and we want anyone to be able to come and watch cricket and feel comfortable. So we came up with the idea that we needed to create two rooms so that whether you're at the city end or the pavilion end, um, and you needed to take your child, young adult, into a safe space for a few hours, you'd have that um, capability here at Edgebaston. We don't want um, it to be a barrier to watching live sport. I think before sensory rooms, we, we struggled, if we're honest. If we had a 2020 match, for, for instance, which is a few hours, that's a long time, um, especially for Stanley to not get overwhelmed or overstimulated. And not having a break or somewhere to go or somewhere to make it easier to get through them tough times um, is hard. So I think I know that Lindsay and the, Lindsay's boys and Celia can have a place to come, a safe space. Um, their times could be manageable now at the cricket and we can last a lot longer. And they're my biggest supporters, so yeah, it's, it's really good now. It's made a, a good change in our lives. Well, it was just all the time, it was just all, all over, too, like, overwhelming, like, the noise, because it's soundproof, like, there's no, like, it's not much any, there's no more noise anymore. I wanted to watch him, but, like, the crowd was really, like, overwhelming and, like, the speakers, but in here it's just... Really not. We love to pave the way, so um, we've got um, other grounds coming to take pictures. Understanding how we do it, how we operate it is really key. Um, and the ECB are doing a bit of a case study on us as well. To have this space does help, and I think it's something that if, if I can help spread that and an acceptance and awareness, and that's a good thing for all of us to do, really. Edgebaston aren't afraid to get properly stuck in when it comes to sustainability. They've even built their very own allotment right here at the ground, where I've been joined by Director of Operations, Claire Daniel. Claire, this place is amazing. How did it come about? So our chef team are so passionate about food and produce and locally sourced. They really wanted to build an allotment, start growing their own veg and using it um, on our menus. Why did sustainability feel important? We have got a ability to have a really positive impact um, on climate change and we take it very seriously. So we are really focusing on um, plant forward, uh, more vegetarian and vegan options. We don't use any single use plastic at all across the stadium. We, all of our energy comes from renewable sources. Um, we recruit in the local area. And it's about having a really positive impact on the city. This couldn't possibly sustain all of the half a million visitors that you receive each year. So where else do you get your produce from? Now that's the wish, ultimately, <laughs> is to have somewhere big enough. We don't get any produce from outside the UK. We um, home make 90% of the produce that we serve on all of our menus, which makes it a lot easier. Uh, and we use kind of locally sourced traders and vendors. We also work closely with Fordle Farm. They help us within our retail catering and they've been an excellent partner of ours. Ford Hall is um, one of the first organic farms in the country. Um, it's been um, organic for over 65 years. In 2006 it was sort of facing redevelopment and it was saved by a community scheme. So it was essentially bought by 8,000 shareholders. We came from sort of one catering unit uh, here at Edgebaston to running the whole concession contract here. And how do you strive for sustainability in the way that you farm? We rear all of the animals organically. So we are completely grass fed. We don't use any additional corn or anything like that. It is soil association uh, certified. Does that have an effect on the taste of the food? Do you say that the cricket fans are benefiting as well as the environment here? We definitely think that the meat tastes better. It's reared um, slowly for longer, which produces a better tasting product um, and hopefully something that people enjoy here. In a venue this size, wastage is always going to be an issue. 
Unfortunately, Edge Baston have hit upon a brilliant solution. Local food redistribution charity, Let's Feed Brum. Let's Feed Brum started about seven, eight years ago and we go out every single day of the week, including two breakfasts, to feed the homeless. Really acting as befrienders who help to bridge the gap between people on the streets and the services. The food is a huge part of that. You know, that is absolutely our way to connect with people and provide exactly what they need whilst having those important conversations. Edge Baston have been absolutely incredible. They've really pioneered this community spirit. They always provide us with their surplus food because then we can go out that very night or that morning, hand that food out to people who need it most. You know, sometimes we might see 80 to 100 people in one session. Just being able to use their, what otherwise would be food waste, but actually putting that to a great home is incredible. Do you think that other venues should be taking note? 100% of the venues should get on board. We've spent a really long time working with environmental health, working with experts. Anything we need to do to make sure that food is not being thrown away unnecessarily and actually is being literally put in the hands of people who need it most. So I would encourage any venue to reach out to a charity like Let's Feed Brum to understand actually how can they work together to help the community. Locally sourced organic produce arrives, fans enjoy delicious eats while they're at the cricket and anything sold goes to those who need it the very most. When it comes to food and sustainability, Edge Baston, it seems, has got it sussed. Warwickshire Access is the team that's made up and represents Warwickshire of guys with either a physical disability or learning difficulties. Its name's really aptly chosen in that it provides access to cricket that perhaps otherwise these guys wouldn't get. So that's what it does and that's what, it's on the t that's what it says on the tin. Ten years ago, I started playing for England, disability side. I've got mild autism and learning disabilities. Uh, and my coordination at the time was very poor when I first started playing cricket. So I had to persevere with my disability and with my coordination and then I've been rewarded for all the hard work I've put in. We provide weekly cricket sessions on a, on a Wednesday and a Saturday uh, that are quite open uh, for guys to come along to. They come every week of the year that, that the centre's open. Uh, and we also play eight to ten games a year during the course of the summer of inter-county cricket against similar groups um, from the Midland counties. It makes, it makes me feel happy and being a part of, of a team and it makes me feel happy and it makes me feel like I want to do more for the sport. Oh. I found it really good because that we got a lot, a lot of good players, you see, and we can they're all improving every single day. Yeah, I think it's it's important to gas the, the sort of individuals and what actually goes on here. So all these guys have got a story. They're, they've all sort of fought challenges and people telling them they can't do things all their lives. And actually, when they come here, we talk to them about what they can do and what they can achieve, and that's the important thing. And then they meet a group of people who are actually sort of similar and they go, actually, we're all very, very similar in terms of who we are and our stories. So they come together as a group and they bonded together really as a group. So yes, playing cricket's important and it is important and playing county games is important and it's important, but equally, it's important that together as a group and a group of people. I joined the team uh, from my, my old club at Hampton and Sully Hole. So I was a hardball cricketer. I joined from there and quite frankly I've, lo I've, been, I've been loving it here actually to be honest. Since then I've not looked back um, and it's been really nice. I think really Warwickshire has got probably the best, I think, uh, personally for um, giving the opportunity first of all and also uh, helping others to um, join in as well at the same time. Just getting the opportunity to do something like this today is, is brilliant because actually it will show people that they can do something. As I say, I think people have been told if, especially if they've got an impairment of some nature, they've been told they can't do things all their lives. Well, actually, you can. And it doesn't matter what level you come in and play at. Just come and play, because we'll make you really, really welcome.
Vitality Blast Cricket is back. Just make sure you're ready for blast off.
Well, good morning. Welcome to Eshverson on a fairly dull morning. Dull enough for the floodlights to be on, but not, I'm happy to say, dull enough for us not to start on time in this first division match between two informed teams. Early days yet, of course, but both teams have started pretty well. It's Warwickshire against the defending champion Surrey. I'm Clive Eakin. Mark Church is with us. We have uh, other members of the cast will be joining us as the uh, day goes on. And Warwickshire starting well, particularly with a bath. And Mark Surrey have started pretty strongly as well. Yeah, good morning, Clive. Good morning, everybody. Uh, first thing to say is lovely to be back here because, of course, this was the opening game last season. So Surrey's first game of the season was up here at Edgbaston. Always a joy to be up here in Birmingham. Yeah, they, they played very well in the first two games against Lancashire. I think everybody sort of described it as a solid performance and then Lancashire batted very well on the, the final day. The Hampshire game was a fantastic game of cricket. Two really good sides went head-to-head -head and, and the nine-wicket win for Surrey didn't really justify the way that Hampshire had played but I think it showed what a good side Surrey are in the fact that they dominated the final day and the way they chased down their victory target with Dom Sibley and, uh, and Ollie Pope was, was exceptional so yeah they've sort of picked up where they left off last season really winning the championship and um, you know they're a very good side but you look at Warwickshire as well they're a very good side and, and a bit like Hampshire you look at the bowling attacks and you think Oh, th th this could be spicy over the next four days. So really, really looking forward to this. So the umpires are coming out. The team news from Warwickshire's point of view unchanged. Still no Liam Norwell. Still no Danny Briggs, who is getting close but still not there. So they are without a frontline spinner because Jacob Bethel, sadly, uh, has got a stress fracture to the, his back. We may see him this season with the bat. We're unlikely to see him bowl this season. So Warwickshire, Rob Yates, Alex Davis, Will Rhodes, Sam Hain, Dan Mosley, Michael Burgess, Ed Barnard, Chris Wokes playing again, his second game, Hassan Ali, Chris Rushworth and Ollie Hannan Dolby. And sorry, Mark? Well, sorry, make one change from the side that beat Hampshire. Sean Abbott being rested for this game, which was always a, 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 a part of his contract with Cricket Australia and um, Cricket South Australia, so he's having a rest for this game, but Ben Folks comes back into the side, so Surrey will line up with Rory Burns, Dom Sibley, Ollie Pope, Ryan Patel, uh, then Ben Folks, uh, Jamie Smith, Cameron Steele, Jordan Clark, Tom Laws, Kemar Roach and Dan Worrell. So that's the, the Surrey 11, and good to see Ben Folks back out there. Sort of rested the, the last game, bit of a sore back, had a week off last week, Surrey didn't play last week. Um, so good to see Ben Folks back out there. Well, he made big runs in this fixture. You mentioned last year was actually was one of Warwick's better results, apart from the final game of the season. They got a very creditable draw here. It's a BBC CWR, a Radio WM, BBC London, and a Radio 5 Sports Extra. Warwickshire versus Surrey. I'm going to start a new tradition now, Mark. As you're the guest away commentator, I'll give you the honour of the first over. That's very kind of you. Thank you, Clive. I thought, actually, when you were sort of describing the conditions as dull, I thought your <laughs> segue was going to be in talking of dull. Here's Mark Church. So, yeah, thank you very much indeed. Well, the news from the middle is that Surrey won the toss and are stuck Warwickshire in under lights as well. It's, it's pretty gloomy and cloudy with the floodlights on so it'll be very interesting to see how this goes rob yates and alex davis are out there kemar roach has the ball in his hands down there at the city end of the ground there are four slips in there there's a backward point there's a widish mid on the widish mid off there's a short mid wicket and there's a deep backward square the left-handed yates is the man on strike it's kemar roach with the first ball of the day coming round the wicket to the left-handed Yates it's on a length widish outside the off stump he has absolutely nothing to do with that Yates lets it go and then goes for a little wander off towards square leg Dom Sibley of course back here at Edgbaston he stood at first slip then it's Ollie Pope at second uh, Ryan Patel at third and then Cameron Steele at fourth Jamie Smith's at backward point he had the gloves of the game against Hampshire a couple of weeks ago now, that one. As Kemar Roach round the wicket once again to Yates on a length. Little bit of swing there, I think. We're not anywhere near behind the bowler's arm. But I think just a little bit of late swing there. 
for Kimar Roach. Nicely played by Yates. Again, nothing to do with that whatsoever, just shoulders, arms. And Warrell stood with his hands in his pockets out there at deep backwards square. And we'll be, Clive Eakin will be doing an update in a moment's time. As Kimar Roach round the wicket he comes to Yates who drives back up the ground it goes wasn't quite to the pitch of that and again the way he's played that just a little bit of swing I think yeah. for Kemar Roach it was more inside edge than middle of the bat so that's encouraging for Kemar Roach and for Surrey and, and with the floodlights on as well Clive and clouds in the air sort of overhead say to you it, it might well swing and be tough this morning, hence Surrey winning the toss and bowling. As round the wicket again goes Roach. Ooh, there's a little bit there. It's a lovely length that. It's a bit too wide outside the Austin, but there's a bit of lift and carry as well into the gloves of Ben Folks moving away to his left hand side. Yeah, it's a lively first over for Kimar Roach who took wickets in this fixture last season. Yeah, I mean, you would tend to bowl first anyway here quite often because. And I don't understand the science of it really, but the morning session tends to be the session where right. most wickets fall. And sort of from memory, the last few games I've done here, the side that's batted first have, have always made runs. As forward goes Yates, that squirts away <coughs> off a thickish outside edge down towards backward point. Round goes. Jamie Smith to do the fielding. Well, Warwick have been in very good form with the bat this season. Alex Davis has already got a century. Rob Yates having failed in the first game, he's got a century. Sam Haynes got a couple. And other batters have made contributions as well. Yeah, Sam Haynes going 100 every game at the moment. <laughs> he is, yes. He's a wonderful player, Sam Haynes. He really is. Final ball of this first over. Yates on strike as Kemar Roach is round the wicket to him. Oh, and that's a good leave. That was a little straighter. And Yates back went towards it and then he lets it go at the last moment. Good first over from Kemar Roach. There's a little bit there. And Dan Moore off the back of five for 40 against Hampshire on the final day. Comes marching up to bowl the second over. And Warwickshire stuck in by Surrey, yet to get started. So, a uh, good first over from Kemar Roach. Yates survives it. And we've got Worrell now coming into bowl. The second over of the day. It's going to be doing an update in a few seconds' time, so that will be the reason for the change of gear. This is Clive Eakin at Edgbaston, where we're underway in Warwickshire's latest county championship match. A good test after a, a promising start in the first two games. They're up against the formidable county champions, Surrey. It's overcast this morning and the floodlights are on, but conditions are good enough to play. Uh, Warwickshire unchanged from the team that beat Kent. So still no Liam Norwell or Danny Briggs, but Chris Wokes plays. And after surviving a lively first over from Kemar Roach, Warwickshire are none for none after being put in by Surrey. And that uh, first Ooh. ball was a little bit... He played a little early on that, Davis, and it spooned up in the air. Well, he's a lucky boy there, Alex Davis. Almost as if it stopped on him. Yeah. And he was he was looking to drive, be positive, and he's just chipped it. It could have gone anywhere. It's ballooned over Dan Morrill. It could have easily gone to Jordan Clark, and all the Surrey players are sort of motioning the check drive to each other at the moment four slips in place as uh, Dan Worrell comes in right arm over and Davis leaves that's a good lead it wasn't too uh, far away but just bouncing over as well as slightly wide and still no runs on the board for Warwickshire who having struggled on the old bonus point system to get batting points last season for much of the season um, actually managed to do the unthinkable and get maximum batting points mm against Kent. I think they are one of only two teams so far in the first division of the championship to manage the 450 and 110 overs. Worrell into bowl to Davis and that's on next up as appeal for LBW. Just looked a little leg sideish the way Davis was playing it. Not out is the call. Got to be careful Alex Davis. He's positive by nature. Fantastic batter. But he's got to be he's got <coughs> to give himself an opportunity here at the moment he's tried to try to check drive first ball 
let the second one go. He's trying to whip that one that's fairly straight through mid wicket. He's just got to give himself a chance here. Worrell will be all over him now, having seen this. Worrell is into bowl again. That one's wide this time and didn't trouble Alex Davis because it started wide and drifted away. Uh, we keep a folks moving fairly sharply to his right to take that. Alex Davis, just the one century last season. He was disappointed with his season last season. It wasn't an absolute disaster, but it wasn't what he'd hoped for. So the fact that he's already got one century this season will be encouraging for him. Warrell running away from us at the pavilion end. Into bowl. And that's a, again, a tight lead from Davis, but he's judged that well. Yeah, Warrell will be in a way with that, I think. He's, cut, he's <coughs> followed up. The delivery where Davis is trying to whip it through the leg side with two balls that Davis can just let go outside his off stump. And now he's already signalling to the ground staff that the foot holds. He's not happy with where that front foot's landing. So the signal's gone to the ground stuff. That, this might be for some some more soil. They've got a long way to go to bring it yeah. as well because the pitch is on the far side from where they are. They'll be thrilled. Uh, in comes Worrell again to bowl. And Davis again leaves that. So Warwickshire, tentative start. To no runs in the first two overs, but no wickets either. If you want to follow what's going on in all the games up and down the country, go to the uh, BBC Cricket page and follow the County Championship page. If you're already online, you scroll down from where you are, you should see it. Jed, Alex and Alex. Two Alexes are uh, on duty today, so any of them are listening. Hello. Yeah, it's an interesting first over that from Dan Warrell. It's been an interesting start, this. There is definitely something there. But Kemar Roach and Dan Warrell just finding the length at the moment. As Kemar Roach round the wicket with the third over to Yates. And he gets wide outside the off stump. Yates doesn't have to play at that at all. And he wanders off towards square leg. Taken by Ben Folks, who, as I say, good to see Ben Folks back. Uh, he had a, a, a stiff back. He did spend the entirety, basically, of the first game on the field of play either keeping wicket or scoring 170 odd so I think he was just a bit stiff and sore after a long winter member of the ground staff is walking around with a bucket of something <laughs> as round the wicket comes Kemar Roach once again to Yates that's the length that's the edge that's the catch from Cameron Steele at fourth slip it's not taking him long Kemar Roach I said he was trying to find the length to Yates that's the perfect length Yates has to play at that Little outside edge, good low catch from Cameron Steele at full slip. And Warwickshire a naught for one. Well, it was a good first over for Roach, and he's followed that up with the wicket taking ball. And early problems for Warwickshire. So it's feast or famine for Yates so far this season. He was out third ball against Somerset. And in the first game but they made that ton in the second against Kent but now out for a duck I think that's one of those it's an open and when you sit down and see it back you think yeah I've just got a good one there yeah. he's been got out by Kemar Roach hasn't he he's not going after it he's got to play at it it's just a great length it really is eight ball duck for him Will Rhodes comes out now it's Yates just giving him some thoughts about what the ball's doing looks like they're putting uh, sort of sort of sound on both ends a bit damp out there perhaps mm. there was a bit of rain around yesterday it was a nice i don't know what it was like up in birmingham but it was a, it was a very nice day on tuesday clive uh oh, no, i'm testing my memory there that was two south, days ago two yes days no ago. it was yes sun came yes out. it was it was a yes. nice day yeah um if it could stick around, that'd be absolutely marvellous. Although <laughs> Surrey will be quite happy with this at the moment. They won't, won't, won't want the sun coming out for this morning. But uh, yeah, a couple of days ago, the weather was quite nice. But this morning, it's a, a little gloomy. Under lights, never easy. The big ease of Edgbaston on the top of the floodlight columns, shining brightly down. So the captain out there, Will Rhodes, <coughs> left-handed, of course. It's a good low catch from Cameron Steele. First ball for... 
Rhodes. Roach is round the wicket to him, and Rhodes is letting this one go. Outside is off stump, but again, he's just probing away here. He's key, my Roach. This is where Roach is so dangerous. Well, this is a great test, really, for what I should say. They've batted really well so far this season, but with the greatest respect to Somerset and Kent, I don't think they've batted against such a strong attack in such potentially difficult conditions in the first two games. So this will be a very good test. Rhodes raises that bat as round the wicket goes Roach to him. Rhodes on the back foot, plays this one straight back up the pitch to Rory Burns. He's under his white floppy sun hat again. He seems to be wearing that whatever the weather now when mm -hmm. he's fielding. Rory Burns. Well, it's quite helpful when it comes to identifying players because you've got the cable knit jumpers, which means we don't see oh, yes, of course. numbers. Tradition, the traditional cable knit. Yes. They're externally the virtues of that. Although they're, they're quite well. thin in that you can see 45 on Sibley's shirt through <laughs> his jumper as Rhodes lets this one go very wide. Outside is off stump by Kemar Roach. Again, he's looking at the, the, the footholds there. I think it's just possibly just a little slippy at the moment. Nought for one. Warwickshire, if you're just joining us on BBC CWR, BBC WM, BBC Radio London and Five Sports Extra. Good morning to you, Warwickshire. Stuck in by Surrey. And Rob Yates going in this third over caught by Cameron Steele off Kemar Roach without scoring. Roach round the wicket to Rhodes. Rhodes up on his toes, turns into the leg side. Round comes Tom Laws to do the fielding and there is no run. End of the over, good one. Wicket maiden. Nought for one. Warwickshire. I, I, looking at both attacks, though, it, we, we, we often say with Surrey's attack, it's relentless. It's exactly the same, really, with the the attack of, of Warwickshire. And, and you've got, you know, Wokes, Rushworth, Hannon, Dorby, Hassan, Ali. That's that's a pretty good four ball anywhere. Yes, I mean, I, I, I was slightly told off by Mark Robinson when I said, well, you've giving your bowling attack a bit more depth the signings in, in the summer in the winter and he made the point that they've actually lost as many bowlers as they'd signed um warrell comes in to bowl and that's left again it's a tight lead from davis a few heads in hands there from Surrey. not sure that bounced as much and wasn't going over it went just wide uh, so his point was well they lost ollie stone um who else did they lose um at the moment, is he? Well, no, but in terms of uh, the comings oh, and goings sorry. I'm talking about. But anyway, the point is, it still looks to have more depth. Yeah. I guess the bowlers have got now more available, but they are without Liam Norwell. Um, but you've got Chris Rushworth, who's started really well. Of course, Chris Wokes in this game is a bit of a bonus. Worrell comes in to bowl, and that's pitched up, and it's driven nicely enough by Davis that time, but he can't get it past the bowler. So Warwickshire are still without a run. All I'm saying is, if you go with a four-ball attack, quick bowling attack, Hannon, Dolby, Rushworth, Hassan, Ali, Wokes, there's no let-up there. Worrell, Roach, Laws, Clark. So there's no real let-up there either. No. I'm just chuckling because I'm from a text that sent by Jed. I mentioned the text service. Uh, this next one is uh, driven by Davis and is filled at mid-off. He says he's... His laptop has no working five, six buttons or apostrophes in question marks. So no, he won't so. be asking any questions. And let's hope there aren't any five or scores with five or, or six in them. someone <laughs> says something in a quote that needs an exclamation <laughs> yes, mark. Indeed. Or someone's commentating and screams, what a delivery. Because <laughs> that would probably need a, an exclamation mark. Dear old Jed. My daughter did that with her laptop, but somehow, magically, all the keys fell off. <laughs> I've never quite understood how that happened. As in over the wicket comes Worrell again. Forward goes Davis, punches up towards mid-off. And there is no run. So none for one. Warwick just still haven't got a run with uh, 23 deliveries. They've lost Rob Yates, caught at fourth slip. It's a difficult start, Warwickshire obviously wants to dig in. This is where they need Dom Sibley back. It would be <laughs> perfect for him, this. <laughs> He um, had this. He had this up at Old Trafford on the opening day of the season. Sorry, was 77 for five at lunch from memory. Here comes Worrell to uh, Davis, and that's short. And Davis has pulled it, and the first run, run, not runs, of the morning, as it's cut off at back of square leg, uh, banged it in short. 
didn't get up too much and Davis played a cautious shot but one that's got in the first run of the innings so Warwick are one for one after 3.5 overs because it's left and right hand combination all the fielders started moving so I thought it's the end of the over but it's not of course um, it's good to see Dom Sibley back he had a good career at Warwickshire cause he broke into the England side when he was with Warwickshire won a county championship and he finished on a bit of a high because his runs were crucial in that extraordinary victory against Hampshire but also his presence on the field for a player who wasn't going to be with the team anyway the following season his uh, attitude won him a lot of uh, credit as Worrell comes into bowl and that's clipped round a fine leg for a single so Rhodes is off the mark and famously uh, he along with captain Will Rhodes sort of got Liam Norwell through his extraordinary bowling attack because the poor chap was falling apart physically um, but they g'd him up kept him going and uh, he didn't come off the attack and ends up with the, the nine wickets on that extraordinary day so um, Thompson was already well liked but he won a lot of friends out there not sure whether there's a feeling he really settled in in terms of being here as opposed to Surrey but he had a scored plenty of runs for Warwickshire and had a, a good few years with us yeah, and I, I think there was always the thought that he would come back to Surrey one day and, <coughs> and I think it worked out pretty well for everybody is Kemar Roach from the city end comes around the wicket to Rhodes quick singles taken that's nicely played by the captain just pushes this one into the offside and Rhodes will move on to two Warwickshire move on to three for one because people tend to forget that what happened was he, he, he came on loan here and Ricky Clark came back the other way to That's Surrey fine, yeah. and then the following season Surrey won the championship and the following season Tom Sibley made an England debut so I, I think for all parties it worked out pretty well but I think there was always the thought that at some point Tom Sibley would be coming back to Surrey because he is a Surrey Surrey lad through and through um, so and you know I think he's he's loved his time at Warwickshire I think he's very happy to to be back at Surrey I think you know it's obviously a different dressing room for him now there's a few still here from the last time he was here but um, he looks in pretty good nick as well I have to say now they've got a short mid wicket in for Davis it's the first time he's been on strike to Roach and Roach on a length and Davis allows this one to go Outside is off stumps. So it's the first time he's had a right hander to bowl at this one. Yeah. Right. Just on Dom Sibley, will he play T20? Because I think that was a little bit of a beef for him. He started yeah. off playing in all formats for Warwickshire, but by the end, well, I remember he was getting nowhere near the T20 when he, side. When he left Surrey, he was opening the bowling yeah. for Surrey in T20 and coming in at four and giving it a right old whack. So he can do that, definitely. As Kemar Roach is over the wicket to Davis. Oh, Davis, little inside edge, is it onto that front pad? It is. He didn't really go anywhere on the crease there, Davis, and he's just nipped that one back as Kemar Roach, but he definitely got bat on it. The appeal was as much for as that hit pad before bat, but it, it's good bowling again from Kemar Roach. The field he's got at the moment is Sibley at first slip, Pope at second, Ryan Patel at third, and now he's got Cameron Steele in there at short mid wicket. So Cameron Steele's in a short mid-wicket catching position. As he's left extra cover wide open. And always had a, a little nibble, I think, at that one. Has Davis. Kimo Roach with a big grin on his face. But this is tough at the moment. It, you've got two high-class new ball bowlers going at you with a bit of help. Yeah, Davis is trying to make the right decisions on what not to play and what to play. But it's uh, not proving easy. He's still there, crucially, for Warwickshire. Five uh, matches in progress in this round, and they've all gone underway on time, pleased to say. Excellent. That, that hasn't really happened yet this season, no. has it? As Roach is over the wicket to Davis, and Davis covers up, pushes into the offside. It's good running. They need to be doing a bit of that this morning. Quick singles. It's good running from Davis and Rose. End of another probing over from Kemar Roach these cloudy conditions with the lights on hard work for the openers but I think as an opener oh, apologies there's a ball to go I think as an opener you know this is coming at some point yeah. you know you'll get the day where you walk out on a flat one and the sun's out and you smash it all around the park but there are days like this and Rob Yates already gone and three at times is an opener as well as in round the wicket 
goes Roach to Rhodes, and Rhodes is pushing off the back foot into the offside. Up comes the behattled Rory Burns to do the fielding. End of the over, and another one gone this morning. Five gone, and Warwickshire stuck in by Surrey, a four for one. Well, that's, I suppose part of the job for these two is to just stay out as long as possible and try and take the edge out of things in time for the informed Sam Hain to come in next. I mentioned started everywhere. That includes Bristol. Of course, the last match was a bander without a ball being bowled, but they're playing Sussex today. Our Gloucestershire, and that one is underway as well. Underway here. Sorry, have claimed the wicket of Rob Yates for a duck. Dan Worrell now comes in to bowl to Davis. Pitched up, going down the leg side. Very good take by Ben Folks. That could easily have gone for buys. I don't think he hit the pads. Just a little stray with that one, Worrell. Again, it swung. Yeah. Probably started on leg stuff, just kept going. Good, good take from Ben Folks, diving away to his left. Ben Folks up at Old Trafford. The pitch was so slow that Ben Folks had to stand up to Jordan Clark. Jordan Clark sort of had to cut his pace and just hit a length. In comes Worrell to bowl, and that's driven, but it'll be cut off at mid-off. The boundaries reasonably large, although they have brought the rope in a little bit, particularly at either end. It's just that well, the concern I have a little bit with the 450 and 110 overs is it is an incentive for teams to reduce the size of the boundaries somewhat. Is, I've said it before, I think that is one of the most pointless exercises of all time. <laughs> Just utterly pointless. Worrell comes into bowl to uh, Davis, and that's a little tip and run. Well, I suppose the, the official point of it is to try and encourage England-style attacking batting, but you're not convinced. Well, uh, when, when England get to 450 club in 110 overs, <laughs> do they get five, four back, five back? No, I don't think so. So, so yeah, I just don't understand it. But there we are, they've made the decision and everyone gets on with it, don't they? But absolutely. It, 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 ironically, it's pointless, I think, that. <laughs> um, Worrell into bowl. And that's uh, edged and bounced, I think, just short of third slip. And it's a good stop there. I don't think that carried. It's a cracking delivery. It's really well played by Davis as well. Really soft hands there from Alex Davis. And there's no great pace to this pitch, but he did play that extremely well because that moved very late on him. He bounced a good couple of foot in front of Molly Pope. Very well played that by Alex Davis. He's uh, facing again. And that's a slower ball, it's driven down the ground. That's a very nice shot. It just beat the hand of Dan Worrell. And once it had done that, it was going to go straight down the ground for the first boundary of the Warwickshire innings. Davis on to six, it's eight for one. Lovely bit of batting from Alex Davis. Just slightly over pitched that one from Dan Worrell. And he tried that first ball. And it sort of got stuck in the pitch on him a bit. And he dinked it straight over the top of Worrell. But that one, lovely full face of the bat punched it straight down the ground for our first boundary. Very nice shot from Alex Davis. Worrell in again. So wearing his jumper, must be pretty cool out there while he's bowling, wearing his jumper, just straining down the leg side, swinging down the leg side again. Slightly easier to take that time for Ben Folks, though. It is the end of the over. That four off, it makes it uh, a somewhat more productive over for Warwickshire, but it's been a tough start. After six overs, they are eight for one. It's an interesting start, this. <coughs> I think it's one of those this morning that if, if you're Warwickshire and you've got to lunch three down, you'd be over the moon with that. Yeah. So, so, sorry had this at Old Trafford on the opening day of the season. And it was a, a little like this against Hampshire as well on the opening day a couple of weeks ago. Four slips are in there for Kemar Roach coming round the wicket from the city end to Will Rhodes. And Will Rhodes nicely played. Just pushes this away into the offside. Didn't really time it, but he wasn't trying to smash it through the covers. He looks at the toe end of his bat. There is no great pace to this wicket, though. We can see that already. Nine for one. Showing a bit of intent, Will Rhodes, straight away to just try and keep the scoreboard moving with singles. I think that's going to be absolutely key this morning. Otherwise, you get horribly stuck. 
Jack singles up. Just keeps that scoreboard moving. It doesn't allow the bowler to settle at one batter either. Kemar Roach over the wicket to the right-handed Davis. And Davis Ooh. is beaten by an absolute beauty from Kemar Roach. And I think if you're Davis, you just sort of shrug your shoulders and go well bowled. He had to play at that, didn't he? Oh, it absolutely. It's the length. Right. It's the perfect, perfect length that from Kemar Roach. He found that sort of length to Yates found that the edge of Yates is bad but I think Alex Davis will just sort of say well that was a good one and forget about it and get on with the next one but it's a gorgeous piece of bowling from Kemar Roach Roach approaching us comes over the wicket to Davis goes back of a length this time Davis is in behind that pushes it into the the leg side he's a punchy sort of player Alex Davis you know, he, he, even his defensive shots are punchy. Mm. And he, he's going for a little wander towards square leg. He kept that short mid-wicket in for him as well. Yeah, so down to three slips in the short mid-wicket. Wonder how much he's going to carry to the slip. So one catch has been taken, that slip was pretty low, and another one's dropped short. Left extra cover wide open. As, oh, well played. He's just waited for this, Alex Davis, and then just guides it away. Down to third man boundary rope for four. That's nicely played. And again, it just shows there's no great pace to the pitch. He, he's got all the time in the world just to, to wait for one with a bit of width and then just kiss it down to, to the boundary rope for four. Gareth Batty spotted something because the, the Surrey head coach is down there and just had a quiet chat with Dan Worrell. Mm -hmm. So he's obviously spotted something with Mr. Batty. And he goes marching back towards the dressing room. And he's over the wicket again, goes Roach to Davis. That's down the leg side. And again, it doesn't really carry to Ben Folks. He dives away to his left to take that one. There's a um, little tent there in the right hand corner. When the ball went down there from Davis to shot, somebody popped out to retrieve the ball. I don't know whether that's. I don't know whether the player's view is obscured from the changing of where the pitch is today be because of the sight screen, and that might be. Well, they've got their own viewing tent. <laughs> it's rather nice as Roach is in. Oh, and Davis lays back to cut this. It came back at him, but again, he plays it very well. Just lets it hit the bat and then takes a quick single. Good positive running between Rhodes and Davis. And Warwickshire are 14 for one. Yeah, there's a little bit of sort of it looks like um a nice sort of balcony area away to our left being constructed as well clive and that was probably the banging that you you heard away to our left hand side there yes the um flats they're building there uh, look, look pretty close to completion now yes i, I well, those have gone up very quickly they have haven't they they have indeed yeah and there's going to be some sort of retail unit on the bottom i think which the ah club will use I believe that was certainly the, what I was told the plan was Excellent. so four slips in for Dan Worrell let's see if he's taking that intelligence to good effect as he comes into bowl to uh, Davis who uh, defends that there's no run Brian and myself poor people with the story of how we helped Warwick to win the county championship that year we won it by Managing to open a window that Ashley Jars couldn't open wow. so that he could shout instructions to Keith that Barker, who promptly got a wicket right. next ball. It's, it's so that, uh, it's <laughs> that sort of thing, Clive, that, that people don't know about. Well, those they do, because we... The, the, well, you keep <laughs> going on about it. But, but it's those little... Mo it's those one percenters, Clive Eakin. Uh, Worrell comes into ball to Davis, it just drops a bat and that thinks about a quick single, actually he is called through for one by uh, Will Rhodes, I think for a moment Davis wasn't sure, the ball went towards backward point but that was well run by Rhodes and it's another single onto the total was Mr Giles, it, it, let's just say you hadn't been able to open the window <coughs> for him, w would he would he not have left where he was and gone down and, yeah, and, and, taken and him passed a while, though. Yeah, well, yeah, and that might have been, that, that, that the moment could exactly, have gone, exactly, exactly what you're saying yeah, yeah. I've just been told they're upgrading the Skyline Terrace. <coughs> oh, very nice. Way to our left. Sounds like when you get on a plane. Part of the temporary stand is the structure is there as well, the right-hand corner. Um, 
and where the big screen is for the uh, the ashes. We can see the skeleton of that. So Warrell to bow. Oh, we've oh yeah. We'll bring um, Chloe Brewster's going to join. She's got a foot in both camps, of course. Central Sparks and mm. Surrey. Um, you can talk of talk her through her innings in her last match. Uh, this one is uh, pushed out to the offside, and that is, uh, well, again, it's a well-judged run. It's a quick tip and run by Will Rhodes. And just to uh, complete the programme, I will return very briefly um, at 12 to do my report, and then Phil Britt will join Chloe for very good. half an hour. That'll be lovely. That'll be yeah, lovely to see Chloe. And, uh, well, I'll get it out <laughs> of the way. Central Sparks, <laughs> and opening game of the season, didn't make a run. But as I said, and we've all said, it's better to get it out of the way first game of the season. Get get that one out of the way. You've got the rest of the season now to score millions of runs. As Worrell into uh, Davis, and that's pushed out down to third for... Uh, it's going to be two, might be three, and it is three. Will Rose is determined to go for three. He's going to have to sprint, but he does. We're terrible, aren't we, really? I mean... There's someone playing at a high level, you and all we can do is it. talk about <laughs> Bring me into this. <laughs> you said you can ask Chloe Brewer about her opening knock of the season. I, I, I was going to allow Chloe to tell us about it, but there, we've got it out of the way. <laughs> now, some of the greats, well, Graham Gooch, of course, pair on Indeed. test debut. Yeah. Pair on test debut. As he always says, my score in both innings is in my surname. <laughs> Uh, Worrell into bowl to uh, Rhodes, who leaves that one. Slightly late decision to leave it, but the right one so was drifting away. And it's 19 for one. So these two have just steady the ship a little bit. The uh, partnership is easy to calculate. It is what the score is, because Warwickshire lost their first wicket without a run on the board. I think Tom Laws <coughs> will enjoy this surface. He's... he's He's an interesting bowler, he's young Tom. So I've not come across him, I don't yeah, think. He, he, he does take wickets, which is always handy. Yes. Useful skill to have. Worrell comes into bowl to Rose, who turns that one to mid wicket. It's stopped. There's no run. So after eight overs, Warwickshire put in by Surrey a 19 for one. They've lost Rob Yates, caught steel bowl Roach uh, for no score at none for one. Mark Church will now be joined by Chloe Brewer. Thank you very much indeed, Clive. It's been a, an interesting start, this. And Roy Burns won't leave it too long with the likes of Jordan Clark and Tom Laws. Just elsewhere to let you know, Middlesex and Kent in the first division. Kent down at Lords are 21 without loss. In Division 2, Durham 31 without loss against Derbyshire. Sussex 22 for one against Gloucestershire and Leicestershire. 32 without loss against Glamorgan. Just the two games in the first division this week, this one and the one at Lords. And Kemar Roach from the city end coming in over the wicket to Alex Davis. He's on his toes. Davis whips leg side. And there is Cameron Steele to do the fielding. And it's a very good morning to Chloe Brewer. Good morning. How I'm just going to move your microphone. There. No, I'm very well, thank you. I'm very well. How are you? Yeah, I'm good, thank good. you. Good. Now, you are, of course, we'll explain through this over. But you are from these parts now, yeah. having made the move to Central Sparks. And, and having a, a little natter with you before we went on air, you've obviously settled in very nicely. So it's a nice commute for you today. Yes. You had to come too far. <laughs> As over the wicket comes Roach. That's just jumped to touch at Davis. And he's played that pretty well, gets the bottom hand off the bat. But as an opener you yourself, these are tough conditions, yeah. aren't they? And he, number three basically is an opener in these situations, isn't he? Yeah, definitely, especially when you're coming in the third over. New ball's still swinging, but still doing bits off the pitch. We've just really got to kick into opening mode. Yeah, and, and opening mode is you might just have to get your head down for a while yeah. and give yourselves a chance as Rhodes goes wider. Uh, Roach goes wider of the crease and just driving at that with the ball coming back on the angle is... Davis, thickish inside edge, but into the leg side it goes, and he'll pick up a couple more runs. So Davis moves on to 50, 17, apologies. And Warwickshire moving on to 21 for one on this opening morning. Gloomy skies in Birmingham, floodlights are on, 
The good news is it's dry. We can, of course, see Birmingham city centre yeah. away in the distance. Yeah. That big green building that I think is a hotel away there in the distance. What is it, a couple of miles away, the city centre? Over the wicket is Roach to Davis, who's played at that. That beats the edge again. It's a tumbling take by Ben Folks away to his left-hand side. But of course, the move from South East Stars to Central Spark. So you settled in yeah. around these parts, OK? Yeah, it's not bad. Good, either. enjoying it? Yeah, it was a lovely park opposite the ground. Oh. Behind us, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, it's a Cannon Hill Park. Lovely, a huge park. Yeah, I didn't realize how big it was. And how far? Don't give you a dress, obviously. Oh, no. But how <laughs> far away are you <laughs> uh, from Edgbaston? Is in over the wicket comes Kemar Roach to Davis, who's letting this one go outside his off stump and taken by folks away to his right hand side. Well, it is a three minute commute in the car. I did three <laughs> minutes. About three minutes without any Whoa. traffic, kept through all the traffic lights. That's all right, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> when the weather cheers up, might you walk it? Oh, or, 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 yeah, well, it's a big cricket bag. Got the gear, and yeah. that's the other <laughs> thing. Yeah, no, I understand what you're saying. Well, that's absolutely ideal, isn't it? Yeah. As Roach approaches us once more comes in over the wicket to Davis and Davis again that just hops on him a touch nicely played just drops it down into the the leg side the right-handed Davis it's the end of the over tidy over again from Kemar Roach 21 for one Rhodes has four Davis has 17 how, how was the opening of that well, we, look it happens <laughs> you know that he played enough cricket to know it happens but how, how was the opening game for Sparks uh, it was good actually we haven't had too much of a pre-season because it has been chucking it down everywhere um so we did pretty well we did end up coming second but that happens as well, well it's of cricket it does. it's the opening game of the season um but our bowlers bowled really well we've got very good attack up front um yeah um other than that it's okay um we're all in just outside off it's just beating the outside edge really. it's Sad through to Ben Folks with the gloves. This is a f funny one because I have got a foot in both camps here. I've of course been, you have, absolutely. Sorry since I was 13, but now I moved up, so. so I hope this is one of the games where I can say I fully do not have a bias towards. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you have got a foot in both camps now <laughs> for the next four days. Well, in. Again, it's just full of left, his left bat alone. Outside, off. Yeah, there's there's still a little bit of swing there for mm. for Dan Worrell. It's just it's just hitting the the right line and length, isn't it, to get get you opening batters or oh, number threes playing at it. Yeah, absolutely. It's about getting it in an area where you're tempting the batter to play, and they've got to almost double guess themselves, especially having a couple of slips in play. He's pushing it across the uh, left-hander as well, so he's always got to think about playing it. As or is it coming in again? And it's back of left end. Just played off the back foot past point there. It's going out towards the boundary. Red, taking two from it. That's a sliding stop down there. It's into a keeper and chucked back around. Yeah, good chase from, from Jamie Smith there at backward point. But again, Rhodes has played that nicely. There is, there is a little bit of bounce, but it's tennis ball bounce. There's, mm. as I say, no great pace to this at all, wicket-wise, pitch-wise, but nicely played by Will Rose. Just sort of let it hit the bat and runs down, and you get a couple of runs. So it's nice cricket yeah. that from Will Rhodes. Yeah, it's a nice soft hands he's been playing with. As Will is running in again, just a full of length defended back to him that time. Third ball of the over. That's the length. Yeah. That's the length for Dan Warrell because he's left extra cover wide open as well. Now the, the way that Will Rhodes was shaped up to start with that, I thought he might look for the big old drive yeah. through the covers, but just adjusted and played it straight back up the pitch. But that's the length that, that Dan Warrell is looking for. It's full of length. I think we're going to see the ball up to the bat a lot in this game. Definitely. Warrell running in again. It's just Oh, that's, and that's out. That's the second wicket of the day for Warwickshire. It's caught its second slip there. Well done. 
Warrell and Valby Rhodes gone for six runs. Warwickshire 23 for two. It's a good bit of bowling, isn't it? And so. it's a good catch from Ollie Pope, low down as well, tumbling forward. But but again, I think if you're Will Rhodes there, you've just been got out yeah. by a terrific piece of bowling from Dan Worrell. And Rhodes goes for, for six and 23 for two now in the 10th over. But I think where Surrey will be happy with this is it gets Sam Hayne out there fairly early. Yep. And, and they haven't really given any freebies yet. Yeah, we've had one lovely drive down the ground for four from Davis and that lovely late cut for four as well. But there's been nothing short wide. There's been nothing really to go after yet. But here comes the, the man in form, I think it's fair to say, <laughs> yeah. Sam Hayne. But even for a man in form, this will be a test. Of, but I suppose you'd rather go out in these conditions in form than go out in these conditions not in form. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah, he got 119 against Somerset and 165 against Kent. Yeah, so, he, so. Uh, he, he's in, he's in Nick, and yep. and, 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 and Surrey would have discussed this, and their chat would have been if we if we win the toss and bowl, we have to get him out there early, yep. so that we can use this ball against the man in form. Yeah, especially they've been bowling such good areas. The pitch has definitely helped him a little bit, just nibbling a little bit off the surface. So. See how it goes about it, but 23 for two, this isn't a position Warwickshire would want to be in. Well, I, I think, as I say, if Warwickshire were only three down at lunch, they'd be quite happy with that. That's yeah. an obvious thing to say at 23 for two, but but I think at the start of play, it's one of those mornings where if you're not careful, you could be six or seven down yeah. at lunchtime. Absolutely. Absolutely. So just taking a couple of guards there. Been impressed with Oral so far because he's managed to swing it both ways with quite a lot of control. Yeah, I've always liked Sam Hain as a cricketer. Mm. And even he'll be thinking at the moment, though, no, right, switch on. <laughs> <laughs> this will be interesting for the first half hour. Yeah, we're all in with four slips in. That's on a length defended by Hain there for his. First delivery, and that brings the end of the over. So Warwickshire now 23 for two. Sam Hayne, the batter in form, is in at number four, and Davies is just on 17. Yeah, cracking first ball straight away to Sam Hayne as well. No sighter from Dan Warren right on the, the length. But now folks have spotted something. He's wandered across to have a, a long old dander with his captain, Rory Burns. But that was a good catch from Ollie Boat. Yeah. Low down. Sort of had to come forward and scoop at it. So, if you're just joining us here on BBC CWR, BBC WM, BBC Radio London, and of course on Fly Sports Extra opening day of this championship match at Edgbaston. Warwickshire 23 for two. Kemar Roach is coming over the wicket from the city end oh. to Davis. Oh, he's played a horrible shot. He's tried to pull a ball into the leg side. Hands come off the bat. Top edge. It's an absolute gift for Surrey and Davis trying to pull a ball that wasn't that short top edge that is a gift for Surrey Davis goes for 17 it was eventually taken by Ben Folks, but of course Surrey will take that all day and Alex Davis will make his way back towards the dressing room but yeah he just lost all shape on that and one hand came off the bat and it just flew straight up in the air off the top edge. And Davis goes for 17 and now Warwickshire have got trouble. 23 for two. Yeah, absolutely. Three. 23 <laughs> for three, apologies. <laughs> That's the thing we were saying earlier. It's got a bit of a tennis ball bounce, so that back of a length ball will get up slightly higher than expected, hence the top edge there. Um, so yeah, and it's it's just one of those that that's the way Alex Davis plays and that's why he's such a good player but he's got that one wrong yeah and he'll know that yeah as it went up in the air he thought oh no but, and he was up there long enough to know that folks was going to be underneath it with the gloves it would have sort of all happened in slow motion so out comes Dan Mosley now he made runs in the last game 94 against Kent very good young player this one and in fact it was Mosley and Hayne that put on a lot of runs together against Kent yeah. so they're going to <laughs> it's a little bit different for them <laughs> this morning but they're going to need the same sort of partnership from here 
because Sarri will be sniffing an opportunity now. Yeah, absolutely. They've been looking to capitalise on this it's kind of start. Well, a slight crumble here. It's a, it's well, it's just difficult batting conditions yeah. these, but you have to make the most of them as a bowling mm. unit as well. You can be given all the conditions in the world, but if you don't quite get it right, yeah. So, first ball for the left-handed Mosley. As round the wicket goes Roach to him, and Mosley is playing this off the stumps into the leg side, and there is no run. The U's and R's are that he's probably taken that off around about middle, I yeah. would say. <laughs> and if he misses that, <laughs> Mark Roach would have been screaming yeah. at umpire long. <laughs> but again, it's a, it's a good first delivery to get because he's got to play at that. As Mosley. Four slips in there, Sibley, Pope, put out steel as Roach is round the wicket here to Mosley who drives he won't mind seeing that Kemar Roach is not completely in control of that the left-handed Mosley that flies down to backward point he's bringing those slips into play yeah it's quite inviting for a bowler isn't it when the bat is playing shots and we don't look quite in control especially with four slips uh. it's an interesting one this because in the modern sort of last year of england and the way they play and how would england go about this and da, 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 da. but i think at times you have to sort of respect the bowler and yeah. the conditions as around the wicket comes roach again and that's well left by mosley outside is off stump and that's taken by ben folks away to his left hand side because in these conditions if you did go out and try and whack every ball I think you'd probably be all out in an hour. Yeah, you didn't be in for a short day, yes. wouldn't you? So, so, so I think, you know, you do have to to play the conditions as well as the bowlers. Yeah. And at 23 for three, all Warwick's you need now is a quiet half hour. Mm. That's all they need is a quiet half an hour. Keep Burgess and Barnard and Wokes in the dressing room for a while. As Roach is in and mostly allows this one to go outside his off stump. And you can tell that Roach is loving this. Yeah. You, you can tell that he's just enjoying bowling on here. There's a little bit of swing. There's a little bit of nip. There's no great pace to the pitch at all. But every time he's running in, he's thinking to himself, oh, I reckon I could have a wicket here. Yeah, absolutely. It's a I feel like it gets forgotten in a modern game that bowlers can bowl well. And that is actually letting the bowlers bowl a little bit. Yeah, well, I think, again, with the old, and I hate using the phrase, Baz Ball, mm. not everyone can do that. Yeah. And I think expecting people to do it all the time is a bit foolish, as this one's left alone outside the off stump by Mosley. It's a good over from Kemar Roach, the wicket of Alex Davis, gone for 17. And it was Alex Stewart and Mickey Arthur who made a really good point on Kevin Howes' podcast at the beginning of the season that, you know, England, those blokes doing it for England are good players. You yeah. know, they wouldn't be playing for England. There is a bit of a, a leap. And to expect someone just, to, especially a young player, in these conditions to walk out and bash it, yeah. it's a big ask, that. It Absolutely. really is. So I think at times you just have to play what's in front of you. Mm. And at the moment, what's in front of Warwickshire, as it would have been if Surrey had batted, yeah. you know, uh, the, the, the Warwickshire bowlers would have enjoyed this this morning. Yeah. So, so I think you just have to respect what's in front of you. Yeah, absolutely. It's a toss to win, isn't it, today? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, at Rushworth in this. Cool. Mm. Blimey. Yeah. Han and Dolby in this. <laughs> Wokes in this. Yeah. Hassan Ali in this. Yeah, we rubbing our hands together. We're all running in. That's that from the pads of pill there. They're interested. Just coming back slightly. But umpire was uninterested in that. I think you could see how pleased Rory Burns was at the toss when he won it because yeah. he sort of was signalling back <laughs> towards the players as if he just won Olympic gold. <laughs> so I, I, I think it was pretty obvious what both sides would have done because yeah. of the conditions. Yeah, definitely. There's a video on Surrey Socials of after he won a toss. He was very happy with yeah. himself. Well, thank Burns. goodness it's gone well so far mm. because that... that, 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 that could come back and haunt you, couldn't Absolutely. it? Absolutely. Worrell again, short of length, he's ducked underneath that as that's off through to the keeper. Didn't want to get on the wrong side of that bumper. 
Did Hayne there? Yeah, and again, it wasn't a quick bounce at all. It sort of looped over Hayne and then landed at Ben Folks's feet. But actually, in these conditions, the odd short ball, as we saw with Alex mm. Davis, can pick you up a wicket. And, and Hayne there has probably seen Davis out and thought, oh, I'm having absolutely nothing to do with that whatsoever. Yeah. I'm not really sure it was short enough for Davis to be looking for that shot. No, we're all running in again. Oh. Outside, off, left alone by Hayne. It's gone through. New two batters here yet to score. So there's four slips in play. He bent his back a little bit on that one. Mm. And um, Dan Morrill. Mr. Clive Eakin's lost his pen, which is an absolute fiasco. <laughs> Would you like to use this one, Mr. Or oh, I've got one of these clever ones here. Oh. It's a miniature one. I don't know where I got it one from, but it's one of those ones that sort of has all four different colours. Mm. So you can pick green, black, can blue, or red. It's really rather lovely. <laughs> really treat yourself. Or a can full of left. Same result as before, left alone, outside off. It's a good lead, that, again, mm. from Sam Hay. It's, it's, it's just letting that ball swing, then letting it go. Yeah. And, and you know this about, about this better than anyone. If it's doing this, you just have to make a very late decision. Yeah. As late as possible, isn't it? Yeah. If you, if you make that decision too early, he's going to nick that. Yeah, absolutely. You have to let it swing for as long as you can before you play at it. Otherwise, it's just going to be in a wrong position mm -hmm. to play at the ball. Um, that's a trick with swing, especially late swing, as Worrell's and again, oh. all the that's beating him. All ends up, that's just beating him. That's an excellent delivery. I tell you what, it's a good job that Sam Haynes in good nick. Because yeah. I think you've got to be an absolutely fantastic nick not to get an edge on that. Yeah, absolutely. That is an absolute beauty. That is. From Dan Worrell. Even Sam Haynes just signaling down <laughs> to Dan Mosley about that one. Yeah. Oh dear, that's that a ball and a half. Yeah, that is. He's lucky that's missed everything there. War top of his mark already in for his last ball of the over. And that's just slightly short outside off, left alone through to Ben Folks. As that brings the end of the top over. Brookshire 23 for three. Safe to say sorry bowlers are on top here. Yeah. And and, and Sam Hayne is one of those that's definitely in England minds. You know, he's played Lions, he's scored a lot of runs at the beginning of this season. And against this attack in these conditions, if he can get runs here, yeah. that gets noticed very yeah. quickly. Yeah. So, um, you know, this will be a, a a good test for Sam Hayne. He's a wonderful player. He really yeah. is. And, and actually, to be fair, he's played that over pretty well. Yeah. He really has, mainly because he hasn't nicked anything. As <laughs> uh, Kemar Roach from the city end. He's going to come round the wicket here to Mosley. And Mosley, the left-hander, lets this one go outside his off stump. And that's taken low down by Ben Folks to his left. So neither Hay nor Mosley off the mark. Yates gone caught by Steele at third slip off Roach without scoring. Rhodes caught by Pope at second slip off Worrell for six. And Davis caught off the top edge and straight up in the air by Ben Folks off Kemar Roach for 17. 23 for 3, Warwickshire. Kemar Roach once again. Round the wicket he comes, and Mosley's letting that go. It's a pretty good leave, actually. That's come back, and it's taken by folks to his right. So these two now have got through... This is his seventh. Kemar Roach. Warwick's got through six. Tom Laws... Jordan Clark are just beginning to warm up. Tom Laws is whirling his arms in there at mid wicket. Jordan Clark is beginning to have a stretch up there at mid on. Roach with sawdust behind him. Turns again. Almost he's down the pitch trip. Don't mind seeing that at all. This is the Ollie Pope trick. A couple of steps down, say to Kemar Roach, get off that length. Kemar Roach won't mind seeing that, but that that's positive footwork from from Mosley yeah definitely he's make it into a slightly fuller ball so the ball can't do as much off the pitch if you smother it smother it it just doesn't allow it to nibble and get you in a sticky position we've seen a lot of that from Ollie Pope this mm. season Keaton Jennings did it as well 
Roaches into Mosley. Mosley's full with that bounce. Though. He played it with soft hands. It flies away down towards third man. That was the U and R. Just a bit of bounce there off a goodish length. Kemar Roach with a big grin on his face. And they will pick up a, a couple of runs. And Mosley's off the mark with two. 25 for three. Highly rated, this young man. Mm. Uh, Mosley. So be looking forward to watching him have a bat. Those floodlights really are shining now. Yes, quite gloomy skies today. I think I think we'll be all right because we started in this. I don't mm. think it's deteriorated at all. Mm. It could be like this most of the day as Roach is around the wicket. And again, they're just bouncing, but he's getting himself forward here. And again, Roach is just indicating that's bounced on him. But all he's trying to do is, as you say, Chloe, give himself a bit of time. Yeah. And he's played that that nicely. It's not a quick enough pitch to get a short leg in there because it's not going to roar up and smash the gloves, is it? No. But but it's nicely played by Mosley. On, on this pitch, he, he feels safe enough doing that. Yeah. No, it's just keeping it in, that, in mind for that ball. It's just slightly back of the length. Around the wicket goes Roach once again. That's nicely bowled. Just a tempter. Pushed it a little bit wider. <laughs> Mosley's got the toe end of the bat on that looking to drive. Kemar Roach ends up with his hands on his head. If that is it for Roach, it's a very good opening spell. Seven overs, picked up a couple of wickets. Warrell, I think, fancies one more. It could be a pair of sevens here for the opening pair. And then Laws and, and Clark for a go. But Warrell comes marching up. Six overs, two maidens, one for 13. And Warwickshire are 25 for three. Yeah, the opening bowlers here have bowled really well. well Definitely want to keep on going to see if they can squeeze another before the end of a first spell, for sure. That would be the icing on the cake, wouldn't it? They're yeah. getting a short leg in for Sam Hain. Jamie Smith has gone in under the helmet at short leg. Yeah, but Worrell running in just on a lamp defended back to him there. I'm loving this. Yeah. Uh, just Sam Hain in great form up against... Dan Worrell, who's in great form. <laughs> this, is, this is a terrific little battle between these two at the moment. Yeah, this is definitely what you come to cricket for, to see a proper battle between bat and ball. For sure, as Worrell's just returned to the top of his mark. You can hear a lot of chatter in the field as he's running in for his second ball of the over, full of a lamp. Oh, half a shout there. He's just got him on the pad, looked like it's just sliding down leg there and umpire is very uninterested in that one Peter Hartley stood at this end and square leg is Nigel Long and Jordan Clark is going through his violent warm up <laughs> routine at the moment stood up there at mid on is Jordan Clark yeah it's just Warrell Running in full of lamp left alone by Sam Hain there. Didn't fancy that one. Great leave, that, isn't it? Yeah. That is yeah. a great leave. Easy. It's a really good ball, that, from Worrell, but that's a terrific leave from mm. Hain. Yeah, he's leaving it so late to make that decision as well. It just looks like he's got so much time. It's interesting, isn't it? Even if you didn't know he'd scored lots of runs and 200s, and it sounds a strange thing to say because he hasn't got off the mark yet but in these 10 balls you can see Sam Haynes in good form yeah because he hasn't nicked one yet yeah and if you're in bad form you, you're already sat back <laughs> in the pavilion with your pads on <laughs> so Correct. you can tell he's in good nick yep or in his gather again full of left defended by Hain there this is top quality stuff again yeah we, we've been treated so far this season to some really top quality cricket this is right up there at the moment. Yeah. Absolutely. You've got a proper contest between bat and ball. With spectators here be observing something quite tough. And as I said, it would have been exactly the same the other way around. Had mm. this been Hannon, Dalby, Rushworth, it would have been the same. It would have been tough for Surrey. Absolutely. Or in his gather again, full of lap defended very late there. Haynes interested. We've almost got a quarter of the way down the wicket there. Well, Mosley slipped. <laughs> trying to turn and come back there. He almost got himself in a right old pickle. <laughs> but yes, that had had this been 
Rushworth and Hannah Dalby in these mm. conditions. It would have been tough for Sibley and Burns and Pope and Patel and folks this morning. Yeah, absolutely. It's just one of those days where you want to win the toss and get yourself into a good position to start the game. As was again left outside. Doing a lot of hand signals <laughs> here. I'm feeling a little like behind me is Pep Guardiola. <laughs> um, and he's doing some hand signals behind me as if he were in the technical area. So it's going to be our first change in bowling. It's going to be Jordan Clark. That was a terrific opening spell from Kemar Roach. It really was. He's picked up two wickets in that spell. Yates and Davis. And now Jordan Clark is coming into the attack with the left-handed Dan Mosley on strike. He'll have three slips, a backward point, the cover, the mid-off, mid-on, mid-wicket. And then Mr. Dan Worrell out there at deep backwards square, just in front of the Holly stand. As Jordan Clark is coming round the wicket and oh, Mosley inside edge looking to push forward. And that runs out towards deep backwards square. Chloe, a few thoughts from you on that first delivery, and then you will be joined by Mr. Clive Beacon. Lovely. Um, yes. John Clark's probably rubbing his hands together here. We've seen an opening pair of three wickets fall already for 26 runs. It's true bowling conditions here, and I've been rejoined. I won't be uh, with you for too long. I'm just going to do my report, and then Phil Britt's going to uh, <laughs> join you. Excellent. So, really tough morning for Warwickshire, but terrific performance from Surrey in the field. Let's see whether Clark can continue that. Three slips in place, bowling to Sam Haynes. 13 balls so far, yet to get off the mark. Uh, he will get off the mark there as he puts that one to back of square leg for a single. Well, I know he wondered whether there was a second, but I think. Sam Hayne was right that there wasn't. 27 4 3. It's still pretty cloudy. Floodlight's still on, but the weather holding at the moment. <laughs> Perfect, really, for Surrey. Apart from the fact they're having to wear sweaters and have hand warmers. <laughs> Do you have the hand warmers in your pockets when you're out there on the field? When it's really cold. Yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, round the wicket comes Clark to Mosley, pushes that to the offside. Point for no run. 7 for 3 remains the score. Mosley on 3. Battered well against Kent. Got a big test for him here. There we go. This is Clive Eakin at Edgbaston, where Warwick are having a difficult morning against Surrey, having been put in by the county champions on an overcast day and up against a very strong opening attack of Kemar Roach and Dan Worrell. And Warwick are 27 for three. Rob Yates was first to go without a run on the ball when he edged Roach uh, to fourth slip. And then Will Rose also edged to the slips. Dan Worrell, the bowler, on that occasion, he made six after a little bit of a stand between him and Alex Davis, but just three. Two balls later, Davis topped edge to attempt a pull shot off Roach to be caught by wicketkeeper Ben Folks for 17. The informed Sam Haynes in there now. He's battling one off his first 14 balls. Dan Mosley's on three. Warwickshire 27 for three in the 15th over. So I'll just describe the last ball of this over and then Phil will join Chloe. 27 for three. Not too many in the ground at the moment. It's pretty cold out there. I imagine a lot of people are on the ground have found some indoor places to watch the game. Clark to Mosley turns that round to mid wicket where it's well stopped and he doesn't get a run for a decent enough shot. Warwickshire 27 for three after 15 overs. And as they say, after a word from Chloe, it'll be Phil Britt here. Yeah, <laughs> Yeah, 27 for three for Warwickshire's 
been incredibly tough conditions so far for the Warwickshire batters coming in. It's, yeah, we've played it well. We've got Sam Hayne in and Mosley's in and got it. There we go. Oh, it's not quite working. There we go. Good afternoon. I was saying good afternoon because it is just a good it's afternoon. Just good <laughs> afternoon, hasn't it? <laughs> what have you thought of this morning? Well, I think they bowled extremely well, haven't they? They've used the conditions perfectly. They kept the ball up to the bat. Yeah. And really tested the Warwickshire b uh, batsmen who have been in pretty good form so far this season, but uh, they've. Uh, Worked well. We're seeing a bowling change at the pavilion end. Tom Law's in uh, replacing Dan Worrell, and his first ball is a loosener. It's wide outside the off stump. And Sam Hayne <coughs> let's has a look at it. There's a little sort of lift of the bat, but the ball harmlessly through. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's been tough for the Warwickshire batters this morning. Yeah. I think whoever won the toss was going to bowl. Conditions help, and when you've got top class bowling seam attack, yeah. it's going to be hard work. Absolutely. I would say these are possibly the two, along with Hampshire, the best uh, attacks in the uh, in the county circuit. Mm. This next one again is wide outside the off stump, and again Hain has little or nothing to do with it, just uh, watching it harmlessly through. Uh, the other thing which we forget is Warwickshire. This is their third game, and it's only the third time they've batted this season because in both games they never had a second innings. Yeah. First yeah. game against Somerset, they didn't get a. And then they won by the innings against Kent. Yeah. So, but even more remarkable, Haynes got two centuries in both times he's been to the wicket. He's uh, in, and this one he hits away off the back foot, away in front of square on the offside. It runs away and crosses the boundary rope now. So Hain gets his first boundary. Warwickshire moved to 31 for three. He goes on to five. And Dan Mosley moves on three. Yeah, that's a shot of a man in form, isn't it? The ball's still doing a little bit. Possibly not as much as it was when they first went out there. No, that's, uh, it, uh, some of those early ones, there was a terrific move. Yeah. His laws again in and bowls. Again, this one is uh, again outside the off stump, and this time Hayen has nothing to do with it. Going through to the keeper, who... Uh, and folks back in the side for this match who missed a previous game. But he'll be pleased to, to get another game before the what he hopes he'll be playing in the Ashes series in the test side. Three slips wait as Tom Laws in bowls at Hain. Just plays this one away into the offside, uh, straight out to cover and there's no run it's sort of cover extra cover position it's uh, neither one or the other quite but it's, m it's more extra cover than cover at the point yeah it's done well though it looks like there's just a little bit of a way swing on that delivery so he's doing well to combat the swing here not quite got the line right yet, Laws. In the last ball of his opening over, he's in, and again it's wide outside the off stump, and again Hayne is forward to it, and uh, just letting it go through, and end of Laws first over. That uh, boundary was the uh, single scoring shot, taking Warwickshire on to 31 for three. But I think the two opening bowlers, Roach and Worrell, bowled beautifully. Got yeah. three wickets. Um, no more than they deserved. I th Alex Davis's shot was one which we've seen Alex Davis do that. that sometimes he, he goes for that pull shot. This time he got the top edge, and, uh, but the, the other two wickets were some good fielding as well to support them. Yeah, Jordan Clark in full of a length. It's just a bit of an inside edge there by Mosey. A tumbling stop by mid wicket, so a double ball to start the over. Yeah. So you played much yet this season? I saw you. You got beaten <laughs> by the Blazers, wasn't it, in your opening match? And was it in the Rachel Hayhoe 
Yep. So we started off with Rachel Hey Ho. Yeah, I'm not going to be. I'm not going to ask how you got on like the others did. <laughs> Thank I'm you. not going to embarrass you. Well, <laughs> <laughs> Clark from a city end, full of a lamp that's defended to mid on there. Yes, always onwards and upwards, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> It's best to get him out of the way at the beginning of the season. Absolutely. Get him in now. Was it LBW? It was. Was it a good good decision? Oh, yeah, I think it was a oh, good wow. decision. Oh, wow. Well, you're very... Uh, I was going to say, normally the last person who thinks they're out is the best. Yeah, I know. I, I will hold my hands up when I've stepped right in front of the stumps. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Clark running in right on round. Little skip down the wicket there. Flicked through mid wicket and that will find a boundary for sure. This is just found a little boundary here, but kicking on slightly now. I feel like the swing has come off the ball a little bit. They've got a bit of a shine off the ball. Dan Mosley is he's coming down the wicket and taking the bowler on, just trying to knock him off that nagging length. Um, and that one again, good use of the feet and yeah. plowing it away. And of course, mostly just missed out on that century in the last match against Kent when they were going for the bonus points and to set up um, the uh, target. Clark just outside off left alone. Yeah, I mean, he got 94 in the last game, so he's mm. not not in bad nick at the moment. No, no, he's, uh, he, he's very promising, exciting young player. Yeah. Quite a tall man, six foot two, but, uh, imposing but left hander. Mm. He's done well in limited overs cricket as well. Came into the T20 side okay. uh, and has done well. So it's a big prospect for Warwickshire. Clark on a length defended by Mosley there. I do, they've done well here just to s kind of settle the boat a little bit. <coughs> Well, Warwickshire really would li love to get through to lunch with these two still at the wicket. Mm. Um, you know, I think Mark it was saying if they got in at lunchtime three down, they wouldn't feel it was been too bad a morning's work. Um, yeah. They've got a battle for the best part of an hour here, so if they could get through, it will be an achievement. Clark just on a length defended there by Mosley, and that will bring the end of the over. So Warwickshire now 35 for three. Hayner's on five, and Mosley's on seven. So not quite the same threat from these uh, first change bowlers, Jordan Clark and uh, Tom Laws, as we'd had from War Kim Roach and uh, Dan Warrell, but. Uh, even so, they're going to have there's still something plenty there in the wicket for the for the bowler if he gets it in the right spot. Having a, a chat with Ben Folks now, as uh, Jordan Clark as he puts his sweater back on and goes back down to the mid-on position. That's one of the uh, one of the problems a little bit when you're not familiar with the opposition players to actually know which of them with these cable knit sweaters on <laughs> which one because you've got no numbers <laughs> visible laws are in and bowls outside the off stump and again Stan Hayne who's on five lets that one go Hayne in the rush he's got uh, as we just said before already got almost 300 runs this season to his name mm. in uh, championship cricket for just the two innings both of which were centuries. He waits, he's on five, 35 for three. Laws in, brings Hayne forward and watchful as the ball again just seems away from the right-hander and through to the keeper. But, uh, no shot offered. Yeah, it's definitely not doing as much as it was no. opening up, but. Last season we had um, the match, first match of the season here mm -hmm. um, against Surrey and we got into the second innings just after tea on the fourth day. Mm. So I think this might be slightly different as this one is played away nicely by Hayne at two extra cover position. A slight misfeel, but uh, Hayne thought about taking the single and then decided not to. But uh, I think we're probably going to get uh, a, a bit more different ball um, 
and I think as well there's a little bit more juice in this week. We've had a lot of rain before, leading right the way through this uh, March and April. It's been uh, very wet. I was talking to uh, Gary Barwell and his group uh, before play started. Laws bowls and again through to the keeper, and there's no run. And he thought there would be a bit something in it for the bowler, and clearly yeah. there is. Interestingly, he thought as well there might be something for a spinner mm. early on, but uh, Warwickshire don't go with a recognised spinner. It's very much a, they've got um, a couple of guys who bowl spin, but you wouldn't say they're recognised wicket-taking spinners. Uh, sorry, um, laws in bowls, and uh, this one a bit short and uh, just hurrying. Hayne, who had to jab down on the ball, it uh, runs out to cover point. Hayne, have you got that on the uh, on the wrist? Yeah. I think he wore that one a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> just looking a bit sort of sorry for himself there. As he <laughs> wanders out towards square leg. Just make sure everything's back in order. Yes. Yeah, he did. It's uh, it wasn't the wrist. It was uh, perhaps just on the, the in the stomach area. Give me a bit of a rub. <laughs> You'll be all right. <laughs> Thomas comes in again, bowls the final ball of his second over. He's in, bowls, and Hayne just guides this one away out to uh, just in front of point. There's no run. End of Law's second over, it's 35 for three. Yeah, they've done. Well, here they look like they're just settling in now. They've kept their heads down for quite a while. Both batters remained on zero for quite a while, finding it hard to. Find their first run now. Just kicking on a little bit, Jordan Clark to continue from the city end. He's got three steps in play. He's coming right arm round to the left hander here. As he's running in full of length, driven by Mersey Vatu mid on. Just chucks it back to the keeper and flip it back around the field. So we've got a game this week? Yeah, we've got a game at uh, Worcester on Saturday against Northern Diamonds. And then on the Monday, we've got one High Wycombe area against the Vipers. Oh, you're not playing at um, the um, Bugatti ground, are you? Jordan Clark just outside off left alone. Not sure. Okay. Uh, I think it's in the state we're playing on on Monday, actually. I couldn't tell you. Okay. <laughs> if it is, then you'll thoroughly enjoy it. Really? I've, yeah. I've yeah, it's a lovely ground. Yeah, I've been told we've got a good ground. I haven't been there before, so hopefully I'll be in for a treat. Is that in the. That's in the. Um, hey Hope, Rachel Hey Hope Flint competition, yeah. the 50 over competition. Jordan. Clark outside off, big swish there by Mose. It's just gone through and folks with the gloves. Uh, having complimented him on his foot movement when he took the fall, there was absolutely nothing there at all. It was a, a real sort of swing, <laughs> feet entrenched in the, in the crease, and he just swung at a wide delivery and uh, very lucky not to get a, a nick onto that one through to the keeper. Yep. He stays on seven, Hayne on five, 35 for three. Jordan Clark really running in for this delivery back of a length, just patted back to him. Yeah, the name of the ground is Wormsley. Yes, it's Wormsley. So that's where you're playing, is yeah. it? Oh, well, you, you. So that's on this Monday. This Monday, coming back for the day. Oh, Monday. you'll, you'll st really enjoy that. Okay. It's a, a lovely ground, um, and uh, it's a long. Long drive down there, off the road, down through the estate to get to it. You wouldn't want. So. Well, I, uh, <laughs> I was meant to pick somebody up, and I missed them at the, on the road, and they had to walk down, and they told <laughs> me what a long walk it was. <laughs> <laughs> Jordan Clark, pull of the lamp, and that's Jonas just found the inside edge there. And it's gone down to quite a backward square on the boundary. As it's yeah. featured many times that ground on. TV programs, things like Midsummer Murders, it's been on Has loads. It? Wherever there's been a cricket theme, it's been Wormsley Cricket Club, cricket ground. Okay. Used, yeah. 
It's, uh, mm. uh, when you uh, there, you'll see why. It's a uh, very, very attractive ground. Be interesting to see it then. Sean and Clark just coming back over to the right hand. He's got the right arm over. Three slips in play. And it is Sam Hain, the man in form to face as Jordan Clark is really running in on the left, left alone there by Hain. And that will bring the end of the over. So watch it off. 36 for free. Hain is on five and Mercy is on eight. They're not making the batsman have to play the ball quite as much as the opening pair. They're just giving it a little bit more width, um, which is probably allowing both batsmen the opportunity to really get settled in a bit more. They're not being pulled forward and having to, which uh, Roach and Moore were doing. But um, particularly, I think Laws at the moment has not quite got his line right to, to, to the right-handed Hayen. He's going to have a chance this time because he's going to be bowling to left-handed Dan Mosley, who is on eight. Yeah, we've worked hard for these runs. It's going to be hard work, I think, you know, Chloe, all the way through on here. I don't think there's going to be easy runs on here. No. A forecast for later in the afternoon is not great here. Um, rain somewhere between about three and five, they reckon. Oh. This one is a seeming away, and again, mostly playing at that one from the crease sort of just pushing the bat out at it but the ball moving away from him and uh, through to Ben Folks. Yeah that's it slightly tighter line as you were just saying it was just the bat is settling a little bit not forcing them to play or um, double guess for decisions. I don't think Law's played in the first game but he did well in the in the last match this one uh, is uh, getting Mosley across his stumps and driving it up to mid on where there's no run. I think he ended up with four wickets. My laptop's gone down. <laughs> well, the problem I've got is all the top key row. Uh, Clive was saying that Jed Scott's has got no numbers working. The whole of my top line has stopped working, so I'm having to use a remote keyboard. Um, there's a new laptop on order which should be here soon, but it completely restricts me. I can't get in on my code. This next one in there's uh, mostly push, trying to drive a ball outside the off -stump. It's a bit of a lofty drive and uh, almost no real sort of it didn't go through with any any purpose and the ball goes past the outside edge and through to the keeper but it's one of those where when you don't play it with purpose you can get a little touch to it and you yeah. suddenly you're on the wall back to the pavilion. Absolutely. You have to commit to any shot you play on these kind of decks. Yeah. It's Laws again. He's in and bowls. And this is wider outside the off stump. But a good tumbling stop in front of first slip from Ben Folks. It's 36 for three. Most of it remains on eight. But, uh, at the moment, Warwickshire won't be in any real hurry. They'll just be making sure that they... Uh, See this new ball. Yeah. Oh, we in the uh, is that the nineteenth over we're in? So, so as in comes Laws again and bowls and wide outside the off stump and again across his stumps and again looking to drive it away through the offside mostly, but uh, the ball getting up at more than he'd expected, a little bit shorter and wide outside the off stump, mostly really playing again. Just a little bit airily at the moment. Mm, we've seen so far that there's been quite a tennis ball bounce off mm. this pitch, just getting up higher than you expect. It's causing a little bit of trouble here. It's Laws in. That's a lovely delivery. Brings him forward and right through. Through to the keeper. Finishes the over off with a beauty, but uh, he'll feel there that. Uh, was advantage bowler in that over. He uh, had to mostly sort of playing a little. He said, down, down, having a, a good chat with Sam Hain. But it's uh, it's hard going for these two. Yeah, absolutely. It's not easy out there. Bowlers are just bowling really well. It's one thing winning the toss in these kind of conditions, but it's another thing bowling to them and bowling bowling well to them as yep. well. Yeah, you can have all the conditions, but if you don't put the ball in the right spot, then it's, uh, <laughs> it's all to no purpose. Exactly. <laughs>
Jordan Clark to start um, over from the City End to Spain. He's five of 27 deliveries. He's sprinting in from City End, short for length. He's left that alone, didn't fancy that bumper there. Got a just a hurried Hayden a little bit, didn't it? He was sort of look, got into position and then had bent the knees and ducked in underneath it, but uh, good delivery from uh, Jordan Clark. Absolutely, those sh shorter deliveries today are just getting big on a batsman. That's when you lose control if you decide to play it, so better in this position just to leave him alone. Jordan Clark full of a length left alone, and that's kept quite low, actually. Yes. Bent folks having to tumble across yeah. completely. <laughs> as it was down at boot, boot height as it went through. Yeah. It's a pity I can't get to all these people to let them know that the museum's open at lunchtime and the heaters are on. <laughs> <laughs> so they can come in and have a good warm. <laughs> Don't worry about what we're showing. Just come in and sit by the radiators. <laughs> Jordan <laughs> Clark. Here again, full of lap that's driven back to him. He's got a hand on that. So I reckon that would have possibly been a four if he didn't get a hand on that. So. Just looking around the crowd, it's a, a lot of top coats and and uh, heavy jackets on today out there to keep warm. Yeah, hoods are up, bubble hats on. Yeah. <laughs> Cups of tea. It's been like that. I've been to a lot of football matches in the evening, um, and again, you sort of turn so cold at night. Jordan Clark full of lap defended. Back down to mid on there. Yeah, it does get nippy, doesn't it? Well, this year particularly, you know, so we're not that far off May, and yet uh, and we had to scrape the frost off the window of the car on Tuesday I know. morning. I know, my It's a real heavy frost, so it's, uh, it's strange conditions. It's been very wet and really cold. And uh, I shouldn't think it's been easy if you're a groundsman making repairing wickets and things in these conditions to actually be able to, to get and do it. To actually get something out there, yeah, you can see a lot of the cricket clubs haven't actually managed to get no play at all. Jordan Clark, full of lamp defended to mid wicket, they've taken a run, and that's a shy at the stumps there. They make the single safely, and I think another single to the total. The um yeah, some of the, the leagues have actually abandoned the first week and tagged it on to the end of the season. Mm -hmm. So rather than <coughs> losing the fixtures on block, they just delayed the season and made what was effectively the second game, now the opening game, and then yeah. rolled it to the back. <coughs> yeah, it's probably a better way of doing it, isn't it? Because yep. nobody can play when it's... No, no. Well, it was everywhere. so wet, the grounds... Jordan Clark outside off left and alone to the left. That brings the end of the over. So Warwickshire now 37 for three. Payne is on six and Mosley is on eight. I'm not sure this light is so great actually. I'm just looking round and uh, the the shadows being thrown off by the floodlights from the players. Mm -hmm. I don't, it, it's quite they're quite strong considering <laughs> it's half past half past twelve in the morning. In the afternoon, mm. just after midday, it, uh, it, you just wonder how much darker it would have to be before they st started doing checks with the light meters. I haven't seen them take a reading in no. so far. I haven't taken them yet, so. Anyway, Tom Laws will continue from the pavilion end. He's start his fourth over to the right handed Sam Hayne. He's in and bowls, and Hayne runs this one away through uh, the gully down to the third man boundary. It crosses the ropes, uh, just left it late. And uh, that was, what, again, outside the off stump, but Hayne just uh, using uh, the angle bat and uh, finding the gap. Three slips there and, the, and a backward point, but uh, Hayne just guided it through nicely through the gap and down to the fence. Uh, he goes into double figures and Warwick should move on to 41 for three. That's his second boundary um, this, so far. 
as Laws in again bowls and again this is much wider outside the Opsom. It starts wide and uh, seams away after it's gone past Sam Hay and, and in the end the running folks has to take it somewhere between slip and second slip um, to tidy it up. So it's on 41 for three. Clive will be coming back in. He can come back in for um, for you, Chloe, and then um, Mark will take over from me once Clive's got settled. As Laws comes in again and bowls, and Hain is across and uh, watching that through to the keeper. It's no run, 41 for three. Let's finish this over and then we'll let Mark <coughs> back on. Good afternoon, Clive. Good afternoon, Phil. First time this season. Yes. Good start from Surrey. They bowled well, haven't they, this morning? Well, I thought Rachel Morrell's opening spells were, was, was excellent. Yeah. Yes. Laws in, bowls gain. This is just played uh, on the run by Hayne, coming forward to it and uh, just running. Up to I don't think Warwickshire will face a tougher opening spell this season. They might face a, a quicker one in terms of the pitch. Um, but other than that, no, uh, I don't think they'll face a better one all season. I agree. We were just saying they're probably in this in this uh, game. There's probably there's two of the certainly two of the best attacks in the uh, on the county circuit. Balls in, balls short. Hayne ducks underneath that one harmlessly through to Ben Folks. But we have got. One of the best batters in the country. And one day, one day, <laughs> the England selectors will notice. The fact that he got to the Big Bash final, Sam Hay, may have helped his cause a bit, because that's the sort of thing that does get noticed. He certainly started the season... Uh, well, he had a terrific season last year, so he's continued last year's form. Laws in, bowls, and uh, Hayne <coughs> cross uh, stumps, runs it down to mid-on to Jordan Clark. It's the end of the over. And, uh, after a few words from Clive, it'll be back to Mark Church. Thank you, Phil. So 41 for three. These two, well, they've added 18 so far, but perhaps more importantly, they've seen off 11 overs. That's kind of what it's about now. Get to lunch. Hopefully, it'll become a little easier. And possibly the uh, first change bowlers haven't quite been as effective as the two openers who were very, very good. It's been excellent from Mosley and Hayne. This <coughs> really has Hayne in particular. So it's Clark bowling to Mosley round the wicket, and it's driven by uh, Mosley, not out of the middle of the bass, and there's a tumbling stop in the covers. There's no rum. Yeah, the Hain England thing is a very interesting one. <coughs> it's a little bit like Hildreth, isn't it? You, you wonder at times how James Hildreth never got mm. on <coughs> I, I think Hain's still got time, and I, I, I'll go back to what I said this morning. I, I think against an attack like this, runs in these conditions will definitely get noticed. Clark to Mosley, and that's left as no run. I mean, he did get an England Lions score, which I don't think happened in the end because of his involvement in the Big Bash, but he was initially in the England Lions score, so at least that suggested he wasn't completely off the off the radar. The one that really, I think, I think got to him, actually, though he would never have said it publicly, and got to us all a bit, was that shadow England team. Remember during COVID when they had to pick a completely new team, and he didn't even get into that, and that was... That was just baffling. Admittedly, he wasn't in his greatest form at the time, but even so, I think that was an oversight. Anyway, Clark comes into bowl, and Mosley hits out into the ground and not far off isn't it, onto his stumps, but he survives. I think, I think all you can do, really, is what Sam Hain is doing, and score runs. I, th I think that's really all you can do. Who, who knows how it works with England these days? Whatever it is they do, it's working. But but I think I think all you can do is score runs, and that's exactly how it. And, and it's a, it's been a super ten there so far. It really has. Clark into Mosley again. Oh, Mosley comes shuffling down the pitch and pushes it to mid off. There's no run. Interesting from down Mosley. Again, it's that 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 whole thing of just trying to take Jordan Clark off a length, not allowing just to run in and. Bang away at that length outside the off stump. 
But it, it sounds a strange thing to say that he's only made ten, but it's been a terrific ten so far. Well, he's, uh, you know, he's sort of calling me. He's 21 now, Dan Mosley. He's, uh, this next one. Oh, he's a, that wasn't such a great shot. Expansive drive, which he's missed completely. Clark can't quite believe it. As it goes to the wicketkeeper, there's no rum. Yeah, and Dan Mosley, huge talent. Huge, huge talent. And that's the way he plays. But he's got to be careful. Done all this work now, and the last thing you want to do is nick one of those. Absolutely. Made 94 against Kent, but he's one of the young players that Warwickshire have high hopes for. It's one of the reasons why Matt Lamb was allowed to go. Uh, this next one is pushed out to the onside, and they're going to get a run. They just decided they wanted room for the likes of Mosley and Bethel in the team. So, well, Matt Lamb, many people felt, was a little unlucky. That was the reasoning behind it. I don't think there was any... It wasn't the case that they didn't see anything in Matt Lamb. It's just that they saw great potential in Mosley and Bethel and basically wanted them playing. Unfortunately, Bethel isn't playing at the moment because of injury. I think it's, at times you have to make that decision. Yeah. Future of the club and all that. Indeed. Uh, as uh, over the wicket comes uh, Clark and a late decision by Hay not to play at that. And it goes through to the wicketkeeper at the end of a probing over from Clark, just the single offer to Mosley, who's on nine, and Warwickshire 44 for three off 23 overs. Yeah, and, and, and Laws and, and Clark are bowling nicely here without getting the edges. Laws, I, I had a little stand on the balcony and watch him, and he's getting that ball to swing, and he's, he's quicker than everybody thinks, Tom Laws. He does get it down there at a good rate of knots. 44 for three then. It's laws to continue down below us. Three slips in there. There's the backward point cover mid off, mid on. There's the mid wicket, and there is the long leg Kimar Roach down there, all on his own. The left handed Mosley is on strike on nine as Laws is over the wicket to Mosley, and he's pushing this one down towards backward point. Round comes Cameron Steele to do the fielding. Mosley's off to probably do his bootlaces up, I think, here. Yep, he's taken off both, both gloves. Gets a bit closer to lunch. Yeah, exactly. That's the <laughs> other thing. It eats up a, a few seconds, but just redoing his boot laces at the moment. It's Dan Mosley. Elsewhere, Kent in a spot of bother at uh, Lords, 49 for four against Middlesex. Dunham going pretty well against Derbyshire, though they have lost a wicket, 73 for one in the 24th. And Rain has now intervened at Bristol. Can just not get much oh, luck there, yeah. are they? Lords over the wicket. He comes to Mosley. Mosley's letting this one go. Outside is off stump. Sussex 47 for one. And at Leicester, Leicestershire 95 for two against Glamorgan. At Ireland, Sri Lanka declared 704 for three. Thanks, lads. <laughs> <laughs> so Nishan Madushka 205. Castle Mendes 244. 245, rather. Failure by Dimuth Kuranatni. He only made 115. And Angelo Matthews 100 not out. Laws is in. Oh, and driving thick edges, Mosley. He's not in control of that. That flies away. All along the floor down towards backward point. A tumbling stop from Cameron Steele away to his right. Score remains 44 for three because Ireland did pretty well in their first inning. Still 100 as well. And they got 492. They're now 40 for two. 41 for two in their second innings. Paul Sterling, a Bears T20 player involved in that game. He, he made 100. He did 103. Terrific. There's Laws over the wicket. He comes once again, and Mosley will just take this off his hip, tuck it away down to Kemar Roach down there at long leg, and we'll pick up a single. Laws and Mosley in deep discussion. 45 for three. Sam Hayne comes back on to strike. Yeah, there'll be some. Tired looking bowling for you yes. there for Ireland. <laughs> I won't, I won't go oh through that. Would be cruel. They must be so fed up on teams. Nothing on the long. There we are. Um, so Warwickshire 45 for three. So they might yet get to 704 for three. You never know. It'd be Could some do. effort. It would be. It would probably be the end of the fourth day yes, by the time be. they it got there. I don't think it'd be by this evening. <laughs> uh, Tom Laws. Coming over the wicket to the right-handed Hayne, and that's down the leg side, and Hayne will feel he's missed out a touch there because he kept going. He got nothing on it. It's a good one-handed take, that, from Ben Folks tumbling away to 
his left hand side. Well, I know it's early days, but Hayne at the moment has got the slowest century in the championship this season anywhere. It's uh, one at Taunton took 254 balls. I wouldn't be surprised if he did get 100 here. As if he didn't challenge that figure. Settles once again over his back. As Laws is into him. Oh, that swings back. Big shout for LBW. Not given by Peter Hartley. Just got trapped on the crease a touch there. Big shout coming back into him. And umpire Hartley immediately shook his head. End of the over. One from Laws, just a single off it. Warwickshire 45 for three. I suppose always a slice. Or, or the, the, the Hayne looks as if he's potentially vulnerable to that because of the way he plays. But like um, Jonathan Trott in that respect, right? playing across the line. Um, but he's looked pretty solid so far. Just, I mentioned the slowest century, just curiosity in the figures so far for the quickest century of the season. Three players have got hundreds in 93 balls. And those are the quickest, and two of them uh, playing in this game for Surrey. That's going down the leg side. Uh, wicket keeper and uh, wicket keeper more than bowler, but both made a, a little um, query to the umpire as to whether that might not have brushed a glove on the way. Uh, the umpire doesn't think so. Yeah, Ben Folks and Ollie Pope have both got 93 ball hundreds, along with Tom Price in that extraordinary game which Chloe witnessed at New Road. Interesting, Ben Fogues is up there, isn't it? The next one's left by Mosley, Clark Bowling. 11 runs off his curiosity, curiosity of stats. This is his sixth over. He's only gone for 11 runs, and yet he's not bowled a maiden yet. No, and I, I think, you know, those singles are going to be very important this morning. Warwickshire, I think if they could get to lunch three down, all right, there wouldn't be too many runs on the board, but I'd be quite happy with that. Yeah. Don't think they're going to get maximum batting points in this game. Clark round the wicket to bowl and Mosley hits it into the ground. Rolls away. There's no run. Goes on walkabout. He's just wanting to feel bat on ball at the moment mm. now, Mosley. Yeah, 10 or 47 deliveries. It isn't his normal sort of strike rate, is it? No, he might be finding it harder to be patient than Sam Amon. It's a good learning process for him. Hits the ground hard with his bat as Clark comes in and he gets behind that one well enough and plays it to mid on. He's an attractive player though, isn't he? he is. Even that shot there is an attractive looking shot. Everything very neat and tidy about Mosley. It is only his tenth first class match, we should remember. Well, he's, he's, he's a very, very young man in terms of first class yeah. experience. He's 94 for. Uh, against Kent rather was his highest score to, to date Clark round the wicket balls to him and he hits that uh, way off his toes that's a nice looking shot it's uh, traveling fairly slowly he'll get two runs for it to move on to 12 47 for three might think about a short mid wicket after that he's a little bit uppish he's played two in that area isn't he in consecutive balls yeah, he's sticking with his three slips at the moment he may, he may think about that it's uh, a fairly long carry out towards the Holly stand. Yeah. Sort of over to the right of the square as we look. Clark in and he just withdraws his bat, Mosley, as that goes down the leg side. And it's taken by the wicket keeper. There's no run, so Mosley adding a couple on that over to move on to 12. Warwickshire uh, accumulating slowly but surely 47 for three it's the biggest partnership of the innings so far worth 24. I don't think it's actually too far off the pitch that we played on the opening game last season I seem to remember it's sort of this side of the square so not too far away from where we were for the opening game last season which sort of ended up as a draw Michael Burgess batted very well yes in the last hour, well and of course there was a legendary innings from Ollie Hannon Dolby oh, it was an absolute classic of its genre. Got the details of it here somewhere. Yes. Laws. What he took eight, it, what was it, 60 odd balls to get off the mark? I think he was distraught when he did get a run. As Laws was in. Oh, that's so. a big shout for LBW. That's brilliant. Swung it back into Hayne. 
traps him on the boot. That was out. That's a terrific bit of bowling from Tom Laws. It's that pace he has. And Sam Hain goes for 10. That's a big wicket for Surrey before lunch. And Tom Laws knew. I think Sam Hain knew as well. And Hain makes his way back. LBW for 10 and 47 for four. Yeah, it's a massive blow that for Warwickshire. Sam Hain was digging in well. He felt that if he could get to lunch, he had the potential to play a really crucial innings for Warwickshire, but a really good ball from Laws, you say. As soon as uh, we saw it, it looked out. And he faced 42 balls for his 10. But after doing that work, he's not been able to go on. Yeah, so Oli Allen Dolby. Um, where is it? Uh, 94 minutes to score his first run, which is, it says here in Wisdom, believed to be a championship record. It's always quite difficult with minutes, isn't it? Because it's not quite. Anyway, um, his 67th ball. Yes, I can remember being really disappointed. Yeah, I think well. he was. I think. I wasn't there a suggestion that it might have been a leg, leg by? by. Yeah, yeah. But it wasn't given as a leg by. Yeah, I know. It was the umpire really ruined that <laughs> by giving him a run, didn't they? So out comes Ed Barnard into the middle to draw in Dan Mosley. But that's a terrific ball from Lawson. And the other thing about that, Clive, is the pace. He is so much quicker than he looks. Yeah. And it is dipped. It's on his toe and it's quick that from Tom Laws. Terrific piece of bowling to get the very, very informed Sam Hain LBW. Now, sorry, he'll be sniffing another one before lunch now. Barnard Just out there in the middle. Talking of Risen, the former editor of It Is City Next Door, Shield Berry. Shield Berry, I interviewed him about his brilliant new book. Ah, I expect that's why he's there to talk to Kevin about world. it. Oh, he's already done that. <laughs> As Laws is in and Barnard's off the mark straight away, going across his stumps, turning this one into the leg side. They'll pick up a single. One more to the total. Barnard off the mark and Mosley comes on to strike on 12. For any cricket lover and any county cricket lover, Disappearing World by Shieldberry is a must read because he focuses on all 18 counties. Mm. It's a, a terrific read, it really is. I've got a feeling, actually, if you don't mind, a little plug here for BBC Radio London, Clive Beacon. I think it's on my interview with Clive, uh, with with Shield. I'd love to interview you, Clive. <laughs> but with Shield, is on the BBC Radio London Sports Show tonight. Excellent. Between Excellent. six and eight with Andy Rowley. So, uh, worth a listen to that, because Mr Berry makes an awful lot of sense as Laws comes in over the wicket to Mosley. Oh, that's a good shot. He's taking this off the stumps, but he's timed... That to perfection as Dan Mosley and clips it away through the leg side. That whistles over the boundary rope and that brings up the 50 for Warwickshire. 52 for four. And Mosley moves on to 16. Yes, that's been a pretty difficult first 50 for Warwickshire. Conditions. I think if Surrey had batted this morning, it would have been tough for them as well against the Warwickshire yeah. bowling attack. I think it's just those conditions. Got to be able to use them, of course, as Laws is into Mosley, and Mosley is pushing off the back foot. This time, Cameron Steele gets around to his left to do the fielding, and there's no run. So the first 50 is taken 154 balls. Obviously, four wickets falling in that time. Yes, indeed. Now they're getting a man out to deep <coughs> backward square. For Mosley, Jamie Smith is deposited into the wild blue yonder. He is miles away. Why will he be tempted to... Well, he's going to have to get a lot of it. Say, he'd be annoyed to be caught out in the deep there. He's going to have to get a lot of it if he does. As Laws is into him, goes full of length. And Mosley's letting this one go outside his off stump. It's very interesting that Tom Laws, early in his career, is already... And you, that people always make comparisons don't they already being compared to a gentleman who's on the other side Mr Chris Wokes for the way he goes about his cricket with both bat and ball Tom Laws it's not a bad bloke to be compared to mm -hmm. two for four he's going to come round the wicket now to Mosley so the four to go Yates, Rhodes, Davis and Hayne for Warwickshire in this first session this morning Laws, round the wicket he comes once more, and 
Mosley's forward, plays at that, up towards mid on it goes. Jordan Clark comes up to do the fielding. Terrific over that from Tom Laws. Yeah, the boundary from Mosley was a good shot. But that delivery to get rid of Sam Hayne was an absolute cracker. Hayne gone LBW for 10, Warwickshire 52 for 4. Yeah, you often talk about whether the batting side have got themselves out or not. But you look, certainly Rob Yates got a very good ball, didn't he? Sam Hayne now has done. Will Rhodes, arguably, as well. Maybe Alex Davis was a bit injudicious in the shot he played. So, Ed Barnard, who's only had one innings for Warwickshire, I forget if it's a point that Phil made, they've only had two innings in their two matches, Warwickshire. They've never got as far as the second innings. So, he made 19 at Taunton, and then he was uh, in a position where they were trying to score quickly to chase bonus points. What she could do with them building an innings here. Clark is coming over the wicket to him, and he's just pushed that out to the offside. But I was looking this streak. Ali Orr down at Sussex, I think I'm right in saying now, has been out three times this season backing up. Where <laughs> whoever's batting's hit it back down the pitch. <laughs> Bowler's got a finger to it, it's run him out. That's a bit unfortunate. What you, but everyone's saying, is it? Well, it and I had this, I, when I covered Yorkshire <laughs> for a couple of years, I got told off on that one. Um, as Clark comes in, and that's played the back of square leg. When I suggested the batter was unlucky, it was, uh, I think the argument was it's not unlucky because he's, he's out of his crease. I think you're right. I guess if it happens once, you can kick yourself so unlucky. A but there. It may be three times in the last two seasons or, or season. But, but it does become a bit Oscar three, Wilde, but, doesn't but it? It has. After I, I a think while. it was. Uh, somebody did say actually once is unlucky, twice is careless, three times is unforgivable. <laughs> and uh, poor lad keeps sort of backing up and then getting run out of the non strikers then. Clark. Round the wicket to Bolton Mosley, and that's left. I'm still going to suggest, while he needs to think about what he's doing, I'm still going to suggest he's a bit unlucky for it to happen three times. Because I'm sure there are other batters who are out of the crease plenty that it doesn't happen to. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. If, if someone kept hooking a ball three times straight down deep backwards square's throat, well, Andrew Hilditch did that, didn't he? Famously in that Ashes series. In comes Clark to uh, to bowl, and that's played to mid on. Well, there was a time when I'm I'm pretty sure Warwickshire were, I think Keith Barker at least, and one or two of the other bowlers were quite deliberately trying to deflect the ball onto the stumps. Every time it came near them, it was a genuine yeah, tactic I think to that's try and. That's the point that everybody's making. Sort of 20 years ago, bowlers would just put their hand out and they? stop if it, it yeah. in the finger, really went away. Well, who? But now these guys actually <laughs> actually try to deflect deflect it back onto the stump. Clark in Mosey takes a little shuffle down the pitch and is wrapped on the pads. Now it would have been a long way forward by the time it hits him. There is an impassioned appeal. He's through for a leg by, which I think may be the first leg by of the innings. And it's 54 for four after all that kerfuffle. Yeah, he was a long way down there. But, uh, he had to get his skates on with the single as well. Did young Mr. Mosley, because Ben Folks was going to, well, did have a shy at the bowler's end. So it's Ed Barnard on strike. Oh, and that's a great delivery, which has beaten the outside edge. And it's uh, flown to the wicketkeeper's left. It's nipped back after it's left the bat. It's well taken by Ben Folks. It's a lovely delivery. And uh, Ed Barnard's mighty relieved he missed it. 54 for four. Yeah, good luck with that one. That really did move, didn't it? Great take from Ben Folks. Can work out whether that beat the outside edge yeah. or the inside edge, really. But Barnard was ending up groping at thin air there. Terrific delivery, that. Can you hear some music somewhere, Clive? Is there a, a concert going on around the ground? Very nice. Not that I'm aware of. Soothing, soothing music <laughs> going round the ground. Well. Kevin Howes, when he came in this morning, saw a duck in the car park. Oh. As he said, it was not great. It's not an OB, was no, it? No, but, but, but there was a duck in the car park. Oh. As Mosley is on strike here to Tom Laws, as Laws is over the wicket to him, outside edge dropped by Ryan Patel. 
it's flown to him in there at third slip absolutely flew off the edge and Ryan Patel got both hands to it and down it goes so Mosley gets a life on 16 but that was a big edge and Patel will be disappointed but again I think it's that pace of Tom Laws and you're right with the previous one just looking at it again it did beat the inside edge yeah. of Ed Barnard that did actually fly at Ryan Patel Great length again from Laws. He's in here to Mosley, and Mosley is forcing off the back foot. Away through backward points. Good shot that. In complete control, Dan Mosley. Very well played by Dan Mosley. But dropped on 16, that'll be. Just writing that down. Yes, yeah, so I, I am as well. <laughs> I, I'll completely forget to mention it later, but I always feel, feel much better if I've written it down. But, uh, yes, dropped by Ryan Patel on... 60 off laws just rigging his hands a bit Ryan Patel it did fly at him it really did now he'll feel he should have caught it got mm. both hands to it but it was a sort of that awkward height absolutely flew off the edge laws is over the wicket once again to Mosley's letting this one go outside his off stump then folks have spent an awful lot of time diving around again behind the stumps this morning but it's that time of the year in these conditions where the keepers are Getting balls dipping at them late and swinging away from them. How many games will Surrey have, Ben, folks? Well, I, I think you'll get them till the end of May, won't you? Mm. And then the Ashes is June, is it? So they might miss the last game, I suppose, of the Championship. As in comes Laws again, and this one's left alone outside the off stump by Mosley. So, yeah, you'd think Pope and folks be in there I think uh, you know there's talk about Bairstow keeping and all that stuff but I think most people are in agreement that folks should be doing the job and he's shown already this season that he's in terrific form with the bat Laws over the wicket he comes again to Mosley short one oh Mosley's ducked straight into that I just have a, a bit of a break here for Dan Mosley. It's going to be leg buys, but he's basically headed that <laughs> down to long leg. So, yeah, he'll have to have a bit of concussion protocol. Yeah, that's the umpire the was from Laws there to him. Umpire raised his hand. That was presumably it. Just bring the uh, fizz on. So, 59 for four, Warwickshire. Rob Yates caught steel bowl, Roach, and four slip for a duck before there's a run on the board. Will Rhodes also edging to the slips to Wally Pope taking the catch of Dan Warren off for six. That was after a stand of 23 and seven overs, but then two balls later, Alex Davis missed time in a attempted pull shot. It was caught, you could call it caught behind. It wasn't that sort of catch. Ben Folks took the catch uh, off Roach for 17 and then Sam Hayne, LBW, deli brilliant delivery from Laws for 10. Dan Mosley's innings is uh, looking pretty good at the moment. 20, he's scored. So top scorer in the innings thus far. And he's faced 61 balls for that. Ed Barnard's on two. I just wondering if Ryan Patel's coming off here. Yeah, he's just signalling that it's obviously when that ball's hit him and he dropped that catch. Just, I, I think it's probably hit him on that. I don't know what you call it, Clive. That bit at the bottom of your thumb. That sort of big... Sort of what mine's not muscly, but there's that oh, big, I know what you mean, the yeah. palm, but it's not the palm. <laughs> it's that little bit of sort of the bottom of your thumb, and I think it's hit that. So it's probably a bit bruised. Here's Ryan Patel. Well, umpires are just talking to the physio. They have to make a a decision on whether there's any issue with Dan Mose. If there is any issue at all, then you would think he'd have to come off. I think he's okay, yeah. Uh, of course, he can be replaced if they decided he was going to come off long term, but he's going to stay out there. Probably ask him what's for lunch. Probably. Oh, so save me some. Yeah, he's probably putting his, his lunch order in. No, he's fine, but it, again, it was <coughs> just ducked into that one. Laws. Again, he's bowling quick here, Tom Laws. Such a whippy action that he has. So a lot of people have sort of made that comparison to Chris Wokes. 
Let me say, it's not a bad comparison. Oh, it has got some company. Yes, five, five, five slips. slips in place. Blimey. Just before lunch. Laws then with five slips. Comes in over the wicket to Barnard on two, and Barnard takes this <laughs> off the stumps and turns it away down to the fine leg boundary rope for four. Oohs and ahs. Will we get one more in before lunch? I think if sorry, dash round, we will. And Barnard moves on to six, and Warwickshire move on to 63 for four. Well, that's how to respond to five slips, find a gap somewhere to put the runs. Yes, indeed. Um, are we going to get you? Are going to get another over in? So we're doing yeah. an overtime here, because uh, so what is it? it's the 29th over of the uh, session. I think that, so it's not been the quickest in terms of the bowling, but uh, we have that brief interruption with Mosley. Needing the check, he's doing a bit of a uh, bit of gardening. It's just three slips for him. He was desperately wanting to. See off this over now and make sure he gets through to lunch, and then it would have been a good morning from him. And he ducks under a bouncer, <coughs> there's no rum. Yeah, and he just there, uh, Jordan Gluck just looks like he <coughs> lost his footing a touch when he bowled that. He almost looked like he was about to fall over. Yeah. One thing he doesn't want to do is give this away now. Yeah. If it was 63 for three, I'd probably feel reasonably. You'd say it was reasonably even, but that fourth wicket's made a huge difference. I think that's played to mid on. There's no rum. Yeah, I'm just, yeah, I'm just hearing. It's always getting it if they cut final mm. with two teams coming from Manchester. And uh, Engineering works and drains, right? <laughs> this uh, next one, round the wicket comes Clark. It's left by Mosley. There's no rum. I never realised that that's the first ever Manchester derby in the FA Cup. Yeah. I thought I would have thought there'd been a few of those. Manchester City by Barry one year. That's, uh, that's a really Manchester Manchester derby, fantastic. surely, isn't it? And that, that's the biggest win in an FA Cup final, I think. It was used to be the quiz question when I was growing up anyway. 63 for four here. Three more balls still to s bowl before lunch. If none of them take a wicket, that one's played into the backward point area by Mosley. Played it safely down on the ground, no rum. Yeah, next batter can start tucking it into their lunch because if a wicket falls now, we'd go straight in. Mr Burgess would be next, I suppose. Uh, yeah. Um, as he Clark round the wicket to bowl, and that's left. I argue there's a relative tail for Warwickshire now with uh, your hand will be Chris Rushworth, Hassan Ali, numbers 9, 10 and 11. None of them are hopeless with the bat, but not necessarily picked for their batting. I'll be doing an update in about 10 seconds time. It's unusual for play to be still going on during the one o'clock update. And this is Clive Eakin at Edgbaston where Warwickshire are close to the end of a difficult morning. They are just moving on now to 64 for fours. Dan Mosey takes a single to move on to 21. Uh, he's done pretty well as they come off uh, for lunch after 29 overs. But Warwickshire face a really strong opening attack of Kemar Roach and Joe Wa um, Dan Worrell. They lost Rob Yates for a duck, Will Rose for six, and Alex Davis for 17. Sam Hain was then uh, digging in and, and defending. Defending pretty well before he was the victim of a very good delivery from Tom Laws, which had him LBW for 10. That felt like a big blow for Warwickshire. Mosley, though, has batted pretty well. He's on 21. A tough morning for the Bears after being put in by Surrey. They're 64 for four at lunch. I cannot believe I called him Joe Warrell there. But anyway, <laughs> we will have more commentary, of course, after lunch. But for listeners on Radio 5 Sports Extra, I shall hand you now to Kevin Howes.
My name is Claire Hopkins. I'm Head of Reception and Security here at Edgebasson. I've been here for 26 years now, so 1997 I started. At Deaf College, needed a job. Wrote to a few places um, around the local area. I got a reply from the then head steward at Edgebaston, so I thought, yep, we'll go and do a few uh, few casual shifts there. Bit of cash, keep me going. It was, it was an interesting place to work back then. It was a very fun club to be around, yeah, very fun. I remember the first day I walked in there, I, I thought how small it was compared to when you look on the television. It's just, yeah, grown so much. 100% take pride in, in, in working here and, and being that face on, on the front reception and, and dealing with everybody as they come in, so you can't not take pride in, in where you work. You have to be that smiley, chirpy, welcoming person behind that desk. That is all part of the journey of, of people coming to Edgebaston. For, for me, working here, it's the on, only job I've ever done and I cannot see myself working anywhere else. Baston Stadium today. We have a partnership already with Warwick County Cricket Club and I thought it'd be a brilliant experience for the third year sports journalism students to, to come along to, a, to an actual match, um, to see the facilities, to meet and see some of the other journalists in action and the, the staff here have been brilliant. You know, they've allowed us to interview a player, um, we're going to be speaking to a, a coach later, so it's really just an opportunity to, to come here to see um, some cricket, um, to put our students, our, our sports journalists, in the environment which we hope that one day they'll be serving in and working in. And it's a bit of a taster, really, just to give them uh, uh, an insight into how a sports journalist behaves during the day, what they do, the kind of work they have to produce, and, the, and really a day in the life of a, of a cricket correspondent. Right now we're in the press room at Edgebaston, an absolutely fantastic facility. Uh, I'm here as an experience with with the uni, uh, with the course. Interviewing the player was a great experience because it meant I got to understand how it works and how how you sort of how to speak to a player um, one to one because you kind of get a bit starstruck when you're talking to people for the first sort of time. I did a micro placement at Edgebaston during the summer. Um, it was during the T20 blast, um, so we came to games and took a few photos for the social media and took a few videos. Um, for Instagram, a few of them went out on the stories and all that sort of stuff. When we went and met in the BBC uh, radio studio, uh, so it's good to sort of meet the journalists that were in there and how they how they work and sort of their practices. Um, so, so that could, I would could use that in the future if, if this is where if this is sort of the route I take. It's really good that BBC allows me to gain practical experience while I study. Just an insight into what goes on and, and this is so important to our course because we not only want to skill the sports journalists of tomorrow but we want to bring them to the actual places where hopefully one day some of them will be working. So this is our junior training session uh, for ages under nines up to under 14s. Uh, it's really just to keep participation going with cricket during the winter. So it's just keeping them involved in cricket, uh, thinking about cricket and, and as I say, getting ready for the season to start in, in April. And we have got uh, young young lads here who want to go on and, and play county cricket, hopefully, and, and, and progress into that, that pathway. So to see somebody from the local area who has made that uh, step up into uh, professional cricket, especially a lad like Rob, is, is a great inspiration for them. Obviously, with the scheme that, that, that that's helped, we're going to uh, put the money towards a, having a, an artificial surface, which will only then increase participation, not only for the club uh, in games and training, but also in the local community, meaning we can hire, hire the 
the venue out and, and allow access to hopefully schools and, and other teams in the community as well. Vitality Blast Cricket is back. Just make sure you're ready for blast off. Hassan, welcome to Edge Baston. Just explain to us how proud and how delighted you are to be here. Uh, well, thank you so much to uh, welcoming. Uh, and, uh, you know, firstly, I would uh, like to say thanks to the management of Warwickshire uh, Cricket Club. They gave me an opportunity to be here and playing for them. You know, it was always a pleasure to be here. And uh, I think it's been seven years I'm coming again and again. Uh, with na uh, national team, with A team and uh, with franchise team. I had a good experience last year. I was playing for the Lancashire. Uh, I enjoyed my time there. Uh, you know, so I want to play uh, county cricket. As I said earlier and even the last year, when I was growing up, uh, so, uh, you know, the legends like Vasim Akram, Vakai Yunus, Sukhan Mushtaq, and uh, uh, yeah, there's a couple of guys who always, you know, the uh, you know, talking about the county cricket. So they always uh, said that if you're gonna get chance to play county cricket, you should go there. So, so we always asked why. So they said that you're gonna learn lots of things, and uh, obviously it's a different country, and uh, you're also gonna learn the, about their own culture. So I think it, it's it always uh, you know the I feel lucky I, I'm being here, and um, you know traveling globally and uh, learn from the different places, learn from the different cultures. And obviously, uh, just because of cricket, we are traveling. So I, I feel pleasure and uh, I'm looking forward some excited cricket and uh, you know some good performances. You said you played for Lancashire last season. Do you feel that you're better from that experience? Yeah, it, you know, the, it, it, it will always, uh, you know, the help if you, uh, you know, the travel globally and playing for different leagues, so it, it always help you in the career and uh, it give you, you know, lots of confidence, uh, uh, sharing the different dressing room, uh, talking with the different players, seniors players. Uh, like, I, I, as I said, I'm lucky to play with uh, Jimmy Anderson, sharing the, you know, the ends, he's bowling from the different ends, I'm bowling for the different end, and sitting, sitting together in the one dressing room. So I got a chance to speak with him. So he, he's very kind with me and uh, he's sharing, you know, the lots of good things who, you know, who helped me in my career and helped me in my bowling, how become a better bowler and how become, a, you know, the better cricketer. And uh, on, on a side as how become a, you know, the good person. So, it, you know, it, it, it's helped me in your career if you're playing, you know, the, the county championship, and whatever the franchise cricket. It's clearly helping you to become a better cricketer, but you want to make us a better team, don't you? You want to help us win trophies and win games. What will you bring to Warwickshire? Oh well, obviously I'm here to you know the perform for for my uh, team Warwickshire, and uh, it will be in the great. I'm gonna uh, lift the trophy for for my club, and uh, I think uh, if I, uh, I, I play on my potential, if I'm giving my hundred and ten percent uh, every day, every you know the every uh, every game. Uh, so I think, and that I think that that will be uh, the better for the for the team and uh, obviously for for me. So it's it always you know the bit difficult to go you know that on a different country and a different culture and perform there. So but when you perform, so you feel yes, you you are on the on the right track, you are on the right place. You've trained with the team today. You trained with them yesterday. Obviously some familiar faces. Alex Davies at Lang. 
Wokes, Chris Wokes from the international scene. What have you made of the group? Oh well, uh, when I arrived, uh, uh, you know, the, uh, when I arrived, I, I came uh, on the first day on the dressing room, and the boys came to me and uh, you know, they shake hand me, hug me. So I, I feel really, you know, the welcoming, and uh, uh, they know me very well. I, I, yeah, I know a couple of faces like Chris Wokes. Uh, and uh, we played to each other, and we 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 have a you know the uh, little relationship. So it always uh, you know the pleasure, and the boys are you know the hanging around, and boys are you know the, uh, you know well gelling. And uh, I don't uh, honestly I don't feel I'm on a different place. They make me more comfortable, and they they make me feel like a home. So I said uh, I thought it's gonna be uh, you know the well. So. Yeah, it's 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 nice to be here. It's it's lovely, uh, lovely to be here. And talk to me about Edge Buston. We've got a big reputation in cricket. What do you make of this place? You know, it's it's a lucky place for me. Uh, if uh, if we talk about back uh, in 2017, we we start our journey from here, Champion Trophy. Yeah, unfortunately we lost the first game against India, but we won uh, second game against South Africa. South Africa was the number one team at that time, and. Uh, I was the man of the match, and that was my first man of the match in ODI. So that's lucky ground for me, and uh, that best is lucky for me. And uh, we, uh, you know, the for me is a couple of memories here. So it always, uh, you know, as I said, always uh, to be here in England and playing in a different grounds. But as I said, it's lucky for me to get first man of the match in ODI, and that was a champion trophy. So Birmingham Unicorns we set up about two years ago. Um, we're the second only fully inclusive LGBTQ club in the country. We kind of set up because it felt like there was a need uh, to you know, engage the community in this fantastic game of cricket. So Warwickshire and Warwickshire Cricket Board have been instrumental in, in helping to pull that together. Some of the stuff that we've been able to achieve, we've only been able to do with their support. Um, we've had two sessions now here at Edgebaston over the last two years, which has just been amazing because they're obviously very high profile. You know, they're a big, well-known club here in England. And that helps with visibility. And, and if a club like Warwickshire gets involved, it just helps with the whole inclusion message and making sure people do feel comfortable and able to come along and watch, play cricket, get involved somehow. It's the obvious, isn't it? Cricket's a great game. Um, brings people together. It has so many benefits from health, but for, for fun, for inclusion, to allow people to feel safe. And I mean, that's what this club's about, but that's what cricket's about as well. So if we can support it in a day like this, and in any way we can, we will. It brings you right back to why you play the game, which is to, to have a laugh and have fun with people that you enjoy being around with. So we've done a little bit of bowling today. I only started playing last year, so for me, I was opening the bowling. There was a lot of pressure on that. So we're just talking about the mental side of, of that been kind of a, a team sport but in an individual in a sense it's been really good actually really good really enjoyed it oh so i've been with the unicorns about a year now and um, before that i was uh, out of the game for about 15 years played, played a lot of school and um, i think that's one of the great things about unicorns is that we're a club where the majority of members either as adults haven't played much or at all actually and come in yet they come in everyone gets equal opportunity and everyone gets to have an equal chance to have a real good time so The bowlers were immense, smashed their areas, made, made it look really hard for their batters. Um, so let's back it up again. Session two and first class intensity. Come on. Cheers. Yes, so we get that. Lovely, guys. Uh, <laughs> Cheers, guys. Can you just alternate? There's a sick one in Joburg as well. <laughs> Shut up. Starts. Yes, Betsy. Lovely JB. Milo. Ooh. You know Arundel? Yeah. A little bit like that. Milo, I need to come into cover, please. Gaz. He was under the tree.
Old Rashi, nice Betsy. Oh, nothing, Rashi. Very good, Chris. Oh, nothing, Rashi. Very good, Chris. John Middle and off. Yeah. Middle and off. Middle and off, please. Just slide it towards you from middle and off. You go catch him off. Just turn there, you need to see him there. That's it, you're there. Oh, no. Very good, Sosters. Very good, all. Nice hole. Yeah, Soft draw, Diz. Oh, yes, Diz. Nothing does that. Come on, Diz. Chip to Gaza, yeah. <laughs> that is skillful. That's a little glance. That, that is so skillful. It's not, you've not swung one in like three sets and then you just went on and bowled a big out swinger. That's quite a big out swinger. Nice catch, Jesse. Thanks. Very good. <laughs> that is skillful. That's a little glance. That that is so skillful. It's not you've not swung one in like three sets and then you just went on and bowled a big out swinger. That's quite a big out swinger. <laughs> nice catch, Jesse. Thanks. Very good. Cash! Little boy! boy! Yeah, boy! Excellent, Diz. Oh. Skills that Diz. Ball Diz. So what you did there? So <laughs> what you did? You do that well, Diz. You do that well. <laughs> Go all. Ball. Did he hit that? Yeah. Did he hit that? Milo, no way. Both pads. Milo, hold on, boy. Prefer you in a cat ball, boy. Great bowling. Oh, Miller. That was lovely to watch. Thanks, man. Very nice. What up, boys? What up, guys? Best good job. Nice pass. Pass, Dean. Well done, Diz. Well done, mate. Very good. I don't know. We've got about 23.
Welcome back to Edgbaston. Well, I heard the sound of spikes. I'm expecting some umpires and players to appear in, in a moment for the afternoon session. I'm Clive Eakin. Chloe Brewer is with us, um, and Mark Church will replace me just after two. Warwickshire will resume on 64 for four, having lost. Rob Yates for naught to Kemar Roach, Will Rhodes to Dan Worrell for six, Alex Davis to Kemar Roach for 17, and Sam Hayne Greatwell from Tom Laws for 10. Thoughts on that morning, Chloe? Well, Surrey bowlers were definitely on top for sure. Work should, oh, well, just to sit in really. They lost a couple wickets, a couple more than they'd like. Um, yeah, it's been a good battle between bat and ball for sure. Brief chat with coach Mark Robinson during lunch, uh, where he commented on the fact that I had a pudding, which I, uh, he says, we don't get those. I said, well, I'm, I'm not sure I'm supposed to really, but when it's apple crumble and, crumble and custard, you just, you know, you have to have that. <laughs> um, and he was just saying he really hopes and conditions stay as there. I doesn't want to rock up tomorrow and find this sunshine when Surrey yeah. are batting. <clears throat> However, Surrey players are just uh, down below us. And they're waiting for the umpires to come out. They're just beyond the boundary rope at the moment. <clears throat> Gareth Batty there just uh, laughing and joking with some of the players. Yeah, I should imagine Warwickshire want the weather to not change too much so that they can have a go at Surrey top order. Absolutely, yeah. Um, Dan Mersey's batted pretty well. He's on 21. Ed Barr's on 6. I suppose a slight delay after lunch is the fact that we came in for lunch quite late. And, mm. uh, they want their full 40 minutes to enjoy their repast because uh, the last over started about a minute to one so we didn't come in till about i think it was during my uh, bulletin piece at three minutes past one so that's why we seem to have a slight delay the umpires want to make sure that perhaps they're having a pudding perhaps they <laughs> can't resist the apple grumble and custard either yeah so the players have to avoid that for the umpires and no reason why they can't tuck in yeah. hard to resist and here they come. Um, followed by the Surrey players. The umpires, Nigel Long and Peter Hartley. Match referee today is James Whittaker. Not the hardest job in the world, is it, being a match referee in the county? four-day county cricket match <laughs> I shouldn't have thought as long as nothing much happens <laughs> yeah then one day you'll have a very busy day in the office yeah. <laughs> so Tom Laws was bowling from this pavilion end before lunch Let's see what happens after Dan Mosley will be on strike. It looks like, uh, well, Dan Warrell certainly doing a run up. Whether that means he's coming straight in, or he's just pressing that for later, we shall see. And here comes Dan Mosley now. Dan Mosley and uh, Ed Barnard. Numbers 80 and 30. Yeah, Mosley's coming with a little bit of a run, a little bit of a jog, jog off for lunch. <laughs> Not sure why he is number 80, Dan Mosley. There's probably a reason. Might be often it's just because he wanted to be number 8, but someone else got that before him. <laughs> I don't know. But, uh, so he'll be on a strike. It's still overcast. Conditions haven't changed so far. Floodlights still on. Pretty dull. Would be potentially an issue if we didn't have floodlights. Yeah, it's just one of those grey days, isn't it? The sun's, you can tell the sun's just behind the cloud because it's some bright cloud, but it's still just a bit gloomy. So three slips in place. And Laws 
Uh, Warrell is rather, he's starting from this pavilion end and that's pushed to mid off, there's no run. So one for 13 in his opening seven over spell. He and Kemar Roach bowled very well first thing this morning. Was a real test for the Warwickshire batters. Roach two for 12 in his seven. The other wicket taker is Laws, Tom Laws one for 22 in seven. Yeah, he had the batters this morning in all sorts of trouble, didn't he? It's it's just nipping off the surface, swinging around. Worrell in. Bowls, that's driven to mid off. There's no rum. Three one day internationals in his international career. Down Worrell. Australian, but now playing under a British passport. There's a few hands in pockets and slip Gordon. <laughs> well, I know how the hand warmers are. Uh. <laughs> they had a few weeks ago, I think it was the Kent players who had like a little pocket, but um, I think the American footballers were well, just to stick their hands oh, okay. in. All right, little pouch. Yeah. Warrell round the wicket to Mosley, who just turns that. Manages to find a gap just wide of uh, mid wicket, so he's able to scamper through for his 22nd run. 65 for four. Mosley did survive a life, a sharp chance. Yeah, he was dropped on 16, I That's believe. right, yeah. So, that's always a way when you have. A life, and you dropped. It's touch wood. You, you kick, want, kick yeah, you want to take full advantage of it. Mm, absolutely. So, Barnard now on strike. Four slips for him. He had five briefly before lunch. This is wide that time from Worrell. Rare loose delivery from him, and Barnard stretches for it and plays it. Just short of the uh, boundary, he's going to get three runs for it. 68 for four. Barnard on to nine. And as it mentioned, this morning in commentary, there's not too many people sitting outside. I guess there might be a few people inside, and that was borne out by the. Uh, Tom Dollery suite where they serve lunch. That was uh, packed and people mm. watching the cricket from warmer <laughs> places indoors. Uh, he comes down the pitch, hits that in the air, didn't get hold of that, Mosey. He's going to get four runs for it. But uh, I'm sure he timed that perfectly as he danced down the pitch, lobbed it over the head of the bowler. From a straight four, he's on to 26. Yeah, that was a proper attacking shot, that wasn't it? it was a don't bowl there kind of statement. Yeah, he's come down the pitch a few times, Mosley. He's now having a he's field who was at mid wicket go down to the mid wicket boundary. Mid off and mid on though are staying up. Should he try that over the top shot again? Round the wicket comes Worrell. This time he defends that. Back down the pitch for no run. First over after lunch. Fairly productive one for Warwickshire. They added eight runs. They are 72 for four with Barnard on nine and Mosley on 26. Yeah, I think Roach is going to return from the city end. So we've got our opening bowlers back on. So we've, we were bowling really good areas this morning. They've continued that, but I feel like the batters have a little bit more intent now. They can take a little bit more to the bowlers because it isn't doing as much off the surface or with the new ball. So it's 30 years old, so it won't be doing that much now. It does tend to be the case, Edgerton. It gets easier as the day goes on for the batters. Yeah, Roach approaching from a city end, just creeping down leg. That was on a good length, though. It's Diving take from Ben Fox with the gloves. Yeah, it definitely seems like it's getting easier as it goes on. Had batters this morning in all sorts of trouble, did the Surrey bowlers. 
had we have we had two catches and slip a top edge and an lbw i think yeah, yeah. Roach, full of length, driven, found a man at point there. That's a good stop, top ball. Shot for none, I'm sad to say. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that must be the most frustrating thing as a batter when you hit, oh, that's a good shot, and then it, <laughs> somebody has the audacity to stop it and you get nothing for it. Tell me about it. It's <laughs> the, the most annoying thing. I hit a shot straight out the middle of a bat and it's been stopped. <laughs> Roach, at the top of his mark. Running in from the city end, and that's just on a length defended by Barnard there. Another top ball. I'll tell you what, I feel like cricket spectators are the most hardcore spectators. They're out, rain or shine, coats, bubble hats on today, cups of tea around the ground. We've got we've got some Surrey flags over there. Oh yes. Nice. Look, can't read it from here. Yeah, have a little look. Oh, yeah, get your binoculars out. There we go. Roach from the city end. And there's Gabba on a length driven there. They've taken a cheeky single. And a safe run. Can you see what it says? I'm trying to. These are not the best binoculars in the world. <laughs> oh, they're boasting. Are they? County oh. Champions 2022, <laughs> says one of them. <laughs> the other one says... Peter May Boys. Oh, Peter May Boys. Peter yes, May I see. Boys. Yes, yes, yes. You know those people down there? Yeah. Very, Very good they? group, according to Mark. Fair enough. Well, they got themselves perched in a nice position there, in front of the stand. Roach coming right arm round for this delivery to the left hander, and that's just outside off. A little bit of a way swing there. So I think he's just taking it to his left. I mean, there is plenty of room on the ground. Yeah, you can, you can pick where you want to sit today, can't you? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you always find you always get your particular favourite spot on the ground. Do you have a particular favourite in this ground? I don't really, but we notice that there are one or two spectators who will always sit in the same seats really? wherever the play is. <laughs> Good luck to them, I say. Roach again, just a short of length defended back foot and that brings the end of the second over after lunch Warwickshire century free for four Barnes is on 10 and Mosley's on 26 steady enough start for Warwickshire after lunch need to build a partnership yeah absolutely just, I've done well to kind of settle the fall of wickets this morning Yeah. Just do it well to just tick over. Moral it is to come into bowl to Barnard. Oh, well, that's not edge. Goodness, that uh, just misses the outside edge as he plays a defensive shot of that Barnard. Good delivery from Worrell. So much could do with a century partnership. They have managed three so far this season in just two innings. They only managed. 13 in the whole of last season. They need a big partnership here. So mm. A little way to go. 26 added so far for the fifth wicket. Worrell bowls and floats that one up a little bit and it's pushed out to uh, mid on for no run. Yeah, I was just doing that. A little bit of gardening work. He's well, was done well to he's swinging it still quite a bit, I'd say. So you can see the movement of a ball as it's going mm. through. A little bit of a breeze on the ground as well, and watch your flag blowing a bit. No, no, sorry, I always thought they'd put the championship pen in with them. <laughs> Waving away. In comes Worrell. Oh, that wraps on the pads. There's no real appeal, just a strangled shout. I think that's angling down the leg side. Remain 73 for four. That's Worrell has Barnard looking a little uncomfortable this over thus far. Mm. Yeah, he's Worrell's managed to just put a ball in some really good areas. 
tune his spells. Still got the four slips, Barnard. And he leaves that one as it angles away outside off stump. Another good take from Ben Fox. There's anything past her at all. This is a sorry, an England wicket keeper. Yeah, he's very, very, very good with the keeping. I haven't quite a few years seen him let much go. No. <laughs> Scored big runs in this fixture last season, right at the start of last season. And Barnard just pushes that one out to the offside. There's no run. Just leaning forward into that one. Just looking to build some sort of total. Their third match of the season. Both these teams have played two games in the first three rounds of fixtures and both have got a win and a draw. Only three points between them at the table with Warwickshire slightly ahead. That's left by Barnard outside off stump. Maiden over from Worrell. Last delivery wasn't his best, but a couple of deliveries tested Ed Barnard in that over and Warwickshire 73 for four. Yeah, so we have done very well here to Keeper runs down quite a lot and to take four wickets in the first session of day. We've done we've bowled really well. Roach for his second over after lunch. He's coming in from the city and three slips in play for the left hander here. So he's coming right on round outside. It's diving stop by cover. Let's hit that one hard. Yeah, another one. <laughs> doesn't beat the field. The field is being good. Yeah. Yeah, the field has been pretty good. We haven't. There's only that one drop of Mosley for 16. It's only been a real misfield. Well, I'd say today. It's Patel who's guilty of that uh, mm. drop, but it's also Patel who's just made a very good stop. Yeah. And again, shuffled down, and that's played into the legs side. And they've has found the boundary through mid wicket, and that's four runs added to the total. It's, it's good to see that, uh, especially Mosey here, he's just using his feet to not allow the bowlers to set, settle into their rhythm. Um, He's been very impressive so far, hasn't he? I mean, yes, he did get that bit of luck, and it should be said, it wasn't an easy chance. He hit the ball hard, very hard, and uh, mm -hmm. but uh, he, he got away with that one. But it's been a pretty impressive effort from him so far. Absolutely. Roach again, just, just creeping down leg there. It was just on a length. It's stopped by Ben Folks there. As I said at the outset, it's only his 10th first-class match. Wow. Um, he's playing six this day and 16 of the shorter format. Mm -hmm. He's involved with Birmingham Phoenix in the uh, 100. Local lad. Roach running in, right arm round again. Full of length outside, off that's left alone by Mosley there. Apparently, according to what I'm reading here, he's an Aston Villa fan. Okay. Which, given that he's, you know, he's local, and that's okay. I can never quite understand how Coventry's Ian Bell supported Aston Villa, but you know. <laughs> what football team do you support? Well, professionally, Coventry City. <laughs> uh, uh, growing up, it was uh, Tramway Rovers, alas. Roach running in again, full of length outside off, left alone. It's a good leave. He's really. What's good to see is he's committing to whatever shot he's playing, so he's not getting stuck being half-hearted at a shot. So come on then, who's your team then? I don't yeah, really follow yeah, football, yeah, to be honest. Okay. My family's... It's quite sensible. Family's always been Chelsea, so... <laughs> I tend not to follow it. Whenever I saw see very young fans... Mm. Rich. Running in short of left, he's attempted to pull that. He's just missed it. He's got to stop it from rolling back onto his stumps. He's 
I don't want to be dismissed right away about bring the end of the over 77 for four. See the end of the 33rd over. Lately, I've seen pictures of very young Brentford fans celebrating, and one well, of a very young Burnley fan who was celebrating with great passion. And I thought to myself, have you any idea what you're letting yourself in for? Because <laughs> you're enjoying it now, but I promise you, a lifetime of supporting a football team, it ain't going to be like that very much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it definitely won't be for sure. Warrell into bowl to Barnard, who's on 10. And Ooh. that's left by Barnard. Good shape about that delivery again from Warrell. He certainly made Barnard look uncomfortable. Mosley, dare I said, I know he'll be out next ball now, but <laughs> has begun to look reasonably comfortable. I'm not sure you can say the same for Ed Barnard. He's finding it quite difficult out there, but he's still there. Yeah. Sign from Worcestershire. Got a high profile signing that for Warwickshire. So that puts a little bit of pressure on you. you got a high profile signing as Warrell comes into bowl and he pushes out to the offside. There's no run. Yeah, I feel like it's one of those pitches where you need a lot of time to get in properly. He's only faced 18 deliveries, whereas he's actually faced 81. So it'd just be a matter of time getting yourself in. Yeah. <clears throat> Moral will have another go. He has managed to get rid of one of the slips now, Barnard. There's only uh, three slips in place. That one is a little up, it's actually past the fourth slip area, though it was certainly uh, on the ground by the time it reached there, and it's rolled down to third for four. So that will make him feel better. He's on to 14, 81 for four. Dare I say it, the beginnings of a partnership here between these two. They've added 34 now in eight overs. for what she put in this morning. None for one, 23 for three. I suppose there's a little bit of a recovery there. And more old balls, and that's pushed down into uh, third slip by Barnard for no rum. have stayed consistent out there, though I noticed a couple of ground staff by the mm. hover cover, which does suggest they might have checked their radars, the sort of things that people look at these days. I think it was running in Worcester, potentially. I got a message from our skipper. And that's a bounce. Oh dear, that's Ooh. a wild one. And <laughs> what we talked about, Ben, folks, that was a ridiculous save from yeah. folks. Tell you what, Ben Wilson's <laughs> having a good season, but I'm focusing goal for Coventry City <laughs> this weekend on the basis of that. Dive to his left, full stretch. And that looked like it was going to be four buys all the way. <laughs> and he made the stop. He's done well, though. That's properly top bin, so he's done well. Mind you, he probably couldn't score a goal like Ben Wilson can, so. <laughs> Moral in again. That one again is a leg side ish and uh, it's hit down to long leg. And Barnard's body language is just he feels he missed out there a little bit. He got one for it. Uh, he's just practicing the shot he wished he played now. Might have got him four. 82 for four. I'm going to do an update in a moment <laughs> and then it'll be uh, Mark Church joining Chloe. Um, so I'll just take the first ball of this over because my report is 22 <laughs> seconds away the great yeah. thing the way we do it is I know exactly when the report is <laughs> I mean whether they introduce me at that time or not doesn't make any difference I start at three minutes past exactly Roach into Barnard who plays that to mid on and there's no rum and here we go 
And this is Clive Eakin at Edgbaston, where Warwickshire are trying to build after a difficult morning against a strong Surrey attack. They went in at lunch on 64 for four, having been 47 for four at one stage. They've now got to 82 for four, with Dan Mosley in particular batting well. He has had a life dropped off a sharp slip chance on 16, but he's combined attack with defence pretty impressively, and he's just scoring another single there to move on to 31. Ed Barnard is with him on uh, 16, and Warwickshire trying to recover. Uh, they are 83 for four in the 35th over. And of course, as the more observant of you will notice, it was Ed Barnard who got that single, not down Mosley. Apologies, but uh, <laughs> Chloe will take over, and uh, Mark Church will uh, join her. Perfect. Yep. Roaches to continue from the city end. Set the top of his mark. He's got a free slips and pay, and he's running in full of length, and it's defended back to mid off there. Who Skipper of Rory Burns giving us a little bit of a shine, and I've been rejoined. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, yeah. everybody. Uh, interesting this from Dan Mosley. He's come out after lunch and looked to be very positive. Yeah. And I think that's the way to go this afternoon because ball's a bit older now, and, and he's played a couple of very good shots since lunch where he's used his feet and, and either worked the ball through the leg side or crashed it through the offside. Won't shuffle down, it's just left that alone. <laughs> But yeah, he has done really well to just almost transfer the pressure slightly yeah. back onto the Surrey bowlers here because nothing worse is for a bowler than the batter just keep on moving around. Well, the, the, the interesting thing is that, you know, Michael Burgess is positive by nature. Chris Wokes is a very good batter, obviously. Hassan mm. Ali, Chris Rushworth and Oli Hannon Dorby. You know, Hassan Ali and Chris Rushworth, more Hassan Ali will be positive. Roach again, full of lamp, worked into the leg side, found a man at mid-wicket who chucks it back to folks with the gloves, and that's chucked back around. I think it's the way to go now after lunch. I, I, mm. I think, actually, Warwickshire at lunch, 64 for four doesn't look great, but they could have been seven down at lunchtime. Yeah, could have been seven absolutely. down, absolutely. It, could, it, it wouldn't have been beyond the rounds of possibility. They could have been all out yeah. by lunch. So they, they, they've now just got to just be positive this afternoon. If they're all out for 200, that won't be a bad score on this, I don't think. No, Roach again, full of that. That was a glorious shot. He's gone over the ring there, and it's just plonked in the outfield, and they've taken two from it. He's, as we were just saying, he's <laughs> really attacking the bowlers here. Well, you know, there's nothing wrong with this from Dan Mosley. He didn't really get hold of that. But, but there's no one down there at long off at no. this stage. So as long as he gets enough on it, he'll pick up a couple of runs. So they've obviously had a chat about this at lunchtime. Yeah. And, and it was immediate from from Mosley and Barnard in his own way, just looking to be a bit more positive. Mosley's using his feet, coming down the pitch at both Worrell and, and Roach, and just knocking them off that length, not just letting them bowl that length they want to bowl. So it's, it's good stuff, this, from, from Mosley. Barna keeping him company at the moment. 16 off 24, which isn't bad going with what we've seen today. It's Worrell down below us coming in over the wicket to the right-handed Barnard and that hits the thigh guard. You see Worrell's a little frustrated here. Yeah. Oh, He's a bit of bat in that, so that's a single for Barnard. He moves on to 17, 86 for four. I think the batters have done well. They've scored a lot just playing with soft hands, actually, just guiding it, but pretty through between the slip cord and then point of just guided it past which I guess is nothing more frustrating than having your pace used against you. Absolutely. And, and again it'll be interesting to see how Mosley goes against Worrell here. Mm. Going down the pitch, put him straight back over his head about ten minutes ago as Worrell's into him. Short ball is up on his toes, turning this one into the leg side. Ryan Patel in there at mid wicket. He'll want to see the back of Mosley because he dropped him on 16. <laughs> Yep. Sharp chance off Tom Laws. Those four to go this morning, just a reminder. Rob Yates caught by Steered off Roach without scoring. Will Rhodes caught by Pope off Worrell for six. Davis caught off the top edge off Roach by Folks for 17. And then Sam Hain got a great delivery. Yeah. Trapped in front LBW by Tom Laws for 10. That was 47 for four. Now move the score on to 86 for four as 
the left-handed Mosley. And here he's back tapping on the ground there as Worrell's into him. That short punch by Mosley away through the covers. Off goes Rory Burns in hot pursuit. Slides. Doesn't really time it, Mosley. But again, it was a little short from Dan Worrell. And again, he's scuffing up that front foot hold area. And he's going to get some sawdust. Jordan Clark is... Like he's at the beach here, Jordan Clark, <laughs> building a sandcastle. Yeah. Just picked up a whole couple of handfuls of sawdust <laughs> and Ryan Patel as well. <laughs> Lot came out of Ryan Patel's hands, huh? uh, Well, I think actually more probably came out of Jordan Clark's. I think he's <laughs> probably got bigger hands <laughs> yeah. than Ryan Patel. Now Dan Warrell will scuffle that into the crease. So crease already looking a bit of a mess out there. <laughs> but yeah, Dan Warrell's not happy with that front foot. When it's landing, it may just be slipping a touch on him. Mm. So a bit of sawdust in there helps to dry that all out. It's a bit like when you do a bit of DIY and there's a sort of a, a patch that you need to, to cover up. And you get some <laughs> white paint and go over yeah. the top of it just to fill a hole as much <laughs> as anything. A bit like dentistry, I would have thought as well, if you, you're having a filling <laughs> put in. Yeah, Kevin Howes walks in as over the wicket once again comes Worrell that's down the leg side looking to flick it away here's the left handed Mosley gets nothing on it it's taken by a tumbling Ben Folks away to his right hand side but yes a little like a dentist there when you've got a little bit of a gap in your tooth or like me you need a filling <laughs> as marching back towards us is Dan Worrell Mosley in a short sleeve sweater he's got an arm guard on as well settles himself down over his back once more as Worrell's in oh and Mosley's gone for the big booming off drive thick inside edge had no clue where that was going <laughs> Dan Mosley he will get a single into the leg side elsewhere just to let you know in division one of the LB County <laughs> Championship day one of this one there's only two games in division one only two games in Division 1. Kevin Howes has asked me a really pertinent question. Chloe will probably be able to give you an answer to that. Uh, it's about strike rates and the number of maiden overs that have been bowled this morning from Kevin Howes. And in over the wicket comes Dow Worrell to Barnard. And Barnard's letting this one go outside his Austin. And Kent to 70 for 5 oh. against Middlesex at the end of the over from Dan Worrell. So Kent in a bit of bother. Uh, in Division 2, Durham, 122 for 3 against Derbyshire. Durham, interestingly, have taken Matt Parkinson on loan for a couple of games. Um, the Lancashire leg spinner. Uh, Sussex, 47 for 1 against Gloucestershire, but rain at Bristol, unfortunately, at the old M4. And Leicestershire and Glamorgan, Leicestershire, 145 for 2. So there's all your other scores from around the country. The LV County Championship. Roach to continue from the city and just at the top is Marcus bottom right arm over to the left hand and now just pushing the ball across him. And that's quite why that's a very good diving stop by Ben Folks. Saved first slip there for sure from a, a quite a lot of pain, I should imagine, at the ankles. Sam Billings has just gone LBW to Tim Murta okay. uh, Lord. So Billings mm. has gone, I think, for 14 there. Wow. So that was the last wicket to, to fall. But, um, yeah, tough down at Lords with those conditions as well, I would have thought. Mm, Roach steaming in again on the lap, defended by... Mosey there, he comes to pick it up, he chucks it back, gives it a little bit of shine. Yeah, Jordan Clark up there at mid on, just having a bit of a stretch. But Mosley is playing a nice hand, 35 mm. from 90 deliveries. He, he's just very attractive to watch as well, isn't he? Neat and tidy, punchy, typical left-hander really. <laughs> I'd love to be left-handed, it would be great, it just looks so much nicer. Roach again on the length. They've snuck a cheeky single in there. He's just tried to flick it off his pads, but it 
Hasn't quite got hold of him. It's just dropped next to him. Yeah, you think of the likes of Gower and Lara. Mm. Those, those elegant left-handers. Yeah, there's something about being left-handed. I think, I, I think, you know, you read in books and, you know, you, you know all about your, your, your PE and all that good stuff. But I think you're meant to be left-handed, really. I think mm. you, when you're born, it's breaks more so to pick things up left-handed. Yeah. Roach again on the lamp. Big shout from the slips there and keep up up. Umpires <laughs> very uninterested. Well, I think if Kemar <laughs> Roach there had been DRS, he would have been insisting, let's go upstairs. Yeah. Because Barnard, that's hurt him as well. <laughs> Whip him around that front pad, and that sort of hit him on the inside of the knee roll. So that's that's really hurt yeah, Barnard. He's, he's hobbling away at the moment. <laughs> and he's yeah, he looks like he's got blisters in his in his boots at the minute. He really is hobbling. <laughs> Mosley and Smith yeah. are having a chat about all of that. <laughs> Roach running in again, and that's just just gone down the leg side. He's tried to play that, but it's just gone through to Ben folks where. Yeah, and he's, again, Roach will be a bit annoyed with that, mm. as will Barnard. He's, he's missed out there. Yeah, it's definitely, a, especially after that delivery, before you want to follow up with a, a good delivery. Just yeah, exactly. maintain he, he, he was convinced, game on Roach, <laughs> wasn't he, that that was out. He's sort of down on his haunches, pleading back at Nigel Long. Yeah, he's running in from the city end. Just short of left worked. Into the leg side, we've taken a single from it. I've got to say, batting does look easier after lunch. Mm, absolutely. It really does. It's still not straightforward, but it does look easier before lunch. God, dear. <laughs> did yeah. look hard work. There were a couple of deliveries in there that were ridiculous. Yeah. One I remember to Sam Hay from yeah. Worrell, was it? And it absolutely, it was a beautiful bit of bowling. It really was. And Sam Hay. As we said at the time, must be in good form not to get anywhere near it. Yeah, absolutely. In Pratch comes again, just short of a lap and push two point there. And that brings the end of the over. So Warwickshire in 92 for four. Good rebuild here after they were 64 for four at lunch. After losing four wickets in the morning session. Yeah, and that score was just beginning to move a touch now for Warwickshire. Still a lot of work to do, of course, at 92 for four, but they were at lunch, 64 for four. They were 47 for four Yeah. when Hain went. And, you know, he is the man in form, Sam Hain. Three slips in there for Barnard, and Dan Worrell running away from us, comes over the wicket to Barnard. Barnard's letting this one go. Outside is off stump off a, a goodish length. You were talking about way spectators always sit in the same seat. So he used to be a gentleman. He may be here today. Mm. He always sat in the same seat in the holly stand mm. away to our right. <laughs> all on his own. <laughs> and I can see one gentleman right up the back. Mm. Even if the sun was blazing down, he'd <laughs> always sit at the back <laughs> on his own. And that was his favourite seat to watch the cricket from. Over the wicket comes Worrell once again, right arm over. Barnard playing this late down into the gully region. Won't get a run because Cameron Steele comes scampering round from third slip. Yeah, that's the thing. I think kind of place. So I've oval, I've always sat in Peter May stand ever since the first game that I watched her. It's interesting. I, I think you do have your favourite part of the ground to watch the cricket from. Yeah. And... You see the same faces, familiar faces, always sat in the same places yeah. around the ground. Three slips in there for Barnard as Worrell over the wicket he comes again and Barnard's letting this one go away from him. Taken by a tumbling folks away to his right hand side. But yes, I always, the only time I get slightly confused with that is when it's raining heavily <laughs> and you're not under cover and you still sit in your seat with an umbrella up. Yeah. Th no. that, that's the only time I can remember a game last year at Beckenham on the last day where it rained horribly. <laughs> and there was one spectator just sat on just their own in a cagoule yeah. in the rain. 
and then that was the end of the day is over the wicket again comes Warrell outside edge beautiful bit of bowling and a good catch from Ollie Pope has turned Barnard around completely that's a cracking length from Dan Warrell that's what he's been searching for and Barnard turned around completely Ollie Pope with a good sharp catch at second slip Barnard's resistance ended on 18 and Warwickshire lose their first wicket after lunch 92 for five they are but again he's been got out there as Barnard that's a lovely piece of bowling from Dan Worrell and Worrell has a second wicket of the day and it's that length and it just turned Barnard round it was one of those where you saw the the batter's head shoot round and Ollie Pope very safe in there at second slip and Warwickshire 92 for five the the partnership that was developing is broken and now comes Michael Burgess yep there we go we've got the first wicket after lunch Warwickshire just in a bit of a pickle here they've they were rebuilding well but they've now got to make sure sorry don't capitalize on this fallen wicket well Burgess will be positive yeah that's the way he plays his cricket terrific cricketer these days Michael Burgess made a very good hundred last year here against Surrey so he comes out to join Mosley the excellent bit of news is Kevin Howes has got his stats which is excellent next door he was asking Chloe a couple of stats and uh, he's got his stats next door now <laughs> which is excellent and uh, yes he, he's found out the number of maiden overs from this morning <laughs> Kevin Howes and he's now tucking into that bit of information <laughs> he's uh, he looks a very happy man yeah away to our right hand side so <laughs> the right handed Burgess <laughs> is the man on strike mm. three slips in there they're going to get an extra one in now. Four slips go in for Burgess. Slightly different to the innings he played against Surrey last year on the last day. As Dan Worrell is over the wicket to Burgess and his first delivery is forward. Pushes it away into the offside, of course. Started his career at Surrey. Michael Burgess then went to Sussex, but his career's really blossomed mm. here at Warwickshire. And he is a terrific player now. Very, very good keeper make some very good runs in this Warwickshire middle order Michael Burgess very nice fella as well so he's uh, having a very very good career Michael Burgess so he settles over his bat as over the wicket comes Warrell to him and Burgess flicks at this down the leg side and Ben Folks on this occasion can just about get a fingertip to it sometimes you feel with Ben Folks you should put a cape on him <laughs> flying yeah. across the air they've got a bye there but it's the end of su a successful over if I can say that by Dan Worrell 93 for 5 Burgess yet to get off the mark Mosley on 35 I have to say Kevin House is absolutely destroying those statistics <laughs> away to our right hand side I don't think I've ever seen anybody go through a set of stats that quickly <laughs> absolutely devouring those stats it's, it's almost like he's never seen a stat before in his <laughs> life away to our right yeah, but he's enjoying them he's enjoying his stats on this this first day <laughs> definite happy man to be right of us as roach in from the city and oh it looks like he's just shaped towards he's tried to flick that but it's actually ends up going down Leg fan, I wonder if they'll get a leg slip in here. That's yeah. twice now that Roach has got that ball to go at the right hander. Yeah, here yeah. goes Cameron Steele. This makes sense. Burgess has only just come in. And he's going to play at that because when you first get to the crease, you think, here we go. This is a nice one to get off the mark Freebie, with. Freebie, yeah. But Cameron Steele is at leg slip. Roach steaming in from the city end again. That's a foot of a lap defended by Burgess this time up to mid on. Gives a little bit of a shine. We've looked after his ball well. Looks like there's still a fair bit of shine on the ball as it's moving around still. Yeah, so there's a leg slip now, two slips in the short mid wicket catching for Michael Burgess. But as a right hander yourself, it, it's so natural, isn't it? If that ball swings down the leg side, you think, hello, a nice way to get started. Yeah. 
And if he gets up too fine, Cameron Steele's lurking. Roach, in again, short of length, defended off the back foot here by Burgess. Yeah, it's always one of those. My eyes light up when I see it. I'm like, oh, right, I'm in for runs here. Yep. And it is a definite tactic. You see it a lot now in Test cricket. Mm. So that leg slip in there and just going down the leg side. And I think as well a lot, you see a, quite a few more. They, they used to be sort of called strangles down the leg side. Kay. But I think you see it a lot more now. Mm. Deliberate ploys to get people caught down the leg side. Yeah. Roach again. <gasps> oh, that's caught and bold. He's just paid back early. He's been given a bit of a send off, has Burgess, from Roach. It's a very good caught and bold. He's literally just picked that up by his ankles. I think he's more delighted with taking the catch. <laughs> it's a brilliant catch off his own bowling because Burgess has pushed hard at that and it was low down coming back to him on his follow through. That is a wonderful catch mm. off his own bowling from Kemar Roach. Great athleticism from him. And Michael Burgess goes without scoring. And now Warwickshire are in a spot of bother again at 93 for six after a good start after lunch. Mosley's watching all of this from the non strikers end. But a good man to come in next in the shape of Mr. Chris Wokes. There was there were, a few years ago, someone was chatting. I can't remember who it was but was saying that you know, of all the England batters after Joe Root, this gentleman walking out now has the best technique. Okay. Has the best technique. And uh, it's very good to see him out there, Chris Wokes. I know everybody's talking about Ashes, and but I think he'll be part of that. I really do. I think he's I'm saying he'll play every test match, but I think in this country, <laughs> Chris Wokes, if it's nipping around a bit, mm definitely want him in your team don't you <laughs> so, uh, but he's got a bit of a job on his hands here with Dan Mosley so he's going to need all that technique at the moment yep they're in for a big task here at Warwickshire but that was a really good catch off his own yeah. bowling from Keen Roach on his follow through coming back at him low down Burgess sort of was trying to punch it down the ground but just we saw a bit of that from Alex Davis early on didn't we yeah just maybe it stopped a little bit on him stopped him not the sort of on your follow through taking it low down by your boot straps is a good effort very very good catch and Roach comes from City and oh that's a shout he's got him on the pads there but it's just going down leg umpire's hands stay firmly in the pockets there yeah and he's getting it to swing now Kemar Roach again just getting it to swing a touch Dan Worrell is down below us Kevin House has almost finished his stats. He's got through those stats pretty quickly, is, actually. Yeah, <laughs> genuinely, I don't know whether it's, it's like someone who hasn't seen a stat in weeks. <laughs> Roach in for a final delivery, short of a length that's worked. Leg sideways, done well to get on top of that. It's risen quite a lot. So, after this over, Warwickshire are now 93 for six. And Wokes is the new batter, yet to get his first run of the day, and mostly he's on 35. Yeah. And Warren and Roach now, uh, as a, an opening pair of bowlers, they're exactly what you want, aren't they? Yeah, Seven absolutely. overs each at the start, break, come back after lunch, do it again. And, and they, they've each picked up a wicket now after lunch. So yeah. they're, they're the perfect, perfect sort of opening pair of bowlers. And they love bowling together. Warren was so excited when he got to bowl with Roach <laughs> because he's one of his great heroes, he said. <laughs> so uh, he was so excited to... To, to get get the new ball with Kemar Roach. And Worrell it will be to continue down below us. Mosley on strike on 35. Three slips in there. Worrell's into him. Mosley lets it go outside his off stump. It's impressive this from Dan Mosley. All right, he's had his moments. But in amongst the carnage, yeah. he's there on 35. He's looked to play positively. He's got a bit about him. No doubt whatsoever about that. Absolutely. 21 and in your 10th first class game against this attack you need a bit of luck now and again and he's had that he was dropped on 16 he's played and missed a few times he's chanced his arms a couple of times or his arm one or other or both as Worrell's going to come round the wicket now to Dan Mosley there's a short one he's down on one knee as that just balloons yeah. over the top of him it's almost like a trampoline 
was in the middle of the, the pitch there and it just ballooned over him. But folks, I didn't even have to really move there. He just bent down and picked it up off his boot laces. Kevin Houser's finished his stats, which is <laughs> excellent. Devoured those for a bit later in the afternoon. <laughs> and Wokes down at the non-striker's <laughs> end, yet to get off the mark. Here he is as Worrell comes round the wicket once again to Mosley. Mosley drives. Good looking shot. Burns will get across to do the fielding and there's no run. He looks very happy with his stats. But as I say, he sort of devoured those stats like a man who hasn't seen a stat for a while. Yes. Like, yeah, yes, it, it was his lunch. I think people had worked at that <laughs> one out. Thursday fish and chips. Kevin House, who is an expert, who is an expert. I once had a very romantic meal with Kevin House on the beach at Scarborough. As round the wicket comes Worrell. This one's turned into the leg side. They'll pick up a single. And Mosley moves on to 36, 94 for six. We sat of an evening, Chloe, myself and Kevin House on a bench with the seagulls devouring our fish and chips in Scarborough. What was the what were the things you asked for at the end? The bits at the bottom of the scraps. the scraps. <laughs> yes, he asked for his scraps as well. <laughs> Can't get scraps. <laughs> well, the, the, the quality of the fish. That's the thing. The quality of the fish. Clive Eakin got a pudding. Got himself a pudding. <laughs> Four slips in there as Wokes settles himself down over his bat. Worrell over the wicket to the right-handed Woke swings back at him, tucks it up towards mid on. Round comes Jordan Clark to do the fielding, and there is no run. Thick as thieves, Clive Eakin and Kevin Howes is how I describe them at the moment, Chloe. <laughs> sort of whispering away towards each other. <laughs> Two men who are into their probably 200th year of county cricket commentary. <laughs> They're sort of approaching not only benefits, but testimonials. <laughs> As settling himself down over his bat once more is Wokes. Thank you to Chloe. Clive's coming back in. And Worrell is in to Wokes. That's beating his inside edge. How that hasn't bowled Chris Wokes, I'll never know. It's just a lovely delivery from Dan Worrell. It's sort of the delivery that Chris Wokes would be bowling. <laughs> Wokes, I think, has just smiled at Dan Worrell because that has just bounced, come back beaten the inside edge and gone over the top of his off stump. Uh, the one thing Warwickshire will say to themselves, Clive Eakin, is it's, at least he's still doing this because there's every chance <laughs> they could be bowling. Well, I mentioned before, I bumped into Mark Robinson at lunchtime and he's desperately hoping that we the don't rock up tomorrow stay. morning in glorious yeah. sunshine with Absolutely. sorry batting. That's a, a slight seen concern. Sides. I'm not saying that Warwickshire would do this now, but I have seen sides at times just to declare, declare yeah, well, we got the just to get out there while the, the conditions are still like this. Akeem R. Rochelle into Dan Mosley. Threw it all his batting really well here. Mosley, and that one is uh, pitched up. And he hits it into the ground just over the reach of Roach. I've gone through for a single. Wokes has to hurry. Uh, the uh, throw comes to the non striker's end, but he gets there. And. Lots of drama for one run, 95 for six. Huge amount of drama for a run there. <laughs> Chris Wokes has almost ended up back in the dressing room, getting through for the single. But yeah, it was Jordan Clark with the throw, but I think he was always pretty safe. But yeah, this has been a very impressive knock from, from Dan Mosley. I'm trying to work out the last time Chris Wokes batted in a first-class match. And do you know what? I think it might have been March of last year in a test match. He didn't bat uh, in the game against Kent. Didn't uh, get the opportunity. He's batting now. And uh, he opens the face of the bat there and runs that down to third. That's a nice shot. That looks like he's not, not lost anything. That's the technique we That's were talking nice about. That's a great technique. Let it come to him. And then at the last moment, just a little open face. And even if that's thick edge, that's going to go down. It's a lovely bit of batting from Chris Wade. He has got a terrific technique. And, and in, <laughs> in these conditions, he's going to need it. Indeed. That's uh, 99 for six. Why should try to eke out.
what they can from this innings. Roach bowls, and that's another good shot. It's just straight a bit down the leg side. He's got heads and hands there, uh, Roach, but I think uh, Wokes has played that pretty well. Round his legs, down to fine leg for four. It brings 100 up for Warwickshire. Yeah, the head and hands were because Cameron still is lurking in there at leg slit. It was a good way away from him, but it was uppish. But it's nicely tucked away by Chris Wokes. He's on to eight, couple of boundaries, 103 for six. So, 100 up in, with hasty mathematics, 244 balls. Which means they have speeded up a, quite a bit, actually, as the Roach comes in to bowl to Wokes. And again, he's trying to trap him down that leg side. It's a thigh pad and rolls down, there's no run. So the second 50 took just 90 balls, if I've got my calculations right. First took 154, and they've lost two wickets for the second 50, having lost four for the first. And Dan Mosley has become a little bit more attacking. To help explain that is the uh, next one works, pushes to mid off, there's no run. Because after these two, Hassan Ali. <laughs> In comes Roach to bowl. And, uh, and that's left as no one. Obviously, Warwickshire was thrilled they won the game, but he's running around. I'm thinking the poor young Joey Kent Batter out for 99. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, 103 for six. I think, I think the thing with that is that it's good. you're so delighted if you have Hassan Ali that you completely forget yeah. what Joey Everson was on. But I did notice, I saw the, the highlight of it, that after the celebrations, that all the Warwickshire players went and gave him a pat on the back for being the last man out for 99. Now, Tom Laws is coming into the attack. He bowled pretty well this morning. And that big wicket of Sam Haynes. Seven overs, two maidens, one for 22. Bowled quickly this morning did Tom Laws. That's a very good ball that got Haynes, wasn't it? Mm, terrific piece of bowling. And again, it's that he's quicker than you think, Tom Laws. It's just a lovely approach. And then that whippy action. 103 for six. Mosley is on strike on 37. Three slips are in there. As Laws comes over the wicket to him, Mosley's driving. That's off a thickish outside edge, but it's going to split backward point and cover point, and it's going to get over the boundary rope, I think. Yeah. yeah, it's not a long carry really there out towards the holly stand. And Mosley moves on to 41 now from 98 deliveries. 107 for six. And he gets a punch of gloves with Chris Wokes. I didn't... Well, I didn't enjoy it for Dom Sibley but in the game against Hampshire he got a ball that in, when they were on the chase that jumped off a length and hit him on the glove and he took the glove off and he was wringing his finger and then he was all right last ball of the over and as they got together Molly Pope punched him straight on that hand <laughs> as over the wicket comes Laws short ball and that's an even better shot now that is a cracking shot from Mosley he's up on his toes he's in the air and he's right over the top of that typical left-hander shot but beautifully played by Mosley this is an impressive knock. He's on to 45, 111 for six. That's from Dan Mosley. It's a sign that he's growing up from his point of view, that he's actually got a bowler that's younger than him bowling at him in a championship match. Yeah, 21 up against 20 here. I think Tom Mills is 20 now. Yep. And Mosley there, that was a great shot. He shares his birthday with Gary McAllister. Christmas Day. Tom Laws mm. and Alistair Cook. Oh. As over the wicket comes Laws, short ball, and up on his toes goes Mosley, turns that one down into the leg side, and they'll pick up another single, 112 for six. Yes, Kevin Hale pointing out that obviously somebody else is Yes, yes. Well. But, I but sort of decided yes, not yes, to... Yes, no, no, <laughs> absolutely. But, but, there you are, Tom Laws with Gary McAllister... And Alistair Cook. Oh. Yeah. I think Annie Lennox as well. I'm no, going to check that now. That is a, that's a four ball you don't often see on the golf course. <laughs> Annie Lennox, Gary McAllister, Tom, Haw Tom Laws and Alistair Cook. So uh, you might do one day. Yeah, Annie Lennox, 25th of December, 1954. Oh, there you go. Off here. Is there some rain oh, about? Looks like there is. Oh, now that is a shame. So all of a sudden the players are coming off because we've got some rain. Got some. I didn't, I didn't expect <laughs> that. And um, well, Warwickshire will head off 
112 for six feet. Yeah, I can sort of see it now in the air. They, there was talk of rain today. I don't think it's, I don't know, but that's sort of just arrived, hasn't it? We've been under lights all day. And boats, eight mile out, closing, 46 mile out. Two wickets going after lunch. Barnard caught the boat ball for 18, and then Burgess caught the ball roach without scoring. Twelve and a half over session. Um, Thirty-six, forty-eight for two. Right. So the game moved on a fair bit. Yeah, Runs have been scored a decent rate. A couple of wickets taken. Absolutely. But uh, yeah, you can <coughs> see this this rain coming down now. It is no more than heavy drizzle, really. Because yes. the, the crowd aren't exactly s no. scarpering for cover. A couple of umbrellas. And, up, and my they? my theory might be proved right here because I was saying to Chloe the, the 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 greatest spectators of county cricket for me are those that still stay out in the rain <laughs> when even though there is cover to go to yep. they stay in their seat Thank come on on bars get us back with, out with there their, with their hoods up and uh, their umbrellas if they've got an umbrella and a cagoule but I don't think it's too heavy this I just think it, it's it's fairly light drizzle, but it may stick around for a little bit. Yeah, so the wickets to fall this session, Ed Barnard. Caught in the slips by Ollie Pope off down Worrell for 18. That was at the end of a partnership of 45 for the fifth wicket. But Michael Burgess didn't last long. He can consider himself a little bit unlucky in that it was an outstanding caught and bold take by uh, Kemar Roach. Burgess gone for 0-93 for six. But Dan Mosley... Carrying on and on to 46 with Chris Wokes on to eight. And they've taken the score to 112 for six. And the big covers have a question out. for you, Clive. Yeah. So he obviously batted well against Kent with his highest first class score of 94. But this must be up there with that. In, the, in these conditions against this attack, to still be there on 46 out of 112 for six. Yes, I think so. I mean, I, I should plead the fifth slightly in that I wasn't actually at the Kent match. Uh, Mike was doing that for us. But, yeah, I think I, 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 and in, these, in these sort of conditions against this attack with other batters, I think it's been a, a really well-measured mm. innings, isn't it? He's taken a chance. He's taken he? a chance or two. He's got away with uh, one when he was dropped off a sharp chance. But, yeah, it's uh, I like the way promise. He, I like the way he's... He sort of used his feet and, and tried to knock the bowler off the length and, and it hasn't just let the bowler bowl at him. And yes, he's taken a, a calculated risk, but his thinking's been very clear, hasn't it? That, you know, he, he hasn't he hasn't ever looked like he's just going to let the bowler bowl at him. He's tried all sorts of things to move the, the length around from the bowler. So it's been a very good inning so far. Well, Kevin's ready now, yes, so we can, <laughs> we can take he's, he's, it, we he's can take a little break. His fish and chips. It's a great game of charades, yes, as he was very signaling. Good indeed, yes. Keep talking. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> but there we are. So we'll be back. Um, obviously, there's uh, more. We can listen to them on five. Actually, you'll get more. Or if you're listening online, there's plenty of other games that are currently in progress if you want to go for an alternative one. But we'll be back just as soon as there is any action here at Edgbaston with Warwickshire on 112 for six in the 42nd over.
This is Clive Eakin at Edgbaston, where disappointingly light but persistent rain has interrupted what have been a very interesting first day's play of this county championship match between Warwickshire and Surrey. Warwickshire 112 for six when they came off. They've been up against a very strong attack from the county champions, notably opening bowlers Kemar Roach and Dan Worrell have taken five of the six wickets to fall so far. Two since lunch, Worrell had Ed Barnard caught in the slips by Ollie Pope for 18, and then Roach took a brilliant low court and bowl to dismiss Michael Burgess for a duck. But for Warwickshire, Dan Mosley has been impressive in reaching 46 not out, playing in only his 10th first-class match. The 21-year-old has measured his innings maturely and with confidence. Chris Wokes playing his first batting innings of the season is on eight. Warwickshire 112 for six, rain stop play.
My name is Claire Hopkins. I'm Head of Reception and Security here at Edgebasson. I've been here for 26 years now, so 1997 I started. I would left college, needed a job. Wrote to a few places um, around the local area. I got a reply from the then head steward at Edgebaston, so I thought, yep, we'll go and do a few, uh, few casual shifts there. Bit of cash, keep me going. It was, it was an interesting place to work back then. It was a very fun club to be around, yet yeah, very fun. I remember the first day I walked in there, I, I thought how small it was compared to when you look on the television. It's just, yeah, grown so much. 100% take pride in, in, in working here and, and being that face on, on the front reception and, and dealing with everybody as they come in. So you can't not take pride in, in where you work. You have to be that smiley, chirpy, welcoming person behind that desk. That is all part of the journey of, of people coming to Edgebaston. For, for me, working here, it's the own, only job I've ever done and I cannot see myself working anywhere else. We're here at Edgebaston Stadium today. We have a partnership already with Warwick County Cricket Club and I thought it'd be a brilliant experience for the third year sports journeys and students to, to come along to, a, to an actual match, um, to see the facilities, to meet and see some of the other journalists in action. And the, the staff here have been brilliant. You know, they've allowed us to interview a player. Um, we're going to be speaking to a, a coach later. So it's really just an opportunity to, to come here to see um, some cricket, um, to put our student, our, our sports journalists in the environment which we hope that one day they'll be serving in and working in. And it's a bit of a taster, really, just to give them uh, uh, an insight into how a sports journalist behaves during the day, what they do, the kind of work they have to produce, and, the, and really a day in the life of a, of a cricket correspondent. Right now we're in the press room at Edgebaston, an absolutely fantastic facility. Uh, I'm here as an experience with with the uni, uh, with the course. Interviewing the player was a great experience because it meant I got to understand how it works and how how you sort of how to speak to a player um, one to one because you kind of get a bit starstruck when you're talking to people for the first sort of time. I did a mic replacement at Edgebaston during the summer. Um, it was during the T20 blast, um, so we came to games and took a few photos for the social media and a few videos. Um, for Instagram, a few of them went out on the stories and all that sort of stuff. When we went and met in the BBC uh, radio studio, uh, so it's good to sort of meet the journalists that were in there and how they how they work and sort of their practices. Um, so, so that could, I could use that in the future if, if this is where if this is sort of the route I take. It's really good that BBC allows me to gain practical experience while I study. Just an insight into what goes on and, and this is so important on our course because we not only want to skill the sports journalists of tomorrow but we want to bring them to the actual places where hopefully one day some of them will be working. Uh, so this is our junior training session uh, for ages under nines up to under 14s. Uh, it's really just to keep participation going with cricket during the winter. So it's just keeping them involved in cricket, uh, thinking about cricket and, and, as I say, getting ready for the season to start in, in April. And we have got uh, young young lads here who want to go on and, and play county cricket, hopefully, and, and, and progress into that, that pathway. So to see somebody from the local area who has made that uh, step up into uh, professional cricket, especially a lad like Rob, is, is a great inspiration for them. Obviously, with the scheme that, that, that that's helped, we're going to uh, put the money towards a, having a, an artificial surface, which will only then increase participation, not only for the club, 
uh, in games and training, but also in the local community, meaning we can hire, hire the, the venue out and, and allow access to hopefully schools and, and other teams in the community as well. Vitality Blast Cricket is back. Just make sure you're ready for blast off. Hassan, welcome to Edge Baston. Just explain to us how proud and how delighted you are to be here. Uh, well, thank you so much to uh, welcoming. Uh, and, uh, you know, firstly, I would uh, like to say thanks to the management of Warwickshire uh, Cricket Club. They gave me an opportunity to be here and uh, playing for them. You know, it's always a pleasure to be here. And uh, I think it's been seven years I'm coming again and again. Uh, with na uh, national team, with A team and uh, with franchise team. I had a good experience last year. I was playing for the Lancashire. Uh, I enjoyed my time there. Uh, you know, so I want to play uh, county cricket. As I said earlier and even the last year, when I was growing up, uh, so, uh, you know, the legends like Vaseem Akram, Vakai Yunus, Sukhan Mushtaq, and uh, uh, yeah, there's a couple of guys who always, you know, the uh, you know, talking about the county cricket. So they always uh, said that if you're going to get a chance to play county cricket, you should go there. So so we always ask why. So they said that you're going to learn lots of things. And uh, obviously, it's a different country. And uh, you're also going to learn the, about their own cultures. So I think it, it, it always, uh, you know, the I feel lucky I, I'm being here and, um, you know, traveling globally and uh, learn from the different places, learn from the different cultures. And obviously, uh, just because of cricket, we are traveling. So I, I feel pleasure and uh, I'm looking forward to some excited cricket and uh, you know some good performances. You said you played for Lancashire last season. Do you feel that you're better from that experience? Yeah, it, you know, the, it, it, it will always, uh, you know, the help if you, you know, the travel globally and playing for different leagues, so it, it always help you in the career and uh, it give you, you know, lots of confidence, uh, uh, sharing the different dressing room, uh, talking with the different players, seniors players. Uh, like, I, I, as I said, I'm lucky to play with the Jimmy Anderson sharing the, you know, the ends, he's bowling from the different ends, I'm bowling for the different end, and sitting, sitting together in the one destiny room. So I got a chance to speak with him. So he, he's very kind with me and uh, he's sharing, you know, the lots of good things who, you know, who helped me in my career and helped me in my bowling, how become a better bowler and how become, a, you know, the better cricketer. And uh, on, on a side as how become, a, you know, the good person. So, it, you know, it, it, it's helped me in your career if you're playing, you know, the, the county championship and uh, whatever the franchise cricket. It's clearly helping you to become a better cricketer, but you want to make us a better team, don't you? You want to help us win trophies and win games. What will you bring to Warwickshire? Oh well, obviously I'm here to you know the perform for for my uh, team Warwickshire, and uh, it will be in the great. I'm gonna uh, lift the trophy for for my club, and uh, I think uh, if I, uh, I, I play on my potential, if I'm giving my hundred and ten percent every day, every you know the every uh, every game. Uh, so I think and that I think that that will be uh, the better for the for the team and uh, obviously for for me. So it's it's always you know the bit difficult to go you know the, on a different country and a different culture and perform there. So but when you perform, so you feel yes you you are on the on the right track you are on the right place. You've trained with the team 
today. You trained with him yesterday. Obviously, some familiar faces. Alex Davies at Lanks. Chris Wokes from the international scene. What have you made of the group? Oh, well, uh, when I arrived, uh, uh, you know, the, uh, when I arrived, I, I came uh, on the first day on the dressing room and the boys came to me and, uh, you know, they shake hand me, hug me. So I, I feel really, you know, the welcoming and uh, uh, they know me very well. I, I, yeah, I know a couple of faces like Chris Fox uh, and uh, we played to each other and we, we, we have, a, you know, the uh, little relationship. So it always, uh, you know, the pleasure and the boys are, you know, hanging around and boys are, you know, the, uh, you know well gelling and uh, I don't, uh, honestly, I don't feel I'm on a different place. They make me more comfortable and they, they make me feel like a home. So I said, uh, I thought it's going to be, uh, you know, the well. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's nice to be here. It's, it's lovely, uh, lovely to be here. And talk to me about Edge Buston. We've got a big reputation in cricket. What do you make of this place? You know, it's, it's a lucky place for me. Uh, if uh, if we talk about back uh, in 2017, we, we start our journey from here, champion trophy. Yeah, unfortunately, we lost the first game against India, but we won uh, second game against South Africa. South Africa was the number one team at that time, and uh, I was the man of the match, and that was my first man of the match in ODI. So that's lucky ground for me, and uh, the Jabastan is lucky for me, and uh, we, uh, you know, the, for me, is a, a couple of memories here. So it always, uh, you know, as I said, always uh, to be here in England and playing in a different grounds. But as I said, it's lucky for me to get first man of the match in ODI, and that was a champion trophy. So Birmingham Unicorns we set up about two years ago. Um, we're the second only fully inclusive LGBTQ club in the country. We kind of set up because it felt like there was a need uh, to you know, engage the community in this fantastic game of cricket. So Warwickshire and Warwickshire Cricket Board have been instrumental in, in helping to pull that together. Some of the stuff that we've been able to achieve, we've only been able to do with their support. Um, we've had two sessions now here at Edgebaston over the last two years, which has just been amazing because they're obviously very high profile. You know, they're a big, well-known club here in England. And that helps with visibility. And, and if a club like Warwickshire gets involved, it just helps with the whole inclusion message and making sure people do feel comfortable and able to come along and watch, play cricket, get involved somehow. It's the obvious, isn't it? Cricket's a great game. Um, brings people together. It has so many benefits from health, but for, for fun, for inclusion, to allow people to feel safe. And I mean, that's what this club's about, but that's what cricket's about as well. So if we can support it in a day like this, and in any way we can, we will. It brings you right back to why you play the game, which is to, to have a laugh and have fun with people that you enjoy being around with. So we've done a little bit of bowling today. I only started playing last year, so for me, I was opening the bowling. There was a lot of pressure on that. So we're just talking about the mental side of, of that, being kind of a, a team sport, but in an individual in a sense. It's been really good, actually. Really good, really enjoyed it. Oh, so I've been with the Unicorns about a year now. Um, before that, I was uh, out of the game for about 15 years, played, played a lot at school. Um, but I think that's one of the great things about Unicorns is that we're a club where the majority of members, either as adults, haven't played much or at all actually and come in, and yet they come in, everyone gets equal opportunity and everyone gets to have an equal chance to have a real good time. So. The bowlers were immense, smashed to areas, made, made it look really hard for their batters. Um, so let's back it up again. Session two and first class intensity. Come on. Cheers. Yes, so we get that. Lovely, guys. Uh, <laughs> <I'm not mal>. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, guys. Can you just alternate? There's a sick one in Joburg as well. <laughs> Shut up. Start. Yes, Betsy. Lovely JB. Milo. <laughs> you know Arundel? A little bit like that.
Oh, Rashi. Nice, Betsy. Oh! Nothing, Rashi. Very good, Chris. Oh! Nothing, Rashi. Very good, Chris. Middle and off. Yeah. Middle and off. Middle and off, please. Uh, just slide it towards you for middle and off. You go cut the middle. Oh, no. Nice all. So draw Diz. Oh, yes, Diz. Nothing does that. Come on, Diz. Chip to Gaza, yeah. 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 That is skillful. That's a little glance. That that is so skillful. It's not so you've not swung one in like three sets and then you just went on with a ball the big ass swinger. That's quite big ass swinger. Nice catch, Jesse. Thanks. Very good. Well map. <laughs> that is skillful. That's a little glance. That that is so skillful. It's not so you've not swung one in like three sets and then you just went on with a ball the big ass swinger. That's quite big ass swinger. Nice catch, Jesse. Thanks. Very good. Well map. Cash! Little boy! Yeah, boy! Excellent, Des. Oh. Skills that Diz. Oh! <laughs> Diz. Saw what you did there. Saw what you did. You do that well, Diz. You do that well. Go on, man. Great day, lads. There's no polish in that picture. He's got it right. Oh. Did he hit that? Yeah. Did he hit that? Milo, no one. Both pads. Milo, hold on, boy. Prefer you in a cat ball. Great bowling. Oh, Miller. That was lovely to watch. Thanks, Miller. Very nice. Well done, boys. Well done, guys. Well done, good job. Nice pass. Pass to you. Well done, Diz. Well done, mate. Very good. I don't know, we've got about 23.
My name is Claire Hopkins. I'm Head of Reception and Security here at Edgebaston. I've been here for 26 years now, so 1997 I started. I left college, needed a job. Wrote to a few places um, around the local area. I got a reply from the then head steward at Edgebaston, so I thought, yep, we'll go and do a few, uh, few casual shifts there. Bit of cash, keep me going. It was, it was an interesting place to work back then. It was a very fun club to be around, yet yeah, very fun. I remember the first day I walked in there, I, I thought how small it was compared to when you look on the television. It's just, yeah, grown so much. 100% take pride in, in, in working here and, and being that face on, on the front reception and, and dealing with everybody as they come in, so you can't not take pride in, in where you work. You have to be that smiley, chirpy, welcoming person behind that desk. That is all part of the journey of, of people coming to Edgebaston. For, for me, working here, it's the only, only job I've ever done and I cannot see myself working anywhere else. Edgebaston Stadium today. We have a partnership already with Warwick County Cricket Club and I thought it'd be a brilliant experience for the third year sports journeys and students to, to come along to, a, to an actual match, um, to see the facilities, to meet and see some of the other journalists in action and the, the staff here have been brilliant. You know, they've allowed us to interview a player, um, we're going to be speaking to a, a coach later, so it's really just an opportunity to, to come here to see um, some cricket um, to put our student, our, our sports journalists, in the environment which we hope that one day they'll be serving in and working in. And it's a bit of a taster, really, just to give them uh, uh, an insight into how a sports journalist behaves during the day, what they do, the kind of work they have to produce, and, the, and really a day in the life of a, of a cricket correspondent. Right now we're in the press room at Edgebust and an absolutely fantastic facility. Uh, I'm here as an experience with with the uni, uh, with the course. Interviewing the player was a great experience because it meant I got to understand how it works and how how you sort of how to speak to a player um, one to one because you kind of get a bit starstruck when you're talking to people for the first sort of time. I did a mic replacement at Edgebaston during the summer. Um, it was during the T20 blast, um, so we came to games and took a few photos for the social media and took a few videos. Um, for Instagram, a few of them went out on the stories and all that sort of stuff. When we went and met in the BBC uh, radio studio, uh, so it's good to sort of meet the journalists that were in there and how they how they work and sort of their practices. Um, so, so that could, I could use that in the future if, if this is where if this is sort of the route I take. It's really good that BBC allows me to gain practical experience while I study. Just an insight into what goes on and, and this is so important on our course because we not only want to skill the sports journalists of tomorrow but we want to bring them to the actual places where hopefully one day some of them will be working. Uh, so this is our junior training session uh, for ages under nines up to under 14s. Uh, it's really just to keep participation going with cricket during the winter. So it's just keeping them involved in cricket, uh, thinking about cricket and, and as I say, getting ready for the season to start in, in April. And we have got uh, young young lads here who want to go on and, and play county cricket, hopefully, and, and, and progress into that, that pathway. So to see somebody from the local area who has made that uh, step up into uh, professional cricket, especially a lad like Rob, he's, he's a great inspiration for them. Obviously, with the scheme that, that, that that's helped, we're going to uh, put the money towards a, having a, an artificial surface, which will only then increase participation, not only for the club uh, in games and training, but also in the local community, meaning we can hire, hire the, 
the venue out and, and allow access to hopefully schools and, and other teams in the community as well. Vitality Blast Cricket is back. Just make sure you're ready for blast off. Hassan, welcome to Edge Baston. Just explain to us how proud and how delighted you are to be here. Uh, well, thank you so much to uh, welcoming. Uh, and, uh, you know, firstly, I would uh, like to say thanks to the management of Warwickshire uh, Cricket Club. They gave me an opportunity to be here and uh, playing for them. You know, it's always a pleasure to be here. And uh, I think it's been seven years I'm coming again and again. Uh, with na uh, national team, with A team, and uh, with franchise team. I had a good experience last year. I was playing for the Lancashire. Uh, I enjoyed my time there. Uh, you know, so I want to play uh, county cricket. As I said earlier, and even the last year, when I was growing up, uh, so, uh, you know, the legends like Wasim Akram, Wakai Yunus, Sukhan Mushtaq, and uh, uh, yeah, there's a couple of guys who always, you know, the uh, you know, talking about the county cricket. So they always uh, said that if you're going to get a chance to play county cricket, you should go there. So so we always ask why. So they said that you're going to learn lots of things. And uh, obviously, it's a different country. And uh, you're also going to learn the, about their own culture. So I think it's it, it always, uh, you know, the I feel lucky I'm, I'm being here and, um, you know, traveling globally and uh, learn from the different places, learn from the different cultures. And obviously, uh, just because of cricket, we are traveling. So I, I feel pleasure and uh, I'm looking forward to some excited cricket and uh, you know some good performances. You said you played for Lancashire last season. Do you feel that you're better from that experience? Yeah, it, you know, the, it, it, it will always, uh, you know, the help if you, uh, you know, the travel globally and playing for different leagues, so it, it always help you in the career and uh, it give you, you know, lots of confidence, uh, uh, sharing the different dressing room, uh, talking with the different players, seniors players. Uh, like, I, I, as I said, I'm lucky to play with the Jimmy Anderson, sharing the, you know, the ends, he's bowling from the different ends, I'm bowling for the different end, and sitting, sitting together in the one dressing room. So I got a chance to speak with him. So he, he's very kind with me and uh, he's sharing, you know, the lots of good things who, you know, who helped me in my career and helped me in my bowling, how become a better bowler and how become, a, you know, the better cricketer. And uh, on, on a side as how become a, you know, the good person. So, it, you know, it, it, it's helped me in your career if you're playing, you know, the, the county championship and uh, whatever the franchise cricket. It's clearly helping you to become a better cricketer, but you want to make us a better team, don't you? You want to help us win trophies and win games. What will you bring to Warwickshire? Oh well, obviously I'm here to you know the perform for for my for team Warwickshire, and uh, it will be in the great. I'm gonna uh, lift the trophy for for my club, and uh, I think uh, if I, uh, I, I play on my potential, if I'm give my hundred and ten percent uh, every day, every you know the every uh, every game. Uh, so I think, and that I think that that will be the better for the for the team and uh, obviously for for me. So it's it's always you know the bit difficult to go you know that on a different country and a different culture and perform there. So but when you perform, so you feel yes, you you are on the on the right track, you are on the right place. You've trained with the team today. You trained with them yesterday. Obviously some familiar faces. Alex Davies at length. 
Vokes, Chris Vokes from the international scene. What have you made of the group? Oh well, uh, when I arrived, uh, to, uh, you know, the, uh, when I arrived, I, I came uh, on the first day on the dressing room, and the boys came to me and uh, you know, shake hand me, hug me. So I, I feel really, you know, the welcoming, and uh, uh, they know me very well. I, I, yeah, I know a couple of faces like Chris Vokes, uh, and uh, we played to each other, and we 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 have a you know the uh, little relationship. So it always, uh, you know, the pleasure and the boys are, you know, the hanging around and boys are, you know, the, uh, you know, well gelling and uh, I don't, uh, honestly, I don't feel I'm on a different place. They make me more comfortable and they, they make me feel like a home. So I said, uh, I thought it's going to be, uh, you know, the well. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's nice to be here. It's, it's lovely, uh, lovely to be here. And talk to me about H. Buston. We've got a big reputation in cricket. What do you make of this place? You know, it's, it's a lucky place for me. Uh, if uh, if we talk about back uh, in 2017, we, we start our journey from here, champion trophy. Yeah, unfortunately, we lost the first game against India, but we won uh, second game against South Africa. South Africa was the number one team at that time, and uh, I was the man of the match, and that was my first man of the match in ODI. So that's lucky ground for me, and uh, that's best is lucky for me, and uh, we, uh, you know, the, for me is a couple of memories here. So it always, uh, you know, as I said, always uh, to be here in England and playing in a different grounds. But as I said, it's lucky for me to get first man of the match in ODI, and that was a champion trophy. So Birmingham Unicorns we set up about two years ago. Um, we're the second only fully inclusive LGBTQ club in the country. We kind of set up because it felt like there was a need uh, to you know, engage the community in this fantastic game of cricket. So Warwickshire and Warwickshire Cricket Board have been instrumental in, in helping to pull that together. Some of the stuff that we've been able to achieve, we've only been able to do with their support. Um, we've had two sessions now here at Edgebaston over the last two years, which has just been amazing because they're obviously very high profile. You know, they're a big, well-known club here in England. And that helps with visibility. And, and if a club like Warwickshire gets involved, it just helps with the whole inclusion message and making sure people do feel comfortable and able to come along and watch, play cricket, get involved somehow. It's the obvious, isn't it? Cricket's a great game. Um, brings people together. It has so many benefits from health, but for, for fun, for inclusion, to allow people to feel safe. And I mean, that's what this club's about, but that's what cricket's about as well. So if we can support it in a day like this, and in any way we can, we will. It brings you right back to why you play the game, which is to, to have a laugh and have fun with people that you enjoy being around with. So we've done a little bit of bowling today. I only started playing last year, so for me, I was opening the bowling. There was a lot of pressure on that. So we're just talking about the mental side of, of that. Being kind of a, a team sport, but in an individual, in a sense, it's been really good, actually. Really good, really enjoyed it. Oh, so I've been with the Unicorns about a year now. Um, before that, I was uh, out of the game for about 15 years, played, played a lot at school. Um, but I think that's one of the great things about Unicorns is that we're a club where the majority of members, either as adults, haven't played much or at all actually and come in, yet they come in, everyone gets equal opportunity and everyone gets to have an equal chance to have a real good time. So. The bowlers were immense, smashed our areas, made, made it look really hard for their batters. Um, so let's back it up again. Session two and first class intensity. Come on. Cheers. So we get that. Lovely, guys. guys. I'm not sure, mate. I'm not a mole. Cheers, guys. Can you just alternate? There's a sick one in Joburg as well. Are you coming out? Right, up. <laughs> Shut up. Start. Yes, Bitsy! Lovely JB. Milo. <laughs> you know Arundel? A little bit like that. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, Rushy. Nice, yeah. Betsy. Oh! oh. No big Rushy. Yeah. Very good, Chris. Yeah. Oh! No big Rushy. Yeah. Very good, Chris. John middle and off. Yeah. Middle and off. Middle and off, please. Hold, <laughs> hold. Very good, Sosters. Very good, all. Nice all. So draw Diz. Oh, yes, Diz. Nothing does that. Come on, Diz. Chip to Gaza, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> my boy. That is skillful. That's a little glance. That that is so skillful. It's not you've not swung one in like three sets and then you just went on and involved a big upswinger. That's quite a big upswinger. Nice catch, Jesse. Thanks. Very good. Well, welcome back. We, um, we did wonder whether we get back, but here we are. Um, they are resuming at uh, 20 past four, so we have to get an extra half hour on the end of the day, and we're going to, by the end of the day, have bowled uh, 82 overs. So we've lost twice. So I, I didn't mishear it. I thought they said 14, and that does fit the calculation. 14 overs lost thus far. I have to say, the ground staff don't look overly optimistic. They were quite reluctant to take the covers off, not because they didn't think it was playable, but because I think they expected more rain to arrive at any moment. And they still have the hover cover poised quite close. Yeah, but the, we're going to get underway. Yeah, the <coughs> forecast actually on the... Uh, looking at it over the next three or two or three hours, it doesn't read great for the area, but... Uh, 
in actual fact, the light as we speak is probably as good as it's been at any time during the day for the uh, for cricket. Yeah, uh, floodlights have come back on, but uh, it's not too bad at the moment. And uh, Laws, Tom Laws, who the only wicket taker other than Kemar Roach and uh, Dan Warrell have dominated, but it was a particularly good wicket he he took. A very good ball that got. Sam Hayne out. He's bowling to Chris Wokes, who's on eight. At 112 for six, Warwick. I'll summarise what's gone on in a moment as he pushed that out into point. There's no run. It's BBC Radio WM, BBC CWR, BBC London. We're not now with um, Five Live Extra because they are bringing you the IPL at the moment. So if you prefer that, that's where to go for that. Um, but of course, all county championship matches online throughout. I'm Clive Eakin, Phil Britt with me, and about five will be, we'll swap over for Mark Church. And Chloe Brewer, as in comes Laws to bowl, and that's a slightly false looking shot from Wokes, but it's going to get him four runs. Slashed it a bit along the ground, past the slip cordon, down to third. He's into double figures, 116 for six. Yeah, just got the outside edge as he went for the drive, <laughs> and uh, he had perfectly safe, and uh, flew away down to that. Uh, Third man boundary. So Wokes moves into double figures with that shot. I haven't seen Chris Wokes bat for a Well, I don't think he has. And I, I looked it up. I think the last... Oh, he's obviously batted in white ball cricket. Yep. But I think the last time... I reckon the last time he batted in a first-class match was a test match against Bangladesh in March of last year. I don't think he's batted in a first-class match since, as far as I can tell. Might be completely wrong, but I couldn't find one. Laws comes into bowl, and that's uh, driven to mid-off. There's no rum. 116 for six. Uh, Wokes on 12, Mosley on 46. So the men out, uh, Rob Yates was first to go, edging Kimo Roach to four slip before there was a run on the board. Will Rhodes also caught the slip cordon off Worrell for six. Alex Davis, top edge in an attempt to pull shot off Roach, was caught by Ben Folks for 17. Sam Hain, LBW to Laws for 10. That was before lunch. Biggest part of the inning so far, 45 added for the fifth wicket before Ed Barnard was caught in the slips off Worrell for 18 and Michael Burgess brilliantly caught and bowled by Roach for a duck that was 93 for six so they've added 23 since then Dan Mosley mm -hmm. looking particularly impressive for his 46 yeah he has he's uh, he's batted very well he batted well in the uh, <coughs> last match against Kent a little unlucky not to get his hundred but he's now facing Clark who's in from the Birmingham end and ball is run away to backward point there's no run yeah I was quite surprised to see it's only his 10th first class match so he's still very much fledging but that 94 was his career best so he's still looking for his first century got used to seeing him in the <coughs> t20 a yep. little last year and he was successful coming in and, uh, made quite an impact during the season he waits as Jordan Clark's in and just moving forward. I like the way he uses his feet um, to uh, to play the ball. He's not afraid to come down the wicket and play the ball uh, off a length uh, on the move. That came right out the middle of his bat. It's an important innings, this, because nobody else really has, uh, has got in. Barnard looked as though he was beginning to settle, but uh, couldn't push on out of the teens. It's Clark, who's wicketless at the moment. As oh. it comes, this one is <coughs> catching the outside edge, and uh, almost this time, mostly coming too far down the wicket, gets an edge. It squirts down into the ground and on the floor, and uh, then folks goes diving across in front of Slip to, to take it, but uh, it was safe. But just catching the outside edge and a uh, moral victory for the bowler there. 116 for six it remains as Clark is back in and bowls and this one down the leg side mostly can't get anything onto it and uh, brought into action again this time diving across to his right and uh, tidying up that one not preventing it going down to fine leg for four not a lot of people obviously uh, gave up on this one uh, during that rain break and decided there wasn't going to be a lot more play because very thin the crowd now as this one is left outside the off stump and through to the keeper. It's 
It's one of those difficult ones when you're watching the cricket and it's off, and it, the rain looks like it's going to set in. Do you stay or do you actually make the move and go home early and, and decide I'll try it another day? And it does look as though a nice number of people have decided <coughs> that. Mosley waits as Clark comes in again and bowls. And this one is he's trying to pull it round down to deep fine leg. There's a peel from behind the wicket from Slips and Wicket Keeper. He got something on to it, but uh, not out given. Mosley stays there. He's on 46. Wokes is on 12. Warwickshire 116 for six after 43 overs. Yes, and I think the bowler really believes he got it. Just asked just in case. Slightly false shot, but uh, Warwickshire still surviving just about. But Dan Mosley, difficult. He's battered well. He's had to come back in again after a break. Needs not to give it away now. Elsewhere, rain at Laws for Kent, 113 for six. Doing right at Chester Street. Durham going well there. 288 for six against Derbyshire. And only 16 overs bowled at Bristol today. Sussex 47 for one against Gloucestershire. As Laws comes in and he opens the face of the bat, does Wokes plays it to cover where it's slightly misfielded, which allows a Wokes to claim a run at point, I should say. And so he gets a bonus run there, 117 for six. And reigning at Leicester now, a Leicestershire 211 for five against Glamorgan. It's been. Uh Disappointing uh, down at um, Bristol this season yeah. so far, isn't it, for uh, Gloucestershire? Yeah, match of Ben of that ball. We ball. Watch have lost a whole day in both of their matches so far. Before this, didn't stop them beating Kent, did stop them beating Somerset, though. In comes Laws to bowl to Mosley. Pitches it up, Mosley drives, and I think that deflects off. Uh, Law's hands and actually hits Wokes at the non-striker's end. Um, does, hasn't hurt him any. Or if it has, he's not showing it. And there's no run. Can prob probably save four runs there because uh, was, uh, mostly got hold of that one, dri driving it. He comes again, bowls and uh, opens the face of the bat and runs that down to third. And that is going to go all the way. It's a fairly slow boundary, but not slow to stop him scoring a four and reaching his half century in difficult batting conditions. This is a notable half century from uh, Dan Mosley, whom Warwickshire have so much hope. Um, it is his third 50-plus score in first-class cricket, so it's his 10th match. And back-to-back -back 50s for him. Yeah. Uh, he had that 94 at, uh, in this, the only innings Warwickshire had against uh, Kent. In comes Laws, right arm over, and he pushes that to mid-arm. There's no run. So... <coughs> Good stuff from Mosley. The longer it's gone, of course, you know, it tends to be the way it is. It tends to get easier as the day goes on. He's earned his right to still be, a, be there. He did have a life when he was dropped off a sharp but certainly very takeable chance in the slips. Laws comes into bowl, and that's left by Mosley, taken by the wicket keeper. There's no rum. Patel was the uh, unfortunate fielder. Actually, stung his hand. He had to go off the field for a short while. <coughs> Their hands must have been cold out there this yeah. morning, though, because the, it was. Uh, well, there's a really <coughs> strong wind blowing across the ground now. As we look across the flag at the far side end of the ground, it's uh, it's blowing as we look down from right to left. But uh, it's uh, it's been that cold <coughs> wind all day. It's going to come round the wicket now, Laws, with three slips in place. Bowling to Mosley, who drives that. Doesn't come out of the middle of the bat. It goes just a backward point for no run. Left-handed batter. So round the wicket to him, but uh, it's the end of the over. 121 for six. Sorry, slip Gordon having a race to see who would get to the uh, right position first. As much as anything, trying to keep themselves warm, I imagine. It's a little cool out there. Don't blame them. I think anything. There's plenty of sweaters on display yeah. here. 
Keep themselves well wrapped up. Clark will continue <coughs> this time. The ball to the right handed Chris Wokes, who is on 13. Warwickshire on 21 for 6 as Clark comes charging in and bowls from the Birmingham end. And this first one, Wokes, just leaves outside the off stump. It goes through to the keeper, and there's no run. Josh Butler playing in the current um, IPL match for Rastisan Royal. Scored 27 off 21 balls. No in the IPL, probably took an hour and a half. Um, and Moeen Alley uh, of this parish. Ball two overs for 17 so far. Rastisan Royals 174 on the 19th. Works weights as Clark comes in and bowls into this one. Again, is, thinks about playing and snatches the bat up and takes it out of the way, and the ball goes seeming through to folks. So, I have, how long is the IPL on <coughs> for? It seems to have been quite a while. I think it goes on for a fair while. I'm not too sure exactly, but. We're going to be doing an update on uh, BBC CWR in a moment. As uh, Clark comes in to bowl to Wokes, who edges it, and I think that's bounced just short of third slip. Prompts Wokes to ask for a new bat. Yeah, they are back on again after a bit of an interruption, and Warwickshire are 121 for six, so no more loss since they returned. We lost 14 overs in the day so far. Dan Mosey batting really well. He's completed his second consecutive half century. Chris Wokes just hitting a shot for some runs there, but it has been difficult for Warwickshire, particularly earlier today. Kemal Roach, the West Indian international, and Dan Mosey, former Australian, Dan Warrell, I should say, former Australian international, both bowled exceptionally well to have Warwickshire in trouble at 23 for three and then 93 for six. But Mosey doing his best to get them back into it. They're 124 for six in the 45th over. Nicely played away, that one by Wokes through the mid-wicket area. They scrambled back for that third run. 124 for six. Some more work to do, it's a lot of work to get Warwickshire onto a, a decent score. As Clark is back in, and mostly is behind that one, runs it away out into the offside. Roach does the fielding, there's no run. The light still holding that, uh, that rain still holding off, which uh, has been told is on its way but uh, had that light drizzle for a while but it's dry at the moment as Clark in bowls oh, and uh, this one uh, he mostly looking to pull it away through mid wicket it was through the shot a bit early and in the end the ball went straight back in the air for a while back past the bowler they scrambled through for a single but it certainly wasn't where Mosley was aiming he was aiming for the mid wicket boundary and in the end gets a run just past back banging the ball back past the bowler. It was uh, a real miscue. 125 for six, but Mosley moves on to 51. <coughs> well, he's looked to be positive, Mosley, without being reckless. He's taken the odd risk, and it's paying off for him so far. Laws into bowl. Uh, he's bowling to Mosley and uh, wraps him on the pad. As Mosley tried to work it onto the leg side, he's hitting the front pad. There's a slightly untidy piece of fielding, although, to be fair, the, the ball hit the stumps and it did prompt Wokes to consider running a, an overthrow, but he thought better of it in the end. Straight had that ball got to third slip from the way that uh, he was looking, shaping to play the shot. Laws in again to bowl. That's left, and there's no run. It's just a real smattering of people sitting. You can 
If you give me a, a few seconds, I can probably count, count them. them. Yes, yeah. so probably about 20 or 30 actually sitting in the outside seats. There'll be a few in the keeping themselves warm in the Dalton Dollery suite below us. Yeah, it's, it's certainly thin today. In comes Laws, and that's pushed to mid on. There's no run. I mean, the restaurant was busy at lunch. There's a lot of people watching from inside. Just trying to see a replay of that one that was edged. I think it did bounce just in front of third slip. That was the woke, was that the work? That woke. was uh, Wokes, Wokes, yeah. Are yeah. well, they going to show me a replay of it? I've managed to wind it back, but they only showed it once, all the looks of things. So I'll have to wind it back again and have another look. I think it did bounce just short. Laws into bowl and Mosley leans back and guides it into the deep when well, there's a fielder on the point boundary and he gets a single. Yeah, sorry, I've uh, worked out there that, that uh, that's a favoured shot of Mosley's and pushed their, uh, their backward point down to deep backward points and uh, he's, uh, he was there beautifully positioned. It was straight to him, so uh, restricted to a single. Laws to uh, Wokes. Yeah, three slips of basic bowls. It's short. Wokes pulls it, but it's a well controlled shot. He's going to get four for it. No, he's not. He's going to get six. Maybe it wasn't that controlled after all. Uh, but uh, he got it well, got it very fine. So it was well clear of the fielder at wide long leg. And the first six of the match. Wokes his first six of the season? I'll tell you in a minute. Well, it will be because this is his first innings of the season. But uh, I'll tell you how many. Warwickshire fit in a mo this season. It's been a few actually. As Laws comes into bowl to uh, Wokes, who turns out to mid wicket for no run this time. Mosley hit a few in the last match. Didn't they? So they have hit ten sixes. Oh, Mosley's got four of them, and Wokes joins six other players on one. And Warwickshire so far have out six their opposition, which is quite unusual. It's now 11-3 in their favour, whereas last season... I will bring this up. Something I always like to count is sixes in uh, Red Bull cricket. Um, so last season they were out six to the tune of 70 against 38. So almost double the number of sixes conceded as scored. Uh, Michael Burgess got 14, most of them in about a 10-minute spell in one match. Yes. Here's Clark again, stuck in for the Birmingham end. Mosley turns this away into the onside to mid wicket. So Roach comes around, does the fielding, but not before it's gone through for a comfortable single. He gets on to 53, 22 to Wokes, 133 for six in the, in the 49th over. Steadying the ship a little bit after Warwickshire got into a bit of trouble with those two quick wickets after lunch. Clark in and Wokes leaves this one through to the keeper. There's no run. Big summer ahead with uh, cricket. The ashes here in June. Looking forward to that. the uh, 2020 competition. Clark in. This is uh, Wokes looking to awkwardly pull it into the backward on the onside. In the end, uh, it's uh, held back a little bit by Jordan Clark and uh, it rams into Chris Wokes. But, uh, a little bit of a grunt, but it's no There's a thing. That's six from Chris Wokes. Was his first in a championship match for Warwickshire for five years. His last was in 2018. This clock is in and Wokes drives up to deepish mid off. There's no run. It, how, many, but how many games has Wokes I played? Know, not that many, that but time. still. It's, it's he, interesting that it's yeah. first in five years. Obviously, he hasn't played very many, but. Uh, he played, I can remember him playing the important game when they won the championship in 21. Yeah. But, uh, it hasn't been that much where he's been available. Clark com 
comes in again to the right-handed Wokes, who is playing that one straight back down the wicket, but uh, unable to field it cleanly, Clark, on his follow-through. Uh, no run for it. Wokes remains on 22. The ground staff have all gone back off. There were one or two of them hop hovering around the hover cover. They were st standing by the hover cover, but they've all gone back into the seats inside the uh, just by their grounds, the uh, way it's not a hut, it's uh, underneath the stand as uh, Wokes comes forward and plays this one again, back in, quietly back up the wicket to Roach, <coughs> end of another over, 133 per 6, we've had 47 overs, 35 remaining in the day, and whether we get all those 35 in is uh, debatable, but uh, let's hope we can, let's we'll have a chat in Be a little. In all seam attacks so far from uh, Surrey. And uh, Laws is going to bowl to uh, Mosley. Again, putting a couple of fielders out in the deep on the leg side and one at wide backward point. Three slips in place. And he bowls, and that's pushed out to the offside for a single by Mosley. One thing we said. That the pitch was doing a fair bit in terms of swing and, and movement early on. What hasn't had, really, is a great deal of pace in it. And I think the batters are finding it a bit easier now. Well, the ball as well, 47 overs old, it's, uh, it's going to have lost that initial hardness and shine. They certainly put it to really good use, though, at that uh, first session. And straight after lunch as well. Laws bowls, Wokes drives, and it's very well stopped. Is that Patel and the uh, covers? I think it is a very good a diving good. stop. It's a couple of stop there, so he's to some extent atoned for his drop catch, which is a little harsh because it wasn't an easy chance, but it's one that you'd have expected to have taken. It was sort of straight into his hands, but flew at a very fast pace. And he couldn't quite cling on. Mosley survived that. The only chance I think Surrey have put down so far. Laws comes in to bowl, and he plays that with one hand in the end, works onto the leg side, slightly hesitates, but he's called through for a single. It's a leg by, in fact, so it didn't hit. Must have hit him on the thigh pad, and he's limping a little bit, and bruised him a bit. So it's a leg by 135 for six. Has Wokes got any restrictions on how much he can play? From the well, I think it's always up to England, isn't it? And he didn't, he wasn't, um, I think, made available for that first game against Somerset. <coughs> um, so I think it's a constant dialogue. I don't know if there's a specific. Well, she got a game plan. next week, is not they? They're away next week at Hampshire. Mm. In comes Laws to bowl to Mosley, and that's going well down the leg side. There's no run. I think it'll be a case of Mark Robinson chatting to England, saying, well, how about it? Can we, can we have him hmm. uh, for that game, I would imagine? Well, it does help as well. well especially with Liam Norwell out. Yeah, it helps from his, the point of view of how many overs he's going to bowl, because Warwickshire have got the four seamers and, and Barnard as well, so it really is, they're quite well stopped. Laws bowled about it. So were you asking how many overs he, he's no, allowed? No, you were, no, Richard, but you're no, wondering. Yeah, I don't, I don't know whether there's a restriction on that or not, to be honest. Know, might be. There has been in the past yeah. sometimes, hasn't there? But uh, no, it was just his availability. He wasn't yeah. allowed to play three games before, you know, they sort of picked an Ashes squad or... I imagine it'll be something like that. They'd want to get them into some sort of uh, match. Laws round the wicket, and that's flying down the leg side. Well, as I say, he's played very, very little first-class cricket. I don't think he played any um, last summer. Uh, 135 for six at the end of the over. He was injured, though, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Most that's what, that's summer, that's yeah. So that's why, but he hasn't. I think his last first class game was against Bangladesh in March 2022. 20, 135 for six, well, apart from the Kent game, of course. Um, so 
This is the first first class match for, a w for two weeks, but before then, he hadn't played since. Uh, and uh, let you describe his ball. Jordan Clark again from the Birmingham end. Wokes pushes this one out into the covers. There's no run. We well, have yeah, uh, briefly been rejoined by uh, Five Sports Extra. So we resumed after a rain break at 20 past four with Warwickshire. Resumed 112 for six, now 135 for six. So no great drama since they came back. Batting looking a little bit easier. Chris Wokes on 22. And Dan Mosey did bring up his half century. He's on 54. Clark in bowls Wokes looking there to work it away into the offside, but to, in the end jabs down on it and it just runs out into the covers and there's no run. He's on 22. So on 54. An opportune moment, Bass just rattles through the card quickly. Yeah. So very good opening spells by Kimar Roach and Dan Worrell and uh, Rob Yates was the first victim before Ron was on the board, caught in the slips off Roach. Clark in again, bowls and Wokes is just glancing this one down fine. It's going to beat any fielder getting round. Gets four runs for it, just uh, straying onto leg stump there, Clark and uh, Wokes getting inside it, just uh, tickling it away and uh, beating the, uh, the, f the widish fine leg who uh, couldn't get round. So Wokes moves on to 26 and Warwickshire on to 139. Six. Will Rose and Alex Davis lasted about half an hour before Rose was caught and slips off Warrell for six and then two balls later the next over Alex Davis miscued an attempted pull shot to be caught by Ben Folks off Roach for 17 that was 23 for three. Clark in, Wokes looking to drive this one gets a bit of a leading edge on that it runs out into the onside he was looking to punch it away through the extra cover area but uh, quite get into position on that one. Sam Hain was keeping Surrey out pretty well until he was uh, bowled LBW for an excellent delivery from Tom Laws for 10. That was 47 for 4. Went into lunch at 64 for 4. Oh, here's Clark again in. Bowles Wokes goes back looking to cut this one away to the cover point boundary and uh, almost shakes his head in that he'd missed out on that because it was just a fraction early on the shot and uh, no real pace in this wicket, coming uh, with the ball just holding up, and uh, he was uh, in the end just slapping it out to uh, the extra cover area, and there was no run. Final ball from Clark of the over, and Wokes covers up, runs it back down the wicket. Clark tries to field it with his boot, uh, he stops the ball and allows somebody else, Tom Simply, to come to hopping over and do the collection. End of the over, 139 for six. And just to complete the card after lunch, Ed Barnard uh, edged Worrell into the slips to go for 18. 92 for five, so there had been a bit of a partnership, but for the second time in the day, two wickets fell in consecutive overs with Michael Burgess brilliantly caught and bowled by Kimar Roach, a low catch. Burgess gone for a duck. This is now, though, the biggest partnership of the innings so far. They've added 46. It is getting a little bit gloomy, I must say, out there, even with the floodlights on, but at the moment we're carrying on. And Worrell is going to come back into the attack. Two for 31 from his 13 overs. It's been gloomy through the day, but I haven't noticed the umpires taking any light meter readings. During no, it might be a perception, but it feels mm. worse. Mm. Now that it has been. Worrell is coming round the wicket to the left hand of Mosley and finds an inside edge which squirts out onto the onside for a single, which takes Warwickshire to 140 for six. Yeah, as just looking at it, the, he, <coughs> the shadows being thrown off by the floodlights now are quite distinctive. And uh, for the first time in the day that. Uh, they've been able to see them but uh, certainly now it's uh, the lights really beginning to take an impact for those you listening on uh, five actually we're following the uh, IPL game a big score from Rashi Sound Royals as Worrell comes in to bowl it's four defensive there's no run one or two big scores so far they made 202 and they're 20 overs so it's going to be an interesting response. Six 
to that total from the Chennai Super Kings. But here, County Championship Cricket. It's been an interesting day when we've been out there as Worrell comes in to bowl and that's push out the offside. There's no run. The shadows are becoming more noticeable though. And that's a sure sign that the floodlights are beginning to take over from the natural light as they say. And is he got a light meter out there, the umpire? I or is he just, I think he just straightening the, the bales? Yeah. I don't think it'll be long. Right. I might be wrong, but... There's some darkish cloud as well beginning to move in over the ground. Some of the, but, uh, for a while we had quite reasonable light, probably as good a light as we've had all day, but uh, just starting to see some darker stuff moving in. But we are still playing. That's the main thing, and the ground staff have still be, remained sat down in their dugout. So, Worrell bowls, and that's uh, pushed out to the offside for a single by Wokes. I'm not sure he timed that perfectly. There's a bit of chin stroking going on from the bowler. 141 for six. Well, it was a very full delivery, and he was almost looked to be a little late on that, whether it just. Uh, how well he's picking it up in this line. But yeah. Uh, uh, so he got Warrell back into the attack and just pushing here to get this wicket. I'll make way for Mark at the end of this over. Yeah, okay. and then uh, Chloe will come in in about 10 minutes' time as well. That is uh, pushed out into the offside for no run. I'll say that. If that's assuming we're still playing, yeah. I have my doubts. Yeah. 141 for six. Yes, let's hope uh, that this does blow through, but at least at the moment it doesn't appear to be any rain or anything. There's no sign from the... It's not like there's many people in the ground to get up and move if it does rain, but uh, everybody's still staunchly sat watching, so uh, indicative that perhaps it's still dry. Just two slips in place now as Worrell comes in and Mosley evades that one. I'm not sure he didn't slightly lose it, but uh, it goes through to the wicketkeeper and it's 141 for six at the end of the 50th over. Umpires are just taking their positions. They're not worrying too much yet about this lights on this first day of this county championship first division match. The current champions against the uh, previous champions. And Mark Church rejoins us. Yeah, very good little passage of play, this, for Warwickshire. Wokes is doing a terrific job with Mosley. As Jordan Clark comes in over the wicket from the city end to Wokes, he's up on his toes. And Wokes is playing this one up towards mid on, and there's no run, because this could be a short session. Yeah. Now, if they'd lost two or three quickly, but as it is, when they came off for rain, it was 112 for six. So they've added 25. No more than that. 29. Haven't lost a wicket. Partnership building is worth 48. As Jordan Clark is in to Chris Wogue. Shout for LBW. Gone. It's a good bit of bowling that from Jordan Clark. Just nipped it back. And even though Wokes has got a bit of a stride in, it looked fairly adjacent from here. And umpire Long's finger went straight up so that breaks that very good partnership and a good innings that from Chris Wokes in difficult circumstances so he'll be relieved to get that one out of the way and Chris Wokes goes for 27 Dan Mosley still there very fine innings of 55 140 one for seven now Warwickshire and there are what could be a nominal 31.4 overs remaining in the day because the other thing that will do He's get the umpires to get there. They are. They yeah, they are. Having a chat when a wicket and, uh, goes down, they yeah. tend to have a little chat about things, don't they? But I just think that was a very good bit of bowling from Jordan Clark. Yeah. Uh, so Hassan Ali walks out in the middle now. The the job of nine, ten, and eleven. Well, as long as Dan Mosey's there, is to support him now and try and build a partnership with him. Dan Mosey comes to the chat with Hassan Ali. <coughs> 
you, you, you always know when that the artificial light's taking over because you get that sort of star shape from the player's yeah. boots. That's right. And that's what we've got at the moment. And it does seem to have got a bit gloomier. And, you know, Surrey will be delighted with that because I'm not sure how much longer we're going to be out there for. And the fact they've got rid of Chris, Chris Wokes, just as I was saying, and he's played really well for those 27 runs. I mean, also earlier, I might do him a slight disservice. He has got a batting average of 25 from 74 first-class matches, so he certainly knows which way up to hold the bat. He does. Um, he has got... Oh, wait a minute. I'm looking... No, ignore that. Just rewind that. <laughs> Over the wicket comes Jordan Clark. Shout for OEW. Go first ball. Well... Mr. Ekin may have been looking in the wrong column I was. there because Jordan Savage Clark, is 16, yeah, well, it's a bit lower now. Jordan Clark is on a hat trick. He's gone straight, he's gone full. Hassan Ali's missed it completely. And he may be belying that average or he may be knocking it on the door, but he's gone first ball. Jordan Clark's on a hat trick. The umpires get together again for another chat about the light. But I think he's just missed that. Hassan Ali, and it's 141 for eight. Yeah. So his batting average was 16, as it turns out. Um, but uh, he's not adding to that at all. And so he's second in his reward. He did score 15 in his first. That was against Somerset. I think he went for a few shots, saying his watcher were chasing bonus points. I just, well, Dan Mosey must be getting frustrated. He's stranded on 55. Umpires are chatting again. Ground, so one member of the ground staff anyway, is sitting on the uh, hover cover. Can you still go anywhere on a hovercraft? I, no, I don't know. I'm not uh, sure you I can. I was wondering that when a good I was question. Uh, thank you. I was wondering. Uh, did you ever go on one? Well, yeah, I, I did. I think I, I, think I went I did, to France yeah. once on a hover. Would I have ever gone to France? Yeah, on a I think cross? yes. Yeah. I think when I was younger. I think I did that as well. Yeah. Once, yeah. Chris Rushworth is making his way out to the middle for the hat trick delivery, but it's good bowling from Jordan Clark. He's just gone full and straight, and he knew Hassan Ali knew, and umpire Nigel Long as always. If he thinks it's out, he just sticks his fingers straight up. There's no hanging around, so Dan Mosley now wanders out to give Chris Rushworth a bit of a greeting. Yes. I hope he says something different to what he said to Hassan Ali, because that didn't work. Well, I'm not sure what he can really say here. It's just, you know, Jordan Clark is bowling full and straight. I suppose it's get a stride in and eat it. I think that's probably the best advice. So Chris Rushworth, of course, very experienced. More renowned with the ball, of course, but he's been around a long, long time. And it's a hat-trick delivery for Jordan Clark. Of course, Tom Price managed it last week for Gloucestershire, plus 100. Well, Jordan Clark would do very well if he takes a hat-trick and gets 100 tonight. And there's going to be a leg slip and four slips in there. So the right-handed Rushworth is the man on strike. 141 for eight, Warwickshire. Having been stuck in by Surrey this morning. Jordan Clark then. Hat trick delivery comes right arm over the wicket to Rushworth. Ooh. What a good Yorker that is, and well played, Chris Rushworth. He's got the bat down on it. That's a good hat trick <laughs> ball right up there in the block hole. I would say that was a brilliant hat trick ball had he missed it and it knocked his stumps over. But fair play to Chris Rushworth. He's played that really well, actually. Got his feet out of the way and got his back down on it. Well, he certainly gave himself a chance, didn't he? How many times do you see a hat trick ball completely wasted? But uh, that was a, a decent effort from Jordan Clark. Clark was about to come in, but has aborted his run up there. He got halfway down the runway and then was called back to the terminal. He's going to try again now. Here's Jordan Clark coming in over the wicket to Rushworth. Goes wide of the crease. Rushworth's off the mark. That's nicely played. Just pokes this out into the offside. And they will pick up a couple. So Rushworth's off the mark with a couple. But still a very good over this from Jordan Clark. According to Clive, you can still get hovercraft to the Isle of... Uh, to, to Phil. <laughs> or you, Clive, you may know this. You can still... Do you not want to take this? the credit for this? You can still get a, a hovercraft to the Isle of Wight. Can you? Yeah. yeah. yeah I think so. I Not from here, though, presumably. Nobody could answer that, that, uh, that, that question when we were at Old Trafford yeah, and the old right. hover cover fired up. Can I'm I just glad say, I know that Chris now. Rushworth has now trebled his runs for Warwickshire. Excellent, well played. As in over the wicket. It, oh, he almost didn't there. Is 
Jordan Clark as forward goes Rushworth. And that one beats the bottom of his back. Great over from Jordan Clark. Two in two. 143 for eight and the umpires are getting together for a chat about the light yeah yeah he was out for one uh, at uh, Taunton against Somerset didn't get to bat against Kent two not out here Warwickshire bowled out for less than 200 on five occasions last season three of them here lowest total last season 128 against Gloucestershire and we're coming off yeah and I'm not sure we'll get back out there now and that's why that over becomes very important from Jordan Clark there's two in two in that over before we come off for bad light. Uh, Rory Burns is bowling the ball, sort of trying to persuade Peter Hartley that he can bowl his off spin, but it, it, Peter Hartley's not going to take that. But but that's why that over from Jordan Clark is key. And there is the sound of the hover cover firing up to the Isle of Wight, the way to our left hand side. If that is the day, 143 for eight, Warwickshire. Mosley very well played, 22 not out there, Mosley. Two not out, all the Surrey bowls have been very good there in good conditions. Craft, well, on the cover, comes into view. Or actually 143 for it. So nine and a half overs bowl in that spell. Um, 31 for two in that session with Chris Wokes, LBW Clark, 27, Hassan Ali. LBW Clark. I always think about bothering the scorers because uh, John Potter at Yorkshire told me off, told people off for that. Uh, nothing troubles the scorers more than batters being out first ball. <laughs> because they have to write and do all sorts of things. Anyway, uh, we'll, uh, we'll take a break there. Um, whether we get back on or not, uh, we will see. If we don't, of course, we'll be back tomorrow morning. But if there is any more play, of course, we'll be back this evening. Thank you as ever. For being with us in the meantime, other matches are still in progress, so uh, please do go to the BBC website if you want to follow another game uh, somewhere. Um, that's how many games are still in progress. I've given up at Kent now, but uh, Durham Derbyshire. Um, one, there's one now. Durham Derbyshire is the only one, so if you want to follow that, Durham batting pretty well in that, then uh, do so. But for the time being, we'll say good evening.
My name is Claire Hopkins. I'm Head of Reception and Security here at Edgebasson. I've been here for 26 years now, so 1997 I started. I'd left college, needed a job. Wrote to a few places um, around the local area. I got a reply from the then head steward at Edgebaston, so I thought, yep, we'll go and do a few, uh, few casual shifts there. Bit of cash, keep me going. It was, it was an interesting place to work back then. It was a very fun club to be around, yeah, very fun. I remember the first day I walked in there, I, I thought how small it was compared to when you look on the television. It's just, yeah, grown so much. 100% take pride in, in, in working here and, and being that face on, on the front reception and, and dealing with everybody as they come in, so you can't not take pride in, in where you work. You have to be that smiley, chirpy, welcoming person behind that desk. That is all part of the journey of, of people coming to Edge Baston. For, for me, working here, it's the own, only job I've ever done and I cannot see myself working anywhere else. Baston Stadium today. We have a partnership already with Warwick County Cricket Club and I thought it'd be a brilliant experience for the third year sports journeys and students to, to come along to, a, to an actual match, um, to see the facilities, to meet and see some of the other journalists in action and the, the staff here have been brilliant. You know, they've allowed us to interview a player, um, we're going to be speaking to a, a coach later, so it's really just an opportunity to, to come here to see um, some cricket. Um, to put our students, our, our sports journalists, in the environment which we hope that one day they'll be serving in and working in. And it's a bit of a taster, really, just to give them uh, uh, an insight into how a sports journalist behaves during the day, what they do, the kind of work they have to produce, and, the, and really a day in the life of a, of a cricket correspondent. Right now we're in the press room at Edgebaston, an absolutely fantastic facility. Uh, I'm here as an experience with with the uni, uh, with the course. Interviewing the player was a great experience because it meant I got to understand how it works and how how you sort of how to speak to a player um, one to one because you kind of get a bit starstruck when you're talking to people for the first sort of time. I did a micro placement at Edgebaston during the summer. Um, it was during the T20 blast, um, so we came to games and took a few photos for the social media and took a few videos. Um, for Instagram, a few of them went out on the stories and all that sort of stuff. When we went and met in the BBC uh, radio studio, uh, so it's good to sort of meet the journalists that were in there and how they how they work and sort of their practices. Um, so, so that could, I could use that in the future if, if this is where if this is sort of the route I take. It's really good that BBC allows me to gain practical experience while I study. Just an insight into what goes on and, and this is so important to our course because we not only want to skill the sports journalists of tomorrow but we want to bring them to the actual places where hopefully one day some of them will be working. So this is our junior training session uh, for ages under nines up to under 14s. Uh, it's really just to keep participation going with cricket during the winter. So it's just keeping them involved in cricket, uh, thinking about cricket and, and as I say, getting ready for the season to start in, in April. And we have got uh, young young lads here who want to go on and, and play county cricket, hopefully, and, and, and progress into that, that pathway. So to see somebody from the local area who has made that uh, step up into uh, professional cricket, especially a lad like Rob, is, is a great inspiration for them. Obviously, with the scheme that, that, that that's helped, we're going to uh, put the money towards a, having a, an artificial surface, which will only then increase participation, not only for the club, 
uh, in games and training, but also in the local community, meaning we can hire, hire the, the venue out and, and allow access to hopefully schools and, and other teams in the community as well. Vitality Blast Cricket is back. Just make sure you're ready for blast off. Hassan, welcome to Edge Baston. Just explain to us how proud and how delighted you are to be here. Uh, well, thank you so much to uh, welcoming. Uh, and, uh, you know, firstly, I would uh, like to say thanks to the management of Warwickshire uh, Cricket Club. They give me a opportunity to be here and playing for them. You know, it was always a pleasure to be here. And uh, I think it's been seven years I'm coming again and again. Uh, with na uh, national team, with A team and uh, with franchise team. I had a good experience last year. I was playing for the Lancashire. Uh, I enjoyed my time there. Uh, you know, so I want to play uh, county cricket. As I said earlier and even the last year, when I was growing up, uh, so, uh, you know, the legends like Vaseem Akram, Vakai Yunus, Sukhan Mushtaq, and uh, uh, yeah, there's a couple of guys who always, you know, the uh, you know, talking about the county cricket. So they always uh, said that if you're going to get a chance to play county cricket, you should go there. So so we always ask why. So they said that you're going to learn lots of things. And uh, obviously, it's a different country. And so you're also going to learn the, about their own culture. So I think it, it, it always, uh, you know, the I feel lucky I, I'm being here and, um, you know, traveling globally and uh, learn from the different places, learn from the different cultures. And obviously, uh, just because of cricket, we are traveling. So I, I feel pleasure and uh, I'm looking forward to some excited cricket and uh, you know some good performances. You said you played for Lancashire last season. Do you feel that you're better from that experience? Yeah, it, you know, the, it, it, it will always, uh, you know, the help if you, uh, you know, the travel globally and playing for different leagues, so it, it always help you in the career and uh, it give you, you know, lots of confidence, uh, uh, sharing the different dressing room, uh, talking with the different players, seniors players. Uh, like, I, I, as I said, I'm lucky to play with uh, Jimmy Anderson, sharing the, you know, the ends, he's bowling from the different ends, I'm bowling for the different end, and sitting, sitting together in the one dressing room. So I got a chance to speak with him. So he, he's very kind with me and uh, he's sharing, you know, the lots of good things who, you know, who helped me in my career and helped me in my bowling, how become a better bowler and how become, a, you know, the better cricketer. And uh, on, on a side as how become a, you know, the good person. So, it, you know, it, it, it's helped me in your career if you're playing, you know, the, the county championship and uh, whatever the franchise cricket. It's clearly helping you to become a better cricketer, but you want to make us a better team, don't you? You want to help us win trophies and win games. What will you bring to Warwickshire? Oh well, obviously I'm here to you know the perform for for my uh, team Warwickshire, and uh, it will be in the great. I'm gonna uh, lift the trophy for for my club, and uh, I think uh, if I, uh, I I play on my potential, if I'm give my hundred and ten percent every day, every you know the every uh, every game. Uh, so I think and that I think that that will be uh, the better for the for the team and uh, obviously for for me. So it's it always you know the bit difficult to go you know that on a different country and a different culture and perform there. So but when you perform, so you feel yes you you are on the on the right track you are on the right place. You've trained with the team 
today. You trained with them yesterday. Obviously, some familiar faces. Alex Davies at Lanks, Chris Wokes from the international scene. What have you made of the group? Oh, well, uh, when I arrived, uh, uh, you know, the, uh, when I arrived, I, I came uh, on the first day on the dressing room and the boys came to me and, uh, you know, they shake hand me, hug me. So I, I feel really, you know, the welcoming and uh, uh, they know me very well. I, I, yeah, I know a couple of faces like Chris Walks uh, and uh, we played to each other and we, we, we have, a, you know, the uh, little relationship. So it always, uh, you know, the pleasure and the boys are, you know, the hanging around and boys are, you know, the, uh, you know, well gelling and uh, I don't, uh, honestly, I don't feel I'm on a different place. They make me more comfortable and they, they make me feel like a home. So I said, uh, I thought it's going to be, uh, you know, the well. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's nice to be here. It's, it's lovely, uh, lovely to be here. And talk to me about Edge Buston. We've got a big reputation in cricket. What do you make of this place? You know, it's, it's a lucky place for me. Uh, if, uh, if we talk about back uh, in 2017, we, we start our journey from here, champion trophy. Yeah, unfortunately, we lost the first game against India, but we won the uh, second game against South Africa. South Africa was the number one team at that time, and uh, I was the man of the match, and that was my first man of the match in ODI. So that's lucky ground for me, and uh, that's best is lucky for me, and uh, we, uh, you know, the, for me, it's a, a couple of memories here. So it always, uh, you know, as I said, always uh, to be here in England and playing in a different grounds. But as I said, it's lucky for me to get first man of the match in ODI, and that was a champion trophy. So Birmingham Unicorns we set up about two years ago. Um, we're the second only fully inclusive LGBTQ club in the country. We kind of set up because it felt like there was a need uh, to you know, engage the community in this fantastic game of cricket. So Warwickshire and Warwickshire Cricket Board have been instrumental in, in helping to pull that together. Some of the stuff that we've been able to achieve, we've only been able to do with their support. Um, we've had two sessions now here at Edgebaston over the last two years, which has just been amazing because they're obviously very high profile. You know, they're a big, well-known club here in England. And that helps with visibility. And, and if a club like Warwickshire gets involved, it just helps with the whole inclusion message and making sure people do feel comfortable and able to come along and watch, play cricket, get involved somehow. It's the obvious, isn't it? Cricket's a great game. Um, brings people together. It has so many benefits from health, but for, for fun, for inclusion, to allow people to feel safe. And I mean, that's what this club's about, but that's what cricket's about as well. So if we can support it in a day like this and in any way we can, we will. It brings you right back to why you play the game, which is to, to have a laugh and have fun with people that you enjoy being around with. So we've done a little bit of bowling today. I only started playing last year, so for me, I was opening the bowling, there was a lot of pressure on that. So we're just talking about the mental side of, of that been kind of a, a team sport, but in an individual in a sense. It's been really good, actually. Really good, really enjoyed it. Oh, so I've been with the Unicorns about a year now. Um, before that, I was uh, out of the game for about 15 years, played, played a lot at school. Um, but I think that's one of the great things about Unicorns is that we're a club where the majority of members, either as adults, haven't played much or at all actually and come in, yet they come in, everyone gets equal opportunity and everyone gets to have an equal chance to have a real good time. So. The bowlers were immense, smashed to areas, made, made it look really hard for their batters. Um, so let's back it up again. Session two and first class intensity. Come on. Cheers. So we get that. Lovely, guys. Marsha. <laughs> Cheers, guys. Can you just alternate? There's a sick one in Joburg as well. <laughs> Shut up. Start. Yes, Betsy. Lovely JB. Milo. <laughs> You know Arundel? Yeah. A little bit like that. Milo, Milo, I need you to come into cover, please. Gaz. Yeah. 
Oh, Rashi. Nice, Betsy. Oh! Nothing, Rashi. Very good, Chris. Oh! Nothing, Rashi. Very good, Chris. John Middle and off. Yeah. Middle and off. Middle and off, please. Just slide it towards you for middle and off. You go catch the ball. That's it, you're there. That's where they're coming. Hold all. Very good, Sosters. Very good, all. Nice all. So draw Diz. Oh, yes, Diz. Nothing does that. Come on, Diz. Chip to Gaza, yeah. Second. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> that is skillful. That's a little glance. That that is so skillful. It's not you've not Bring swung one in like that. three sets and then you just went on and involved a big ass swinger. <laughs> that's quite a big ass swinger. <laughs> 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 nice that's catch, Jesse. Thanks. Very good. Well, Matt. That's it! Yeah! <laughs> my ball! That is skillful. That's a little glance. That, that is so skillful. It's not, you've not Bring swung one in like ball. three sets and then you just went on and involved a big ass swinger. That's quite a big ass swinger. He's the Nice catch, Jesse. Thanks. Very good. Well, Matt. Cash. Little boy. Yeah, boy. Excellent, Des. Oh. Skills that Diz. Oh! Diz. Saw what you did there. Saw what you did. You do that well, Diz. You do that well. The wall. Great day, lads. There's no problem with that picture. Hold. Did he hit that? Yeah. Did he hit that? Milo, no way. Both pads. Milo, hold on, boy. Prefer you in a cat ball. Oh, Miller. That was lovely to watch. Thanks, man. Very nice. Well done, boys. Alright, guys.
Good job. Nice pass. Good job. Well done, Well done, mate. Very good. I don't know. We've got about a long time to finish.